Seneca City, Northport, winds gusting into the 50s. And this really gives you a good idea of what this storm will look like for most of us. The center is not too far from Northport, 60, 70 miles to the south and east. Northport's nowhere near hurricane strength, and this is why only some of you will see those stronger winds, and the majority of you will simply not see uh, the kind of winds that are being reported in this eye wall. Power outages, absolutely likely. You're going to see that kind of a wind coming into Sarasota or Charlotte counties. There's going to be some structural damage with a 155 mile hour wind with some occasional gusts, but for most, you're not going to see structural damage away from the eye. Once you're away from the eye, structural damage is not an issue. Power outages, absolutely. They're going to be severe. Uh, this is a computer generated forecast based on the winds and the latest track of the storm. And you see from the Sun Coast, really Englewood, Venice, down into Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, Cape Coral and Fort Myers. There's going to be a major disruption to the power systems. Uh, you're going to see power poles down, trees on power lines. It's going to be a mess, and the crews won't be able to get out there really until either late tomorrow or probably tomorrow night as the winds subside to really start to put some of that back. But this is going to be a long-duration power outage. We're talking five, ten days or more in many cases. Uh, when Irma moved through central Florida five years ago, there were places in Polk County that lost power for two weeks. Easily, easily that kind of a situation here in some cases, especially if you're an outlier, remember the way the power crews go is they're going to restore the power outages that put the most people back online first and then start working their way down. So if you're farther away from a larger city, you're on a single line farther away, it's going to take longer to get to you. And this is why this is where your hurricane prep kit is really important, because you're going to need some of those supplies to get you through uh, that extended power outage. And some of those power outages could extend into Manatee County. A high level of power outages, Manatee over towards Hardy, DeSoto County as well, definitely Sarasota, Bradenton, Englewood, uh, all these areas you're going to see stronger areas of wind as well. As the storm tracks north and east, kind of right down the middle of our area, Tampa, Brandon, Riverview, absolutely, you're going to see uh, some extended power outages here as well, a moderate chance of power outages. And you know, it kind of depends on the character of where you live. If you live in the newer subdivision, maybe the power lines are in the ground, not a lot of trees around, and you're not connected to a power line that itself is taken down, you're likely, you have a better shot of seeing your power stay. In some of the older neighborhoods with mature oaks, larger trees, you're more likely to have power outages there as these trees, and especially tree branches fall. And then with the rainfall uh, increasing high as well, trees being toppled kind of complicates the situation as well. Power outage uh, situation continues to stick around. Some chance of power outages sporadic, hit and miss. Once the storm makes its way into Polk and Manatee and Hardy and DeSoto counties and Hillsborough County as well, the winds are no longer sustained. Uh, the winds are gusty. They come and go. They'll come in the heaviest rain bands. And then once the rain subsides, the wind will subside as well. So at times you may be very close to the center of circulation. You look outside, it's just breezy. And then a heavy rain band moves by and suddenly the winds increase 60, 70 miles an hour in a brief gust only to die down again a minute later. That's the kind of weather you'll see. And unfortunately, this is through the overnight. So it's going to be loud when that wind picks up and the rain picks up. You can definitely hear it. There'll be a lot of branches, little debris flying in the rain as well, uh, but it will move through. And most of you tomorrow just are going to be fine. We're not going to see a lot of structural damage in the interior. We're going to see trees down and tree branches down. You'll likely wake up to no power. That's a pretty likely scenario for many of you. But in terms of actual severe damage or strong damage to your house, uh, that's not going to happen in any places other than where in the tiny area where that eye wall makes landfall. That's where that's possible. So for most of you, uh, this is going to be a, an issue in terms of cleaning up around the house and hopefully keeping large branches and trees away from your home. The only place we would see uh, any kind of structural damage is if a tree or a large branch falls onto your house. And of course, that's a different story. Uh, the reason why we're seeing the bay drain, love this future cast because it shows you where the wind is blowing out into the Gulf of Mexico. You're seeing uh, the winds here as the center of the storm, the eye then, the weakening eye, four o'clock this afternoon, moving through Hardy, DeSoto and Polk counties. You're going to see that wind continue to push the water offshore. Even after 10 o'clock, still look at Bradenton, Sarasota, the wind is offshore. Now in the bay, there may be some opportunity tonight as the wind turns northwest to try to push some of the water back over towards the southern part of the county, the eastern part of the county. We'll watch that carefully, uh, although the wind will change in a favorable direction to push the water back towards land. It will be lighter 
So hopefully it won't move as much water. But I think that's one of the reasons why the surge warnings remain in parts of the area. And that's because the offshore winds will switch back around as we go through the overnight and tomorrow morning. And uh, that water is going to slosh around the bay like it does in any kind of large water receptacle. Uh, take a look at the latest track. That's it right there and the timing of the storm. So landfall sometime early this afternoon, mid afternoon, depending on where that actually happens. If it jogs closer to Fort Myers, it's going to happen earlier. If it stays out into the Gulf of Mexico, it'll come a little bit later. But between 12 and 3, 12 and 4 generally, somewhere across southwest Florida. Whole team is here. Just walked, just saw Dennis and uh, Jason walk in. Shay's here as well. So we've got you covered. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage will continue here uh, throughout the day. Guys, I'm going to send it back to you. All right, thank you so much, Greg. I got a chance to talk to Dennis when he walked in. Uh, he drove in this morning. I said, Dennis, so how bad was it? He says, not too bad, not too bad. But again, he did say conditions are going to get worse. Absolutely. Stay off the roads. Well, we had to have Dennis here, so that was essential. Yes, yeah. he's, he's definitely an essential he's employee exactly in these, in these situations. Absolutely. You're right, you're right. Okay, we want to go to the Brandon area now for our coverage. We've got crews stationed there as well. That's right. Sarah Hollenbeck has moved there. She is live at the Brandon Mall uh, to tell us about what conditions are like there. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Well, luckily, conditions are even less here than what we were seeing in St. Petersburg. We are hardly seeing any rain, just a little bit of wind. We are at the Brandon Westfield Mall, and you can tell that this area is closed. There's hardly a soul in the parking lot. I only see about one car out here, but take a look at the sky. Um, you can see it's pretty pretty gray. We have watched as several clouds and bands of the storm have moved through the area. Um, I did drive on the Howard Franklin Bridge on my way here from St. Pete to Brandon, and I can tell that my car was kind of swaying in the wind, just a little bit pulling to the side, but the conditions were less bad than I thought they would be, and we only saw about six cars. My entire drive here from St. Pete to Brandon, I only saw about six people driving on the roadways, so that's a good thing. It seems that people are really heeding the warnings out here, but luckily conditions not too bad for now in Brandon. Reporting live at the Westfield Mall in Brandon, I'm Sarah Hollenbeck, ABC Action News. Sarah, thank you so much. Stuck out to me there. Six cars on the road during a drive. Mm -hmm. People heeding warnings. That's what we want to hear. Good. Absolutely. Good. Tarpon Springs, one of the cities most at risk for flooding in the Bay Area, no doubt. Yeah, that's where J.J. Burton has been. J.J., Greg was telling us about the winds picking up in that area. No doubt, possibly the reason for some of the power outages that we're seeing right around, right along Lake Tarpon. More than 200 power outages there. Uh, what are the conditions like where you are? And definitely and the wind definitely picking up and the rain just started back it stopped but now it's coming back in and um it's okay for now but i want to show you this real quick you can see this puddle some people might think like this puddle here is nothing this is basically from the store uh, the sewer backup so you have this and then when you have the whitcomb bayou right over there the water levels are down there however when that hurricane comes through that storm surge comes through That'll be all over this area covering this road. And you can see some houses over here right across the street from here. Those houses boarded up, sandbags up because they, they already know what to deal with. They've been dealing with flooding here for a long time. And this is only going to be much worse than what they normally deal with. Let's go to some video and we can show you this video of what flooding looks like on a normal summer day when it rains and high tide. And that video, you see that video there, you can see how high that is. That's going to be much worse with this storm. Now, there are some people who didn't decide to, who decided to stay because they have to. These are some of the boat captains over on the sponge docks because they're watching their boats during this. And you can hear one of the captains talking about why it's important that they are out there. We uh, have to loosen and tighten the lines to make sure. So that way, because if they're tied like normal and it comes up 10 foot, then the whole boat's going to go sideways and it's going to take on water. And again, those captains are experienced. They do this a lot. And again, that is their livelihood there. That's why they're watching this. I want to talk to some people as well. There, you know, some, some folks were out here walking and you see the water levels in the Wickham Bayou are down. And there was a lady we talked to and she's like, yes, the water's down. It's going to be good. We're safe. But that does not mean we're safe. We are not out of the woods here. This storm is still very dangerous, still very serious. So again, do not take this to, to mean that it, we're out of the woods. It's not the case. Reporting live in Tarpon Springs, I'm JJ Burton, ABC Action News.
not out of the woods at all. We're not even in there yet. No, we're not. Hasn't even approached us yet. So yeah, not not even in, in the woods just yet. Again, we're talking about impacts to the Bay Area here. Not even starting until this afternoon. And right. we're talking about you know the, the types of wind gusts that Greg is talking about. Everything else. You're seeing the outer bands of the storm now impact uh, Sarasota County. Uh, we do want to head a little bit further south than Tampa right now and go to Pinellas County. We have uh, a bunch of crews out there, Dia. That's true. Heather Lee is in Safety Harbor for us this morning. She talked a little little bit about the conditions getting worse out there showed us some of the ponding already. I see it's already picked up Heather a little while ago. You were fine. No jacket, no wind that has changed in like the past 10 minutes. We're having problems with Heather's microphone, so we'll try to check back with the end with her in a little while. Again, uh, the conditions out there have gotten a whole lot worse. When we checked in with Heather 10 minutes ago, she told us I don't have my rain jacket on. There's no rain out here, just a little bit of sprinkle, no wind. And then we just saw her. She had to hold on to her hat, could not get her microphone on. That's how quickly things can change. JJ said, you know, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. That's how quickly things can change. We're not even in the woods yet. So be prepared. Don't go outside. Even if you feel like it's calm right now, just stay indoors. Let's go back to Heather now. Hopefully we've got her mic situation um, fixed out there. H Heather, that wind is picking up. Heather, can you hear us? I, I can hear you. Yes, sorry. Sam was in my ear, the producer. Uh, yeah, so it, it definitely has gotten a little bit worse out here, but really it's what it is is it's those wind gusts. They come around, they whip, they whipped my hat off and I had to go chase it. Uh, but really overall, it's not as bad out here right now as it probably will be in the next few hours. It's just as that wind comes by and as that rain comes by. But actually even right now, like the rain is starting to let up a little bit. So it's just, it's coming and going as those bands are making their way through Pinellas County. I want you to look at the bay right now because a lot of folks are coming by and asking us about this. Is this normal? Well, you know, I have seen this before for sure. When we have low tide, I've seen it push out like this. But Greg was saying, uh, as you heard, that a lot of the water is right now being pushed out because of the, w the wind direction. Uh, so that probably coupled with the fact that we are in a falling tide is why we're seeing this water pushed out as far as it is. Now, what's gonna happen is this tide is going to start to come up again. So around 6, 630, we're gonna see a high tide and that is probably when things are gonna change a bit over here. Uh, so again, right now it looks like you're not going to see any flooding, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen. We're just going to have to keep monitoring this situation, of course. Now, the other thing that we were talking about is how saturated the ground is right now. Can you walk out here a little bit, Michael? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell, I guess, from where we are right now, but we were, we were a little bit north on Old Bayshore Boulevard, and you can really see the pooling of the, of the water. You know, this ground is just very saturated. Now, I should mention, this area does get very saturated, but up a little bit uh, towards the street, uh, that's really saturated as well. And what that means is the more rain we get, uh, including all of that high wind, we could see trees falling down. And so that obviously is a huge concern for folks living in this area and really all over the Bay Area. That's something that we're gonna need to watch. Um, and then of course, just stay in your house because you don't want to be caught out uh, in high winds. And again, that saturated ground if a tree ends up falling because you just never know when that's gonna happen. Uh, again, we will continue to monitor the Bay. We'll continue to monitor the conditions out here. I'll hold on to my hat for sure. And uh, we'll check back with you in just a little bit. All right, Heather, so much. I just wanna say something too about all our crews out there. Not overcooking it. No, no exaggeration here. You know, they're telling you exactly what the conditions are like. And you see Heather there uh, in Safety Harbor experiencing some yeah. stronger gusts of winds than we've seen to this point. Heavier rains are also moving further north across Florida. There is now some reaching into central Hillsborough County. I was mentioning when I took a break earlier, I saw that wind. It was like the rain looked like it was blowing sideways. And then we went to Robert Boyd, who is in Tampa, and it was clear out there. Mm -hmm. But then, Robert, you did tell us that it's been coming in waves when those bands hit us. That's when you see it. You have breaks, and then you see that, that rain moving sideways. 
Yes, uh, very sporadic. As Greg D mentioned earlier, we'll have some strong gusts of wind and rain come whipping in here. We're on a second floor level looking out uh, and then it'll kind of stop. And right now it's just a, a slow drizzle and hardly windy at all. But again, that could all change in 30 seconds. That's how sporadic uh, it has been. Now take a walk with me. You can see this is Himes Avenue. Uh, typically this time of day, it'd be pretty busy. Uh, there's one car right now and that's about the first car I've seen drive by here in about five minutes. So what typically would be busy, now here you got a couple going by, uh, is not, and that's a good thing. That shows that people are staying inside. They're not coming out. Uh, they're, they're keeping their cars in the garage where they belong. Uh, they're being safe. However, one thing I did notice is driving in today, a lot of people still have their patio furniture out there. They still have those tables out there. So please, if you have patio furniture, anything that could blow away, take it inside at least for the next 24, 48 hours then put it back out uh, because you just don't know what could happen. If you can protect yourself in any way, you should do it. Uh, now, another thing I want to mention, take a look behind me. We're right across the street from Raymond James Stadium. Uh, of course, the Bucks, uh, they had to move their practices down to Miami as they prepare to take on the Chiefs this week. Uh, but it just goes to show when it comes to these weather events, it's going to be bad, you know, in a lot of parts of Tampa Bay the next, uh, you know, 48 hours or so. However, though, things will get back to normal and they're planning on having a football game uh, this weekend. So just to show there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but as of now, uh, this rain picking up a little bit here in Tampa. Wind is not too bad. We'll continue to monitor the situation here in Tampa uh, throughout the morning into the afternoon. Back to you guys. All right, Robert, thank you so much. Right, right outside our uh, right our center station there overlooking Raymond James Stadium. Uh, guys, are we going to Tarpon Springs next? Is that what we're going to do? Okay, let's do that. Yeah, it's again, we know about the risk of flooding there on just a regular afternoon right. storm. So that's an area we're keeping an eye on too. Yeah, JJ Burton was telling us just a little while ago that the sewer systems there can create some problems. JJ, explain what you're seeing out there. Not the best situation, but explain what you're seeing. Yeah, you don't have to put your foot into it, JJ. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely not the best situation. Okay, right over here we have the Wickholm Bayou. That's down low right now. The water's low, but however, that's going to come back up. And we cross right across the street here, and you can see again some of the water right here. This is from the sewer. That's still going to be there. This is standing water. That's going to be a problem as well. But then right over here we have houses. They're boarded up. But these houses, these folks living here, they know what it's like, especially with flooding on a normal day. That's why most of these folks are gone. But you can see the sandbags by the doors. The windows are boarded up. They're hoping that they, when they come back home, that their, their houses will be here and it'll be fine. But again, that's the only time we'll tell. Now, we do see some people out here walking and some cars out here more than probably should be. Definitely, folks, just stay in, indoors at this point. Again, it seems calm, but it's not. You know, we, we're, we're still dealing with this and we're going to be still dealing with this for hours to come. So don't take this for granted. Don't think just because, you know, the rain isn't hard and the wind isn't too, too strong that this is fine, but it, it's not. It's going to be a, it's a serious and a dangerous storm. So just stay inside, stay indoors and continue to follow and monitor abcactionnews.com as well as all on air. Reporting live here in Tarpon Springs, I'm JJ Burton, ABC Action News. Okay, thank you so much, JJ. I want to get a look right now at some of the power outages that we're seeing around the Bay Area. Greg's been telling us about the winds beginning to pick up, and we're beginning to see the results of that. 392 customers right now without power in the Polk County area. Yeah, and uh, over 4,000 people right now in Manatee County without power. Florida Power and Light last updated this number at... About 920 this morning, we will keep you updated because that number is sure to change. And right now, Duke Energy is reporting more than 1,500 customers in Pinellas County are without power. The majority of those are in the Bel Air area. That is a huge increase compared to just an hour ago. And let's take a look at Sarasota. This is uh, Florida Power and Light reporting over 6,000 outages right now in Sarasota County. This coming in just about 20 minutes ago, a significant uh, decrease in outages compared to earlier. They were in about 13,000, so that's nice to see. We're in Keep you updated, of course, as that number is sure to change. And I want to show you this. This is from Hurricane Hunters. They are flying into the eye of Category 4 Hurricane Ian. This is such an interesting look into that storm. Uh, I know Greg D over there has something to say about this. Yeah, I actually saw the, this tweet from Noah earlier this morning, and they were talking about how when you're going through that eye, you're punching through the eye wall. The pilot is so focused on just keeping the plane steady. The guy in the middle there, that's the flight engineer. His job is just to control the airspeed of the plane, to monitor the airspeed of the plane and the winds around it. Because the plane has to be in a sweet spot in terms of speed. It can't be too fast. It can't be too slow. So he's always got his hands on that throttle. And the reason why you use a prop plane for this instead of a jet is because props 
have a faster throttle response. That's a technical term, but when you punch it in, in a throttle airplane, it responds to that extra throttle much faster than a jet engine, and you need that more precise control as you're trying to get through a storm where the winds go from 150 miles an hour when you're in the eye wall to nothing in just a matter of a couple of miles when you're flying at 400 miles an hour. Well, that happens in just minutes, if not seconds. So a uh, very interesting video there. This was uh, back when it was a Cat 3. Now we're talking about almost a Cat 5 here with this storm. I want to show you the planner hour by hour rain. This is for Tampa. Temperatures in the 70s. Uh, I've posted a lot of information on my Twitter feed and my Instagram stories. You can follow me there at Greg D. Weather. It's a great place to ask me questions. Dennis has just come in this morning. We're going to be doing some switching back and forth because we've got to be on with you throughout the rest of the day. And I'm going to lose my voice if I stay up here all afternoon. But that's going to be a great opportunity for you to interact with me through social media if you've got a particular question about this storm or what it's doing. Many of you this morning have asked me comparisons to the size of other hurricanes. So I can tell you Irma was larger at 425 miles. Katrina was large as well. Those were two larger hurricanes than Ian. Andrew and Charlie were smaller. Andrew was larger than Charlie. Charlie was the smallest on that list. When you look at, for instance, tropical storm force winds, in Charlie, they extended 85 miles from the center. Hurricane force winds, 25 miles from the center. And the intense winds of 150 were basically right at the edge of the eye. Tiny, tiny, tiny area. In Ian, the tropical storm force winds extend 175 miles away from the center. That is more than, that is 350 miles wide. That's the width when you just look at the tropical storm wind field. 155 mile an hour, category four, almost cat five storm. The location updates from the hurricane center are coming hourly. Uh, the presentation on satellite, what's not very good here is that it's looking more round, more symmetrical as it gets closer to the coast. This is not gonna weaken before it reaches the coast. And the Hurricane Center no longer believes they'll be weakening until it actually moves on land and we get rid of its fuel source, which is the Gulf of Mexico. There you see the hurricane warnings, no surprise. We are all under hurricane warnings right now. They extend up into the Orlando area. Now, just because Orlando is under the same hurricane warning that Sarasota is, doesn't mean they're gonna see the same conditions. The conditions, the worst conditions, the catastrophic wind damage and potential storm surge right along the coast where it makes landfall and just to the south. Orlando is under a hurricane warning because they may get a wind gust to 75 miles an hour. Tampa is under a, wind, a hurricane warning because we may see some gusts above 70 miles an hour. That is a possibility, especially eastern and southern Hillsborough County. We are not going to see in Tampa and Orlando 155 mile an hour winds. That is not pa possible. It is not happening with the storm. A lot of you are concerned about your friends and family because you sent them to Orlando to get away from the water. That was a good call. There's going to be no surge in Orlando. There may be power outages. Their stay up there may be inconvenienced by that power outage, but they're not in harm's way in terms of destructive winds or a storm surge. So that is actually a pretty good place to be. To the coast we go, where we've got surge warnings still up. Uh, the Weather Service has maintained these because, well, the winds will be shifting as the storm goes by, and there may still be a surge on the back side of this thing as the winds turn on shore, but likely not nearly as high from Tampa Bay North as was originally forecast had it taken a track into Pinellas County or stayed offshore. As long as it stays south of the bay, the surge across the bay and north across the nature coast, uh, maybe some, but it's going to be minimal, and it's not going to be nearly as intense as it is farther down towards southwest Florida. Tornado watches are also up. Manatee and Sarasota County, I think the threat for tornadoes here is pretty low. I think most of it is going to be Polk, Highlands, Hardy, and DeSoto counties. That's where some of the stronger rain bands are coming in off the east coast. Though the rain band that caused all the tornadoes last night, it's moved offshore. It's actually offshore of West Palm Beach. And in much of the tornado watch box, we really don't have anything that I'm concerned about right now other than the hurricane itself. There is that impressive eye of Hurricane Ian. This thing is really cranking up. This is a dangerous, dangerous storm, and it is approaching the coast of Southwest Florida. The eye is gonna do some wobbles here, so still. Sarasota to Fort Myers watching that potential landfall. But unlike Charlie, where it was so tiny that the exact landfall location was very important, I think that is less of a factor here, and mainly because of how wide the eye is and the eye wall is itself. When you measure that eye and the eye wall, where the winds are at hurricane force, well, you're looking at maybe 40, 50, 60 miles 
of, of width. So whether it makes it to Port Charlotte or Fort Myers, the northern end of that eye wall is still going to extend into southern Sarasota County. And then once it gets past Fort Myers, as it's weakening, it's still going to go into Hardy, DeSoto, Manatee, and Polk counties. Not going to be at 155 at that point, but you're still going to get some strong winds in those locations. Rainfall is also going to vary quite a bit. If you're in this dry slot here on the east side of the storm, Highlands County, you're getting into it now. Polk County, there's going to be parts of eastern Polk County. They're not going to see much rain. It's not raining much over towards Avon Park. You get on the west side of the storm in a solid rain shield. This, this is where that 10 to 15 inches is. This is where that flood threat, major flood threat is. And we're kind of just getting into the heavy rain if you're watching from Tampa now. Farther south in the area where landfall could occur, the rain is already pretty heavy. Port Charlotte, Sarasota, up towards Bradenton, the Skyway, really that stretch of 75 south of 275 for the southern apex all the way down towards Charlotte and Lee counties. This is where the rain is very, very heavy. The wind is picking up. And like you saw in Heather's report, and that was great evidence of, of what I've been talking about all morning, when you're out of a rain band, the wind doesn't do much. It's light. It's actually pretty nice. But you get one of those showers moving by, and the wind that was above you, Heather mentioned in one of her reports, she can see the clouds above the ground are just flying. That's where the strong winds are. That's where those 60 mile an hour winds are. They stay above us, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 feet above us, until one of these little showers comes by. And then the force of the rain pushing down takes some of that wind and pushes it down to the ground. And suddenly, Heather's holding on to her hat because the wind is gusting 40 to 45 miles an hour. That's the kind of weather the majority of you will see with this storm. At some points, it'll be calm out there. At others, you're going to see some pretty strong winds. And if you happen to be in the rain in, the, in this eye wall, you may see winds into hurricane force, and that could be away from the coast as well. I'm not discounting that possibility that we could see that. So here's the track of the center. There it is right there. That's Benita Springs. That's Fort Myers. The track generally north-northeast generally takes it into that Port Charlotte, Englewood, Venice area on this track generally into this area of, of I-75. And this is where the surge is going to be. So you look at the path of the storm, and on the right side of it, this is where the surge is. And honestly, the Hurricane Center has been trying to keep up with this as best as they can. The original forecast here was 6 to 12 feet of storm surge. But once it intensified to 155, they rerun the models, look at the past storms, what the seabed here looks like, and that forecast has now been increased to 12 to 18 feet. So what was once the maximum storm surge expected in southwest Florida and southern Sarasota County is now the minimum. And the maximum is now 18 feet. Uh, the last storm in memory in Florida that I can remember that caused that kind of a storm surge similar is Michael up at Mexico Beach. The storm surge there was 15 feet right at Mexico Beach where that storm made landfall possible that we see like something like that again here across southwest Florida. We could see some of that higher surge move its way over towards the southwest side of the state where the water and the wind are going to be pushed on shore as we go through the next several hours. And that's going to be up until the point of landfall. So the storm continues to track north northeast. It'll maintain its intensity. Actually, very shortly, some of these uh, areas here uh, over towards uh, Sanibel, uh, Fort Myers Beach, they're going to start interacting with the outer kind of edges of the eye wall. So we're going to start to get some hurricane force wind gusts likely around Fort Myers Beach and areas up towards Cape Coral, heading back up towards Punta Gorda, over towards Port Charlotte. And then as the eye continues to move in, southern Sarasota County will start to see some of those stronger winds up there as we go into the next several hours. And once the winds move ashore, they'll continue to spread to the north and east. But the most intense winds, those 155 mile an hour winds, are just in the northern part of the eye wall right there. Uh, you'll likely see, just a heads up, uh, something called an excessive wind warning issued from the National Weather Service. They gave us a heads up that that is what they're going to use along the eye wall. And when you see that, basically treat it like a tornado warning. If you are under an excessive wind warning, you are in an area where the eye wall is expected to pass by. That's where winds could be extreme. The winds could gust over 140 miles an hour. And that's where you want to make sure that you get deep inside your house and away from any room with windows, uh, closets, uh, small bathrooms, great places, a hallway that runs the middle of the home, 
also a great place to be. Try to put as many layers, as many walls between you and the outside. That's going to be the best opportunity for you to stay safe as that moves by. But that's going to be just a few of you. The majority of you will not be in that part of the storm. Tampa, St. Pete, Lakeland, yeah, you're going to be in the path of it in, in the larger overall storm. Uh, but as far as those very strong extreme winds, uh, most of you are not going to see that. That's going to be at the coast. Once Ian makes landfall and continues to track, and go back to that track here to the north and east, it'll start to weaken. So yes, the path does take you into Polk County. Polk County, you're not getting a Category 4 hurricane. But you remember Irma. It was a Cat 1 as it was moving through, a strong tropical storm. And you still saw strong winds in the eye wall of that storm. We saw widespread power outages. I think that's going to be the case again today. I think we're going to see widespread power outages around where the center of the circulation is winding itself down. The winds won't be 155, but you all know 80 mile an hour winds knock down trees and power lines, uh, knock them into homes on top of cars, onto the power grid. And that's going to cause power outages and maybe even some damage to some things that take a hit from those trees and those power lines. So the rain falling across much of the I-4 corridor north is just a light to moderate rain. It's breezy. You get south of I-4 now in the southern half of Pinellas County, farther south. And this is where you're getting into more sustained or more frequent tropical storm wind gusts. Bradenton, Sarasota, Englewood, Venice, Northport, Anna Maria, Longboat Key, over towards Coquina, down through Siesta Key. As these rain bands move through, they're gusting consistently over 40, in some cases over 50, in some cases over 60 miles per hour. Uh, the problem with getting reports out of here is that we only have a few reliable stations here. That's the Sarasota Bradenton Airport, uh, another site near Sarasota, Northport, uh, and a couple more. So if you live in this area, if you getting, uh, have a home weather station and it's reporting some stronger wind gusts, reach out to me on social media. Let me know what you're seeing. That really helps to kind of get an idea and compare the radar to what you're seeing and kind of get an idea for what other folks may see down the line. Latest wind gusts, Bradenton still gusting into the 60s, Sarasota now into the 50s, uh, Mayaka City over towards Northport. So the eye is really not too far, not too far south from Sarasota, but the winds are nowhere near 155 miles an hour. That's the example there that you could be relatively close, less than 100 miles, less than 70 miles away from the eye and still not be anywhere near hurricane force winds. That area is going to be small. Most of us are going to see tropical storm conditions with the system. And the reason why the bay hasn't been an issue yet, we haven't talked about surge in the bay, is because of the wind. These arrows, as the rain is moving by, they point in the direction that the wind is going. And for the duration of today into tonight, as the eye passes south of the bay, the wind is going to be blowing the water out into the Gulf of Mexico. We were literally watching on some of the FDOT cameras uh, the white caps moving west or east to west out into the Gulf under the Skyway. That's exactly what we want to see for much of the afternoon. Yes, as the storm passes north of Tampa, the winds will turn on shore here and may start to push some of the bay water towards eastern or southern Hillsborough County. But by then also the winds will be lighter. That's going to happen tomorrow afternoon. So there could be some tides above where they should be. But in terms of a large damaging surge, that's just not looking as likely with the system as it continues north and east because it is forecast to stay south of the bay and then head up towards central Florida again. Could be a category one is approaching Orlando. Is Orlando going to get hit as hard as Sarasota? No, not at all. Not even close. Uh, it's not just if the winds are half, the damage is half. The damage increases exponentially as you increase the winds, meaning, you know, a category one is only produces about the ninth of a ninth of the damage that a category three does and so on. So uh, as you drop in categories here, you really start to reduce a lot of the damage and a cat one or cat two or tropical storm. You're looking at tree branches, tree damage, a fence down, that kind of deal. You're not going to be looking at damaged structures. That's only going to happen in a small area along the Sun Coast. See the breadth of the storm. The yellow here represents places that may see wind gusts into tropical storm strength. It's a wide area. It absolutely is. But the area that sees hurricane winds is a small fraction of the actual larger storm. And that's going to stay down towards the Sun Coast. Is it going to get rough in Sarasota County? Absolutely. There are going to be some rough moments here. Hardy DeSoto County, yes. It's going to get loud. The wind's going to get strong. It's going to get pretty rough for a while as this is moving by, but it should move by pretty steadily. You're not going to be in the eye wall for hours and hours. With a 20 or 30 mile wide eye, you're talking maybe an hour, hour and a half at most at the worst conditions. Those very strongest winds, you're only in there probably for less than an hour, and then you're out. 
some cases 30 minutes as it moves by. It's a very small area. And then you're back to more strong tropical storm force winds that will continue to blow things around. This is Thursday morning. A lot of us still experiencing those strong tropical storm conditions. And as the storm weakens, the hurricane winds go away, and the tropical storm force conditions weaken as well off the East Coast. If you've got friends that went to Daytona, Flagler up towards St. Augustine, Jacksonville, they're going to get some wind. The Georgia coast, absolutely. Nothing like what they'll see down towards uh, where the storm is making landfall. Very sporadic uh, tree damage in those locations. Current winds right now, about 10, 20, 30 miles an hour across Pinellas County, southern Pinellas increasing. Nature Coast, haven't spoken much about you here at Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco County. That's because you're going to get the bad weather last. You're going to be waiting for this for a while. This storm has really got to get farther north to influence your winds. You'll get there eventually, but not right now. Uh, Polk County, watching for that center as it heads towards you. Winds here could be an issue overnight and late this evening. Uh, of course, as we get down towards southern Sarasota County, sustained winds over 50, so we're into tropical storm strength. Gusts could approach hurricane strength. Englewood right now as we go through the next uh, hour or so. Tampa, here are the potential wind gusts. I think this is what the majority of the Tampa Bay Metro will see. Wind gusts in the 60s, maybe occasionally in the 70s. Now, if the eye wall does enter southeastern Hillsborough County, there could be an opportunity or a window of opportunity for some stronger gusts. But for most of us, this is the kind of wind we're going to see sporadic throughout the rest of the afternoon. All right, that's the latest here, guys. I'm going to send it back to you, James and Dia. Thank you so much. Yeah, back here on the desk, uh, we want to get a check now on Polk County. That's right. We told you a little while ago that there were about 400 power outages in that area. Our Chad Mills is live in Bartow this morning with an update on the conditions there. Chad, has it started to, uh, to, to get worse? Well, rain is certainly harder from the last time I joined you. When I last joined you, by the way, I was in downtown Bartow. We're now east of the Peace River. We're in a mobile home park known as the Peace River Village. We're in the back corner of it and behind me, just behind these trees, maybe not even half a football field length away, is the Peace River. And you might not be able to see it from your vantage point, but the Peace River already creeping up into the back corner of this mobile home park. If you look over here, not a whole lot of water to see right here right now, but this wasn't here just a little while ago. This is new since we got here about 30 minutes ago. That shows you that the river already encroaching on these homes. We talked to one of the homeowners here. He tells me all it takes is about 30 minutes of hard rain here on a good day recently, and the water is up to your ankle. That's because they've had so much rain during the month of September. Also, the Southwest Florida Water Management District according to the mayor of Bartow, started releasing water from Lake Hancock. That's kind of the origin of the Peace River behind me in preparation for heavy storms to kind of lower the level of the lake there. Well, it's meant that the river level, the Peace River level has been higher, hasn't really been too much of a problem until now. Now it is a problem for these neighbors. Many have evacuated, but just driving through this mobile home park, a number of neighbors chose to hunker down. They did not leave. The neighbor we talked to believes that they could see about a foot of water around the homes, especially in this back corner. Now they are elevated, they're off the ground, so he doesn't think that water will enter his home, but he doesn't know. And he says it's a very real possibility that they do take on water in these homes. I talked to him just a few minutes ago. I want to play you part of that exchange. Are you worried about this one? I know you've weathered storms in the past, but are you worried about this? My whole life I've uh, been through countless storms. Uh, what I'm worried about is getting back in. Getting back in. Uh, uh, I got some fish in there, you know, I got lots of food in the freezer. Uh, I'm probably planning on taking some of the food with me. I can't see taking the fish with me. That's a bit of an nope, undertaking, okay. you know, with the tank. Thank you, though. It's, it's a big tank. So, uh, that's about the only power we're going to have uh, going is for the fish tank in the freezers. Now he tells me he has seen enough. He is actually packing up this car behind me. You see it's a, a Chevy sedan pretty low to the ground. He says he's getting out of here, actually plans to evacuate to uh, some family members home in Haines City area where there is higher ground, but he knows others will stay here. He hopes his neighbors will make the wise choice, the safe choice, if the river level does start to rise, which county officials, city officials do believe it will start doing here, if not today, then the next day or potentially the next day. They know the water has to go somewhere. 
A lot of it will fall in Lakeland. That's what's projected. And it's projected for the river behind me, the Peace River, to rise as a result of all of that rain. Now, he tells me this neighborhood could actually flood from the rain alone, but the river water coming in as well just makes it that much more imminent, that much more dangerous, and is the reason he plans to leave. As far as wind damage, uh, the wind was gusty when we were in Bartow, not nearly tropical storm level gust at that point, but they are anticipating that to change in the next few hours. It's around one o'clock or so when they think things will start to deteriorate here in the Bartow area. In Lakeland, we checked in with the city not too long ago. Things are pretty good there, but they're kind of in the same boat as Bartow. Just kind of a wait and see game when it comes to wind damage, any trees down, things like that. But right now it's water, at least here in Bartow. The river is causing a problem here in this neighborhood, potentially other neighborhoods as well. And, you know, the river is a long one. It goes through other communities in our area, number in Hardy County. They, too, are having to contend with the Peace River behind me right now. We're live in Bartow. Chad Mills, ABC Action News. All right, thank you so much. Uh, 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 it's been so long. Uh, Chad. <laughs> Chad. Chad. <laughs> it's yes. been such a long morning it's, it's already. It's okay, dear. Okay, let's check in with Paul Legro now. He's been canvassing his way. Actually, we're going to go straight to Polk County because okay. emergency management officials are holding a news conference. All right. Okay. Okay. The Again. little technical issues with the, with the Polk County presser, we'll, we'll get to that in right. just a moment. Now we're going to go to Paul Legron. He's been making his way across the Bay Area, checking out conditions all throughout uh, Polk County. Yeah, he's live for us this morning in Lakeland. Uh, Paul, you were in Clearwater last night. Uh, you know, the possibility again of hurricane force winds where you are now later today. Yeah, our, our, as the track of the storm changes, so does our journey. Here we are in downtown Lakeland right now, guys. And behind me, just to give you a reference, this is right off Massachusetts Avenue. That is Lake Mirror in the background, Cragger Park. That's the famous lake, of course, for the swans that uh, Queen Elizabeth donated to the city of Lakeland all those years ago. Uh, so the story here in Polk County, as you've been hearing, no doubt, is that the storm is now going to move its way up the spine of Florida, and it should be a cat one hurricane by the time it hits Polk County, Lakeland area. And so the problem, two things, one, those cat one hurricane force winds of gusts up to 85 miles an hour Two, the rainfall over a sustained period of time here. Uh, so flooding is going to be an issue uh, as it goes through Lakeland, Lakeland and then makes its way to Polk City in the Four Corners area. Uh, we're thinking about 18 inches, 20 up to 24 inches of rain possibly in this area. I want to go now to uh, the presser, the news conference uh, in Polk County right now. Emergency leaders giving us an update, so let's listen in. Correct. Um, I mean, the storm is, I mean, it's been raining here since last night. The storm is here. The center of the storm, which is the wind hazard, is almost here. It will be here later this morning. and and into the day um, and then you know the rain will continue tonight and when that center of the storm comes through that's when the most rain will fall so that will happen this afternoon i want to make sure my information is correct what i'm hearing is that at about two o'clock it should be what making landfall and then in Polk county by around 2 a.m yeah the the exact timing you know at this point the hazards the hazards are going to be the same in in polk county um, and the timing, yeah, is starting now and then, you know, through this afternoon into the night, not getting any better until at least tomorrow afternoon is what everyone should plan for. And how many different areas are vulnerable? And and what are they? For, for flood, the entire county, you know, we are, we are extremely concerned the most around uh, the Peace River Bacon, uh, Basin which includes, you know, inside the city of Bartow, but also in the areas along Highway 60, um, Peace River Estates, which is just north of Highway 60, the Peace River Mobile Home Park, uh, and that's along the east side of Bartow, all the way down south. The Peace River flows south from Bartow down to Fort Meade, so the east side of Bartow, or of Fort Meade, and that's just the Peace River Basin. Uh, Northwest Lakeland is uh, historically flooding in the Itchipakasasa Creek area off of Walker Road uh, and Lake Lowry, which is near Haines City. All of those areas, again, if you live in that area, you should evaluate now. Um, it could be flooding that you've never seen before and it's going to come up fast. 
you should make other plans. You should plan to leave, have a plan, and be ready to go in a moment's notice um, if the conditions warrant. We just don't have any history with this um, a large amount of water coming this fast. And you always want to react on the side of caution. So I'm hearing that it might be a one by the time it gets here? That's the wind, wind speed. But, you know, that's still, you know, hurricane winds with, you know, gusts approaching 100 miles an hour. That's going to blow over trees. It's going to damage homes. There'll be debris on the roads. And then all the rain will cause flooding. So it will not be easy or safe to travel once that happens. So can you talk a little bit about the shelters? How many people have turned out? What are the conditions? And when might they close? Well, Shelters will remain open as long as necessary. Um, we've got 20 shelters open around the county. Uh, response is surprisingly, um, in, Ir in Irma at this point in 2017, our shelters were very full. Uh, we've still got plenty of space. Uh, we've got plenty of capacity in those shelters. At some, when the winds reach, when the hurricane force winds get here and it's not safe and the, you know each shelter has to evaluate its own conditions as large as Polk County is, it's, we can't just say they all close their doors, but if it's not safe to open doors and let people in, uh, you know, we have to err on the side of caution. The shelter managers make that decision um, to close the doors. You said a lot more people went to shelters during Irma. Not so many now. Why is that the case? Are people not taking this seriously enough for whatever reason? For that, for whatever reason, you know, in, in the past, you know, each, each hurricane's different, every disaster is different. So you know we we plan we we plan 20 shelters, uh, pet friendly, special needs, and general population shelters. There's plenty of room. We're hopeful that that means people have made other arrangements that they're not in their homes. Again, we do not have evacuation zones in Polk County. It's based off of low lying areas, areas that historically flood, and mobile homes and RVs. And we always promote that your disaster plan. Uh, should have someone, you know, a family member or someone from church that they don't have to evacuate, go there. Our shelter should always be the last resort. So your best advice, bottom line? Best advice, bottom line is, uh, you know, the storm is here, the flood threat. Um, we don't want you to compare it to the past floods because we've never seen this. But if your area has flooded in the past, or especially in the last few, the last three or four weeks where we've had a large amount of rain in a short amount of time, if that water has come up, um, it's isolated as your neighborhood or almost come up to your house, you should leave now. You should go to seek higher shelter because it could be that water could reach that level or be higher. Any other messages you want to No, our, our website, we're constantly updating the county's website, www county.net uh, all the information about our shelters and any additional flood information as we receive it from the National Weather Service we're putting on our website thank okay thank you all right emergency leaders there in Polk County giving you the real-time live update there on what is the reality check right now if you're waking up the headline is as we know the path has shifted but here in the city of Lakeland and Polk County and the surrounding areas it is going to be a cat one hurricane uh, by the time it gets here as it moves up the state so that means gusts of up to 85 miles an hour the other part of the physics of this storm will be the rain too much too fast we're talking uh, up to 24 inches in some places perhaps more because this storm hurricane Ian, is moving at such a slow pace right now around 10 miles an hour it is going to crawl over this area and so when you have that much wind for that long that much rain for that long you know, as Greg D and Dennis Phillips and Shay Ryan have been telling us, you hide from the wind, run from the water. Unfortunately, depending on where you are in the chapter of this hurricane, you're going to have both. So hunker down, be safe. It goes without saying the other part of this situation, guys, as we journeyed from Clearwater Beach to Lakeland this morning, 
You know, a lot of people thought they were going to beat the storm by coming here because originally, as you know, the path was supposed to either hug our coast or be more of a Tampa Bay storm. So they actually, uh, folks from Clearwater Beach, folks from the Tampa area, they came here uh, to ride it out. And so now they find themselves in a situation of, is this where they want to be to, uh, to, to hunker down for a Cat 1 hurricane? Obviously, you know, I, I, I hate to characterize any kind of situation. You don't want to minimize a Cat 1. You, you, you know, obviously it's better than a Cat 4, um, but uh, everyone's got to assess their situation, particularly in those areas uh, that he was mentioning along the Peace River Basin where there's going to be some flooding. And if you're in a mobile home and that kind of structure, that's going to be an issue. Um, we actually spoke to a couple just before you guys came to us from Australia. They were here on vacation. Uh, we'll show you what they had to say a little bit later, but for now, I'll send it back uh, to Dia and James uh, with the update here in the city of Lakeland. Conditions, uh, you know, not completely terrible right now. Obviously, it's going to get a lot worse, guys. So uh, just uh, everyone hang on. Yeah, hang on. Mm, hang on is right. Hang on and hang in there. Hang on and hang in. And the same thing threatening Lakeland, mm -hmm. uh, also threatening Pinellas County. The strong winds, of course, the flooding, storm surge. That's where we want to go now. We have several crews in Pinellas County this morning. Heather Lee has been showing us just how quickly the conditions there can turn from calm and peaceful to windy and rainy. Heather, what's it look like out there now? Well, good morning, Dia. The rain is just slightly picking up. Not much, though. It's still more of a sprinkle than anything else. We're feeling the wind gusts as they come through, but it's not a steady wind. Again, it's just a gust of wind here and there. What I have seen out here is a lot of folks kind of waking up, deciding to come down towards the bay to take a look at this because it is fascinating to see how far out the water has been pushed and we are seeing this in different parts of the bay and we know from what Greg D told us that the wind shift is helping push some of the water out of the bay and you're seeing that here. I think that coupled with the fact that we are also in a falling tide situation where we should be at low tide around 1 p.m. today. Uh, that is why you're seeing the water pushed out as far as it is. Now, I've been monitoring the tide and I do believe that that tide is going to come in around uh, 6, 630 ish or so. And when that does happen, I do believe that the water is still going to come up because also Greg did say that when that happens towards that time, we're going to see the wind shift as well. So I think those two combined is going to cause some of the water to come up. And again, this area here typically does get saturated in a normal storm, a normal rainstorm, summer storm. So I think during this hurricane, we're going to see this area of Old Bayshore get a little saturated. And then I think we might even see water potentially come up to the street. I have seen that before. In fact, I saw that during Hurricane Irma. Uh, and as you can see, there are a lot of trees lining this um, this roadway and there's a lot of trees in Safety Harbor. Really, there's a lot of trees all over our area, a lot of old oak trees. And uh, so with that saturated ground and the high winds as Hurricane Ian starts to make its way into our area, we could see down trees. So that's something that we need to watch out for. That could be very dangerous. And of course, you never know when something like that's going to happen. So you just need to stay inside. You need to watch us. <laughs> we'll keep you updated. Don't worry. Uh, and again, uh, we'll be out here. We're, we might end up going a little bit more towards uh, Palm Harbor, Ozona, uh, Crystal Beach. Those are areas along the intracoastal that tend to flood. We're going to probably head that direction a little bit. Um, so we'll give you some updates uh, throughout Pinellas County as the evening goes on. Uh, for now, we're going to send it back to you. Heather Lee, ABC Action News. All right, thank you so much, Heather. This really is the safest way to get a look at what's going on all around the Bay Area. We've got all the images crew spread out all around the Bay Area. Sarasota County, we've been telling you, is the first Bay Area County that is forecast to feel the impact of Hurricane Ian. 6,000 customers right now without power, but that's down from 13,000 earlier today. And it's going to get worse all throughout the day again. Yes. It's, it's a good number to report, good yeah. progress, but it's going to get worse before it gets better. As you mentioned, we have our Jada Williams. She's been in Sarasota since yesterday, and of course, a lot of things have changed with this storm and it's tracked since yesterday. Jada, give us an update on conditions and what you're seeing. 
Yeah, I'm, the conditions continue to uh, get stronger. I've been out all day since about 2 o'clock, and the rain progressively is getting heavier. That wind is progressively getting stronger. Now, take a look behind me. I am at Riverview Elementary School. You can probably see some of that rain just whipping off of the top of this building. Uh, the wind really strong, the rain coming down as well. So this is, of course, not one of those conditions that you want to be on the road in or that you would like to be driving in. We are here at one of the shelters here in Sarasota County, one of those shelters. Uh, it's Riverview Elementary School and that, or sorry, Fruitville Elementary School. Not a lot of people who are here right now, but those conditions, a lot of people who are here saying that they're not going to chance it. They want to find a safe place where they know they will be safe from that storm and stay there throughout. Now that shelter is currently closed right now. That's just because of those conditions that are progressively getting worse. We are getting closer to seeing the worst of Hurricane Ian. You can probably hear that wind whipping around right now. I will continue to report live for you from what's happening here in Sarasota County, specifically here from the shelter. But for now, reporting live, Jada Williams, ABC Action News. All right, thank you so much, Jada. Stassi Almost joins us now live from Ben T. Davis in Hillsborough County. James, we're watching conditions there deteriorate as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like now since we've last checked in with Stassi. Uh, yeah, again, you mentioned ben T. Ba ben T. Davis Beach there. That's right out by Whiskey Joe's off the causeway. Stassi? Well, hey, guys, so we just got up. We got out here uh, to what the, the beach right next to Whiskey Joe's. As you can see, two men right now just out there taking pictures, and we are seeing the same exact thing that Heather was seeing over there by the ocean, really, uh, I mean, the gulf. Uh, you know, the, the tide, as you can see, is just completely uh, out of the bay right here. The water normally up to the Courtney Campbell Causeway. There is no water. You could you could technically walk on it, but you're also seeing those really strong winds right now. Up to uh, my phone's telling me 20 miles per hour. We're getting the rain, uh, and we do expect that high tide to come in later this evening when we do expect to see some of that storm surge. So as of right now, out here it's pretty calm. Uh, we are seeing some of the effects from the storm, some of the bands uh, hitting our area, but right now still safe and we're not seeing too many people out on the roads, which is a good sign. Of course, we're going to continue to check it out here in Tampa and let you know. Back to you guys. All right, get your hat, Stassi. Go ahead and get your hat. Uh, that rain that, ben, down. And look, Ben T. Davis is typically a small beach. It, it mm -hmm. is a small beach. It's a small beach, but you see the water kind of push back a little bit. You notice that a little bit in the direction the wind is going. Okay, we've been keeping track of power outages all morning long for you as well. The number, of course, increasing. It can only be expected to increase as Hurricane Ian moves through our area. Yeah, we told you earlier there were 13,000 customers in Sarasota County that were without power. That is now down to 6,000, but we certainly expect it to rise once again as this storm begins to make a, make landfall. We can't stress enough the importance of charging up your electronic devices, especially your phone, if you still have power. That way you can stay up to date on every uh, aspect of this storm. It's been changing minute by minute. Also, be sure to download our ABC Action News app. Grab your phone if you have it handy, open your camera and point it at your screen. This QR code will connect you to our apps in the App Store and also on Google Play. There you can find the live interactive radar in your neighborhood. Also, you can watch ABC Action News and ABC Action Weather 24-7, even if you lose power at your house. Yes, and no matter where you are the next couple of days, want to make sure you're able to get up to the minute information on Hurricane Ian, even if you can only hear us. That's why uh, we have partnered with six different radio stations. They're going to simulcast our coverage. You can hear us using a battery powered radio if the power goes out. Our radio partners include 99.5 QYK, 98.7 The Shark, 92.5 Maxima, Q105, Wild 94.1, and Talk. 10, 10 a.m. We know people have a tendency to want to go outside and see how conditions are. We keep telling you that is not safe. Emergency responders are telling us, first responders are telling us to let you know, please don't do that. We are your eyes and your ears. We're letting you know what's happening across the Bay Area. Take a look at this right here. This is from one of our FDOT cameras. This is I-275 southbound in Manatee County. Take a look at those palm trees there. Look at the white caps too on the water. That shows you just how strong this storm is and it hasn't even hit our coast yet. No, it hasn't. And if that shaky cameras bothering you. You're going to see much of the same here as we take a live look at the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. As we told you earlier, it is closed as 
Hurricane Ian strengthens and moves closer to making landfall and onshore. We've got our entire Action News weather team of meteorologists in house right now. Dennis Phillips, I swear, never sleeps every waking <laughs> minute. He has been watching this storm. He's in now. Dennis, you actually drove into the station. I did, yeah. I wanted to go home and check on the family and make sure everybody was okay. And, and we were talking about this yesterday that... You know, even in the early morning hours, we had that feeling that this track was going to change. It's pretty amazing that in 36 hours, we've gone from a track along the coast and into Pinellas County to now Pinellas not even be in the cone of uncertainty. Now, we are going to get a new updated track in about 20 minutes. But at this point, I mean, as Greg has been saying, I mean, I... Track doesn't matter anymore in terms of the models. This is when you throw the models out the window and you look out the window because you just follow. This is just nothing more than following the radar and seeing where the center of the hurricane is going to pop. Again, we've got so many things to go over. And if you're watching at home and you're not going anywhere, and I was out on the roads this morning and there were not a lot of folks out there. And that is a good thing because they're staying home, staying put, keeping it right here. Whether you're watching on our streaming app, whether you're watching on TV, I want to remind folks, and we are going to be here right on through the overnight as this goes from coastal areas through Polk County. What is your lifeline if your power goes out? The majority of the time, it's that phone. Remember to charge your phone now. Don't wait till the power goes out, because if it does and you don't have any backups, not having your phone, especially at nighttime when a storm comes in and it's scary and it's loud, and the power goes out, you just feel like you're lost. So keep your phone charging. Maybe have a backup if you do a backup battery fully charged so you can watch us all day, all night, as we have a very, very volatile situation coming in, especially across our southern counties. Right now, very heavy rain across Sarasota, very heavy rain across Manatee with winds gusting at about 50 to 60 miles an hour. Now, last night, about 9 or 10 o'clock, we noticed what was happening with this storm. The eye got kind of cloudy and it started to shrink. It's called an eye wall replacement cycle. And what that means is it develops a brand new eye in a bigger area. And that is not what you want because that means the storm can get stronger and the wind field can expand. There's a couple of bits of good news out of this. The wind field at this point has not expanded from hurricane force winds. This is the eye. The eye is about 30 miles wide. Now, it was about 40 miles wide a little while ago. So as it gets closer to landfall, which is just in the matter of a couple of hours, that eye is going to start to cave in. And then we hope, we pray that we are going to have some significant weakening as this continues to move inland and into our interior counties. But right now, as is usually the case, the worst of the wind is north and east of the center, right about there. So when you talk about a landfalling hurricane, the amount of wind that we would call extreme is in a very small area, like maybe five miles. I mean, you see the numbers, Cat 4, pretty much Cat 5, winds of 155. You're like, no, that means the whole area that landfall is going to see this. That's not the way it works. This is in a sliver of an area with that kind of wind. Most of it is between around 90 and 110. And as I mentioned, hurricane force winds only extend out about 40 miles right now. But as that eye wall recycle replacement happens, typically the wind field gets a little bit bigger. So I would expect the next advisory in about 20 minutes that hurricane force winds probably extend maybe 50, maybe 55 miles away from the center. And there again, you look at that, I mean, for all practical purposes, that could be a five because a cat five is 156. So are we going to argue over one mile an hour? I mean, this is about as big of a storm as you will ever see in the Bay Area, anywhere along the west coast of Florida. So let's go through wind gusts, all right? Because to me, that is probably the biggest widespread concern. Surge is not the concern in Tampa Bay that it was a day and a half ago. It's still going to be something we're going to have to watch. And we are seeing a repeat of Irma. The water is being pushed out at low tide, and that bay, in some cases, will be dry. We've already shown you a video of that earlier on, but then at high tide, as we've mentioned, and by the way, the water does not just rush back in. It isn't like a, a tsunami kind of a thing. The water gradually builds back up, and then as the winds come out of the opposite direction, that's when the water will come out. That won't be until later on this afternoon or into tonight for the bay itself, but these are current wind gusts right now, right now, 
You have nearly hurricane force wind gusts in Bradenton, 72 miles an hour. Sarasota, Venice, 56 miles an hour. Mayaka City, 65 miles an hour. There is your track right about like that. And we'll be talking a lot about that over the next several hours because while the hurricane force winds don't extend more than 40 or 45 miles out, most of that wind will be on the right side of that storm as it comes in. And with the surge, it's the same thing. But again, let's talk about winds. I think while a lot of folks in our area do not live on the water, and there's been a lot of talk about the surge, and the surge is a huge issue for folks on the water, think of Ada. Remember a couple years ago when Tropical Storm Ada came? And that came as a surprise to a lot of people because I kept hearing over and over again, Dennis, we've never had water here before. How in the world are we getting water out of just a tropical storm? That water rise was pronounced. It will be again today in some spots, but overall, the winds, I still believe, are the biggest concern for 90% of our viewing area. So let's go county by county and give you hour by hour what you can expect through today, through tonight, and through tomorrow, okay? So this takes us through lunchtime. Winds, and this is model data, but I think it's pretty accurate. Now, granted, at right 12 o'clock, you're not going to have these numbers, but you'll see the trend. So winds across Pinellas County gusting around middle 50s, upper 30s to low 40s in Hillsborough County. And then as the storm moves inland and starts to track northeast closer to our area, those winds bump up to the lower 60s, 50s to lower 60s in Hillsborough County. If you live in this, pick your city. This is very reminiscent of what we had in Irma in terms of the wind. Most areas had winds between 60 and 75 miles an hour, and the extreme winds were in Polk County. That's exactly what's going to happen again. So I honestly think if you think back five years ago to Irma, if you were here, what you had in Irma, I think is a very good representation of what you're going to see with this storm today, tonight, and tomorrow. 11 o'clock, again, winds in the mid to upper 60s, Hillsborough County. I do think they'll be a little stronger. Fishhawk down to Ruskin and Apollo Beach. I think the models may update because, again, if the track goes in southeastern Hillsborough County before arriving into Polk, granted the west side is weaker, but I still think there will be some higher wind gusts in those areas as well. And then by overnight hours, early morning hours on Thursday, winds still about 50 to 60 miles an hour across Pinellas County, upper 40s to lower 50s in Hillsborough County. And that lingers through about midday tomorrow because remember, tropical storm force winds, winds greater than 39 miles an hour, cover the entire state. And they will until this storm exits the east coast of Florida, which won't be until late tomorrow evening and into the early morning hours. All right. So notice even through tomorrow night, we are going to continue with tropical storm force winds. And that concerns me a little bit in terms of the rainfall, because what will happen is you're going to get a lot of rain in many spots. The ground will soften and then you get these winds of 40 to 60 miles an hour, you're going to see more trees fall just because the ground is so soft and we're already saturated after all the rains we've seen over the last couple of months. So that is Pinellas in Hillsborough County and then by Friday it begins to wind down. All right, so let's go to our next area. Let's go to Citrus, Hernando and Pasco County. These are your expected wind totals. Obviously Citrus County, you don't have too much to worry about based on the track. Hernando County, you don't have too much to worry about. However, there will still be a little bit of surge along the West Coast. We'll have to watch it. I don't think it'll be extreme and certainly things you've gone through a lot before, but that is something to remember. Pasco will have heavier winds just because you're closer to the center and right along the coast, they will be higher because the winds are stronger along the coast because the air travels over the water. There's nothing to slow it down. There's no friction. So along the coast, you're going to have higher windfall totals than you will inland because as the air travels over land, it'll start to slow down with the friction over land. I mean, that's a little sciencey. I get it, but we're going to be together here as a group for 24 hours. So we have our chance to not just talk about the numbers, but also give a little explanation of why. So later in the afternoon into this evening, we are still looking at winds in the mid to upper 60s from most of Pasco County, from Hudson down to Newport Ritchie, Port Ritchie, all the way down to Holiday and into northern Pinellas County. Across Land O'Lakes, Lute, Zephyr Hills, Dade City, again, low to mid 50s. By 11 o'clock tonight, again, 50s and 60s in terms of wind gusts. 
The one thing you are not seeing is anything close to hurricane force sustained winds. So I repeat, this is going to be a major headache. There will be trees down. There will be a lot of issues, but in these counties from Pinellas County North, we just simply don't expect any structural damage from the wind unless you have a tree go down. That is really the only big concern. And I'm telling you, I, I will go back and look at what happened with Irma. I mean, these totals are going to be very, very similar. Heaviest track will be from Sarasota County through Hardy County, Southeastern Hillsborough County, and unfortunately, Polk. And I feel for you in Polk County, I do, but I want to spend a little bit of time on Polk, especially for a number of reasons. All right, Polk County two days ago, you're like, we're good. We're in a tropical storm warning. We're not in a hurricane warning. The storm's going to go north and everything's good. But these storms in Florida coming from the south, they just like to go in to Florida late September into October. It's what happens. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to deal with it again. And the one thing I want to stress, please think of this. If you live in Polk County and you live in a mobile home, you will have winds near that track of hurricane force or greater. You do not want to stay in a mobile home if there are sustained winds of 70 miles an hour or greater. You don't want to. It's too dangerous. You still have an opportunity to go to a shelter. You've got time. And we had the folks from Polk County, the EOC, a little while ago saying that the shelters were still available. There were spots. And I think maybe the reason, and he even said in Irma they were full by now, because I think a lot of folks in Polk County thought we were going to have issues and they got out early. This came last minute. I mean, this track changed last night. So I think a lot of folks went to bed before they found out about it and are just waking up this morning like, what? How did we get involved in this? So that unfortunately is what we're looking at now. If you live in Polk County, I'll say it again, do not try to ride this out in a mobile home if you're in an area that expects winds of 70 miles an hour or greater. So overnight tonight and into the early morning hours, there will be winds. The models are kind of underplaying this a little bit based on the hurricane center between about 70 and 90 miles an hour. But the storm will be weakening as it comes in. So that's something to remember. And there's the track. I mean, if you've got the center of what is likely still expected to be a cat two, these numbers are going to be higher, although you are on the northwest side and that is weaker. So that's a fortunate thing for Polk County. If the track does go in this general direction, the winds east are going to be stronger than the winds to the west side. But this is not one to mess around with. This is reminiscent of Irma. Remember five years ago when Polk County was the only area in our viewing area that had an extreme wind warning with winds of 100 miles an hour. So I still believe obviously areas to the south are going to get the bulk of this. But if you live in Polk County, unfortunately, this is one you're going to have to take seriously. And if you live in a mobile home, you really want to get to a shelter if you're in that area. And the new track will come out. Shay's looking at it right now. I mean, literally, the new track will come out any second. I don't think at this point, again, it really doesn't matter. There's just not going to be any change. It's going to make landfall in a couple hours. All right, lastly, the last two areas we want to talk about, obviously, Manatee and Sarasota County. Unfortunately, it looks like the eye is going to go right into the Port Charlotte area, maybe south of Venice. So in that small area, and we're talking probably only about a five mile stretch is where most of the wind damage and most of the water damage is going to occur. But these numbers are downright scary. I mean, you see wind gusts of 100 to 115 miles an hour. I mean, that's solid cat three numbers. And as I said, it is cat four, almost five. But I will tell you again, I still believe that's in a very, very small area. Nevertheless, these winds are going to continue right through the day until after landfall by later on tonight, it's pulling away and then they're going to drop down pretty quickly. So from now until about four or five o'clock, that's when the winds will be extreme along the coast, especially Sarasota, especially Charlotte and the southern half of Manatee County. And then things will improve pretty dramatically from later this afternoon as everything pulls away and moves into our northern and central counties. And lastly, Hardy, DeSoto and Highlands counties. We have those. We have to worry about Hardy County and DeSoto County because with a track pretty much right through Hardy still as a big hurricane, I suspect wind gusts will be higher than the models are showing here, 
probably closer to 80 or 90 miles an hour this afternoon and into this evening. And these numbers will be updated as well with the new model runs, which come in in just about 15 or 20 minutes. So there you go. That kind of gives you an overview of the winds, of the gusting, of the time frame of everything. And this will be winding down as we head on into Friday. There is a live look at radar. I want to take a close look at that. There's the satellite. Winds now one mile shy of Cat 5. The eye looks very, very clear. This is worst case in the sense that this is not a weakening storm on landfall. This is a strengthening storm. Not as strong as Michael, but pressure down to 937 millibars. That's about as low as it's been. The lower the pressure, the stronger the winds. So let's go ahead and go over to Shea, and we'll talk more about the track, which Shea should be updating pretty much any minute, right? Yeah, we're just waiting, waiting and waiting. <laughs> and at this point, it still hasn't updated, but you can see a real close look at it. I'm going to put my computer back into play here and uh, you can get another look at, at it. Uh, so the wider look right now, again, if you have any interest in Georgia, they are also going to be uh, potentially impacted from the system as well as uh, South Carolina, because after it moves across the uh, state of Florida, it looks like it's just going to temporarily head back out into the Atlantic and then head north. So we haven't really looked at the long term in quite some time because, of course, we're focused on our local area right at the moment. And that is where we're still watching uh, that cone of uncertainty for exactly what direction it will go in once it's on land. Again, there's a, not as much uncertainty about where it's headed to make landfall, but the cone gets wider as it continues to move inland over the next 24 to 48 hours. And that's where we may see some variation north or south as it heads across the state. And that will determine as well uh, the other states that get impacted later on. And as well, if it moves out over open water versus uh, not, how strong it would be as it continues on its path. Now, as far as this red box goes, this is where we have a tornado watch in effect. So we will continue to be watching for the potential for any spin as those outer bands roll through. It does look like over by the uh, I-95 corridor, that's where it's more focused. The uh, dynamics are coming coming together a little better and more likely for that spin to occur. But still in that entire area, we will have a potential for uh, tornadoes. Again, they're usually brief. It's not those big monster tornadoes that you see the F5s out west that last for a uh, long duration. These are usually short lived uh, tornadoes and rather on the weak side. However, still serious and something that we want to make sure to alert you of if that does happen in any of our viewing area. So again, we're going to talk about some rainfall here. We've got some higher uh, rainfall totals beginning to gather to to the south and I'll get to that in a moment. But right now our lightest rain is coming to the north. A lot of these areas have been seeing light rain though since late last evening. And again, we are looking at amounts that are coming down at a rate of anything from a trace to about a quarter of an inch or a little more between a quarter of a half inch per hour. So very reasonable right now in our northern counties. And as we look around Pinellas and Hillsborough counties, you can see in the West Chase East Lake area of Palm Harbor, it's coming down at about uh, between a quarter and a half an inch per hour. In Pinellas County, most of it is coming down as showers. Again, pretty light. And and the same just south of Dover in eastern Hillsborough County. Inland, as we move into Polk County, the rain most areas are seeing fairly light rain as well. We've got those light green tones and the dark green tones, but there's one spot here across 27 between Frostproof and Haines City where we've got rain coming down in excess of a half an inch per hour. The heaviest rain right now is between Manatee and Sarasota counties, and this is where we're seeing it come down anywhere around a half an inch to three quarters of an inch per hour. We do have some of those heavier pockets that you're seeing in orange and a lot more yellow to be seen. So again, when we see those yellow and orange tones, we know that that's where the heavier rain is setting up. And as we look inland through Hardy and DeSoto counties and uh, Highlands County, still very light, almost a mist in some parts of uh, Highlands County like Sebring, just a little bit heavier here with a pocket of heavier rain just south of Lake Placid. And then we've got rain coming in anywhere from a light sprinkle to a little over a half an inch in, uh, in uh, uh, let's see, what county where is that? Hardy County. All right, so looking at rainfall totals, so this is over the last 24 hours, we know that the rain starts 
started south of I-4 pretty early yesterday. It was very light at that time. However, we've still been able to accumulate over five inches of rain in southern Sarasota County, over three inches of rain in uh, northern parts of uh, Sarasota and southern parts of Manatee County. And then as you move north, you can see those numbers get lower and lower. And that's how the rain, that light to moderate rain built into the area yesterday. But what's also contributing to some of these heavier rain uh, totals here in Sarasota County are that they're starting to see those outer bands that contain the very heavy rainfalls. So we actually have a spot here between Inglewood and Venice that's already received over six inches of rain in the last 24 hours. And we are just getting started with those heavier bands rolling through. We've got about 4.7 uh, inches of rain here just north of I-75, uh, north of Venice. And then we've got uh, three to three and a half or three and three quarters inches of rain all through the rest of Sarasota County. So we are definitely starting to see uh, some noticeable rainfall totals. And again, this is just the beginning of those heavier bands that are going to roll through. Oftentimes when we're looking at hurricanes, uh, people will ask, well, what side of the storm has the heaviest rain? And it can differ uh, based on any it, it be based on each individual storm. So with this storm, it looks like the rain is going to be heaviest on the north and northwest side. So as this pattern continues. If you're watching it throughout the day and you see where the center of the system is and you happen to be on that northern side, that's or northwestern side of the eye. That's where we're going to see some of that heavier rain and it'll be fairly consistent uh, along that path. And that's also where we will end up seeing those higher totals. And again, we're not looking at the same totals that we saw yesterday or the day before as this uh, system has changed and as the intensity as well as the speed changes that is going to impact the numbers that end up resulting as far as storm totals go. But at this point in time, they're still looking to be very significant with the uh, inland flooding from this freshwater rain. Certainly uh, a, a very big concern. And you can see on the future cast again, this depicts it, I think, even better. It really highlights this is the center of the storm as it's predicted by this model. And the rain is all to the north. So again, we are looking at uh, 8 o'clock tonight, and we're still seeing very heavy rain bands moving through parts of Manatee County and into Polk County. And it's almost covering w Polk County entirely with that very heavy rain. Let's see if I can bring it in a little bit closer here. So you can see again the deepest, darkest red right in the center of the county. Now, granted, that's south of I-4, but as you look toward Orlando, that's also getting some of those very heavy bands and they're starting to reach the Daytona Beach area. Now, as the storm continues, this is 8 o'clock on Thursday morning. So we're still seeing some of the outer bands going back through Polk County and through our northern counties, in addition to working their way back up in the direction of Daytona Beach and Jackson and then it will start to work its way out into the Atlantic. The center should be out over the Atlantic or at least close to uh, the east coast of Florida by four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's why we say it's such a long duration. If you remember with Irma, when we hit, hit those peak winds and when the rain was coming in, it was a couple of hours and then things started to improve. And that is not going to be the case with this. We've already seen uh, winds starting to approach the tropical storm force uh, and uh, tropical storm levels so above 40 miles per hour sustained in our southern counties, and that's starting to edge its way up around Pinellas and Hillsborough County. Now, as far as those winds go, again, we've got a really wide, my, my uh, sleeve keeps hitting, the, hitting this. Okay, so um, we've got a really wide area here of tropical storm force winds, but the hurricane force, if you, as you've heard Dennis saying uh, over and over again, really just to emphasize it, it's a much smaller diameter. And again, this circle that's red is showing the hurricane force winds. It's not showing 155 mile per hour winds. This is showing anything over 74. So we are looking at the majority of the area uh, encountering tropical storm force winds for an extended period of time. So here we are 1030 in the morning on Wednesday. And again, this is projecting that some areas will be seeing in the 40 mile per hour range and some in the 50 to 60. That's what we're seeing right now. And then as we continue through noon, we're still seeing it all across the area.
We start to have a chance for some of the stronger wind gusts that reach that hurricane level uh, above 74 miles per hour by this afternoon. So we're talking 1, 3 o'clock as the uh, storm is making landfall. We'll get some of those stronger winds in that area that looks to be Sarasota, Hardy uh, counties south towards Fort Myers around uh, Cape Coral. That's where Boca Grande, that's where you're going to have that uh, short period of time where you've got that chance for some very intense hurricane force winds as it moves on shore. But again, it's a pretty limited area geographically closer to the coast, and then we'll see those wind speeds coming down. Do we have the latest track? Yeah, not exactly. All right. Let's take camera three. And well, the reason I want to bump in is because we have an extreme wind warning that was just issued, the first warning across the area. Um, it's down around Max Fort three. Myers. Yeah. Max three is yeah, what we want. Yeah, take the key wall and Max three, guys. And we're going to be doing this for, it's going to be like this hot punching for the next 12 hours. So we're, let's just get in that mindset, right? All right, so again, as you see right now, this is a look at, nope, okay. stick with three, Max three. This is max one, go to three. <laughs> and this is the, the wind field that we're talking about. But, but again, there we go. All right, so max three shows you that purple area right there. The, uh, I mean, this is, this is unfortunately exactly what we were talking about. You see the eye coming in, right? And as the eye comes in, the northeast quadrant of that storm is where the extreme wind is going to be. And right now around Fort Myers, you see the area right there? That is an extreme wind warning that's in effect until 1245. So we are looking at as the system comes in, right? And we continue to see this track move off to the northeast. There is your center. There is the line. There's the northeast quadrant. And that's where the wind is. So you can continue to track this off to the north and northeast. And that is what you were expecting until we eventually see this storm wind down. But remember with Irma, we had extreme wind warnings that lasted all the way up until Polk County. So this is a perfect example of what you can expect for the next several hours when you take the track. And again, that new track is going to come in any second. And when it does, you'll be able to follow the line. And we often say don't follow the line, but this go around you should, because if you're just to the east of where that center of that storm is, that is where the highest wind will be, the extreme wind warning. This means there are winds probably of about 80 to 100 miles an hour in this area, and that goes on again until 1245. So Lee County moving into Charlotte County, this is where you are going to see, unfortunately, most of the damage. Even though it's a small area, relatively speaking, to the entire region, these homes anywhere from northern Lee County, you know, north of Naples, obviously, from Bonita Springs, even right on the fringe there from Bonita Springs up toward southern Charlotte County. But this is one that we're going to have to continue to watch, and we will continue to provide instant updates on these extreme wind warnings because they're the most dangerous one, and they pop up right along the path, and I would not be surprised at all if we see this eventually in eastern Sarasota, in Hardy County, and eventually into Polk County over the next five or six hours. So let's go on back to Shea. Again, we are going to continue our coverage here because I suspect we're going to have an updated track literally almost at any second. And usually the Hurricane Center updates at 11 o'clock and sometimes they bump right just before 11 o'clock, which is what they did last night when we had that dramatic change from north to south. All right, so can we go on over to Shea now? And uh, I'm giving an update there. Shay, have you had anything new? Or are we still looking no, at the same track? No, we're still waiting. And, uh, you know, as we've seen all throughout the morning and even from last night, that uh, we are getting a lot of information in short periods of time. So the Hurricane Center may be lagging just a little bit behind because they've been, they're trying to process a lot of information and get a lot of uh, alerts and warnings and so forth updated as these paths change. So, again, as we're looking at the path right now, we're still anticipating that, 
Uh, as this continues to move closer to the coastline and move on shore, we're looking at a Cat 4 storm. There's been no difference there and we'll continue to watch where the path is inland. And again, I think there will be more uncertainty about the exact direction that the storm is heading in once it makes landfall and continues to try to move across the state. Right now we're looking at no movement to the north northeast at about 10 miles per hour and it is uh, has been expected to slow down some. Again, we'll start to see over the next few hours how much it slows down and the speed is going to determine how much uh, how high the rainfall totals get. So again, lots to consider here. I'm going to step off camera just so that I can update my graphics, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, we are looking again, just waiting and it looks like maybe four minutes and then we should have this uh, updated. But again, we are waiting for uh, the, char the uh, National Hurricane Center to uh, adjust that. Now we're looking at the power outage index here. So this is a graphical interpretation of where we're going to have the highest winds and the possible impact on our power grid as a result of this system. So this is not uh, this is a guide. It's not the rule. But what we're seeing is that by about noon today, areas in yellow have a low risk of seeing power outages. And then as you get closer to the coast and right around that Fort Myers area where Dennis was showing, we've got that uh, excessive wind warning. Uh, we are looking at a much higher likelihood, of course, a severe likelihood of power outages through uh, beginning uh, right around noon. And then as that begins to move farther inland, we see that that area changes and moves a little bit to the north. Did we get it? OK, yep. it looks like we've got an updated path. So Jason and Dennis are going to analyze that information right now and we'll get it to you in a second. But again, we are looking at almost the entire area. Our entire viewing area by tonight at least has a low chance of losing power. And we have seen this on many occasions. We certainly don't want to downplay uh, the chances of being without power for an extended period of time. Uh, with Irma, we all know it was a couple of days in a lot of neighborhoods and even longer in some isolated neighborhoods, and that's the expectation. So we've been trying to remind you, make sure that your uh, portable devices are all charged up while you still have power. Keep them powered uh, and uh, plugged in if possible until you lose power so that you will at least have a full range of uh, battery power for a period of time. Thursday at one o'clock in the morning, we're still looking at a chance for power outages. And then uh, once that storm moves out of the area, the storm won't be impacting the uh, chances for a power outage, but we still may have lingering effects across the area. So again, as we're looking, let me see what I've got here. Um, as we're looking at uh, storm surge again, I'll go back to that. Do you have it? Dennis you can go back has. to me. Yeah. yeah All right. So we're going to yeah, and we literally just got the update. I mean, and that's kind of the way this is going to go for the next 24 hours. I mean, as Adia and James mentioned, I mean, the whole team's in here and we're all updating maps. So we're trying to get everything out to you as quickly as it happens. And we are still at 155 mile an hour winds again. For all practical purposes, it's Cat 5. I mean, 156 is Cat 5. So let's still get caught up in the inside baseball and the terminology. What we want to know is exactly where, how, and when, and mostly how strong. So the latest track, here it is. It really doesn't change much in terms of track, but there is a significant change in terms of intensity, and that is a good thing for Polk County. Because look at what we're looking at right here, okay? So you have a Cat 4 or five, I mean, go, making landfall over the next couple of hours. The track really doesn't change. I mean, we were saying last night more of a Lake Wales. Lake Wales was hit by all three storms in 2004. It was hit by Charlie, it was hit by Jean, it was hit by Francis. So literally they had an X marks the spot and there were t-shirts in Lake Wales showing the same thing. Unfortunately, you can add a fourth one to the list because it appears right now that the center or very close to Lake Wales. Now Lakeland, and this is very, very important. So what I wanna show you as you look, it's, we tell you not to look at the white line, but in this one you can because this track is not gonna deviate much at all now that it's moving on shore. The extreme winds, as we just told you a couple of minutes ago, are almost always right along the path and slightly to the right of the center. All right, now we don't, it's very difficult to pinpoint within a 10 mile stretch when you're talking about extreme winds because we can always have other areas pop up. But 
if this track were to verify, this is down to the southeast of Lakeland a little bit. I mean, the bottom line, all of Polk County is going to get hurricane force winds, gusts at least. But as we mentioned, Earlier on when the Hurricane Center had this, they'd had it as a three, I believe. I'm pretty sure right about here it had it as a three, or at least as it got close to Polk County. Now it's a one. That's a big difference. There's a big difference from winds of 70 to 80 to 90 miles an hour than 110 to 120. And I also tell you, our experience tells us that quite often with these storms, the Hurricane Center has a tendency to maybe underestimate just how quickly it can fizzle. Florida is a really tricky state with showing intensity and how it changes because quite often after we have had a lot of rain in the summertime, it happened with Charlie, you sometimes get storms that don't weaken very much as they pass across the state because the ground is so wet, it's so saturated, that it isn't like going over a traditional dry land mass that'll cause a storm to weaken. It still can get some energy from what we've had seeing in all the rain over the last couple of months. It, it, it was an interesting situation with Charlie. We expected it to weaken a lot across the state. It didn't, and that's why Orlando had 130 mile an hour, 130 mile an hour winds. But with this storm, you can clearly see a significant weakening as it goes across. And the reason is, is because this storm is going to be sheared. Now, there's still the question of just how fast it exits the state, but at least by tomorrow afternoon, about 24 hours from now, it will be exiting. So at the end of the day, folks, we are going to have 24 hours of tropical storm force winds across most of the area. Remember, hurricane force winds extend. Well, Shay, actually, will you do me a favor? Will you check the advisory or um, Jason or Greg, because it will say on the advisory how far out hurricane force winds extend and how far out tropical storm force winds extend. And that's an important thing to know. In fact, Jason or Shay, yeah, somebody check that because outward up to 45 miles and the tropical storm force winds are extending outward 175. OK, great. So that so that's important information. Hurricane force winds extend 45 miles out from the center. All right. So in the scheme of a hurricane, that's still pretty small. I have seen hurricane force winds extend 70 or 80 miles. So in other words, 75 mile an hour winds are higher, extend 40 miles out from the center. I will guarantee you as this goes north, that number will start to shrink and shrink pretty quickly. So by the time this makes it to Polk County, yes, it's still forecast to be a hurricane with 90 mile an hour winds. And we absolutely want to, and I've said this a few minutes ago, if you live in a mobile home and you live in Polk County, if you're within 10 or 15 miles of this track, of this white line that you see, and you live in a mobile home, you want to get to an evacuation zone or you want to get to a shelter or you want to get to some place that you're safe and not in that mobile home because that is the last place you want to be with hurricane force winds. However, we do see that weakening that will continue. But as Shay mentioned, tropical storm force winds, in other words, winds of 40 miles or higher, they go 175 miles. It's the whole state. I mean, for argument's sake, that really is at least the entire Bay Area, put it that way, and into north central Florida as well. So what this means is for the next 24 hours, we will see tropical storm force winds. So as bad as it's going to be, as that extreme wind warning remains in effect for Lee County, again, toward Port Charlotte, toward Bonita Springs, those extreme wind warnings are the worst ones you'll see because that means there's winds of about 100 miles an hour in that spot. And as I mentioned, that's what's going on right now, just coming in offshore as the eye approaches the coastline, probably somewhere around Port Charlotte in that vicinity, give or take five or 10 miles. And again, then it moves inland. So at this point, I would expect to see, obviously, tropical storm force winds for 24 hours, a lot of rain, and that steady wind is what often causes the trees to come down. Now, Greg just told me a couple of minutes ago, last report, the bay is now close to two and a half feet below mean level. So in other words, it's dry in many spots, just like it was with Irma. And tides are going to be a huge deal with this. Now, 
I will stress we are absolutely not out of the woods for the Bay or areas to the north, but it is not going to be as significant, even close to significant of the issue that it would have been if this storm had been closer. But I'll remind you now, granted, Ada was a lot closer than this is, but it was also a much smaller system and a lot weaker. We have a, an unusually high tide coming up, not because of the storm, but because the lunar phase happens to be a much higher tide Wednesday and again on Thursday. So there is the time of your high tide in the bay itself. So we're now coming in from a low tide at 1049, right? And the next high tide is at 531. So the water will start to rise again, not necessarily a rush of water, but it will start to rise as it coincides with a push coming in from offshore to onshore winds. And, and I think that is when we're going to start to see the surge issues that develop. And I believe the Hurricane Center is still going four to six feet, although that's something else we can check as well. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back to Shea, unless the producers, unless you guys want to go back to Dia and James, if we want to go to some reporters, just go ahead and tell me what you want to do. Um, but, okay, so we're going to go live now because Mike Paluska, I was just talking to him a couple of minutes ago. Michael Paluska is pretty much going to be, he's two miles inland, but he's in an area that the eye will cross over coming up in the next couple of hours. So Mike Paluska, let us know how you're doing out there. How's it, show, how's it shaping up? Hey, Dennis, you know, earlier when I talked to you, we had these bands coming in, and now they're pretty steady. Wave after wave after wave, and the rain is getting even more intense. We're, yeah, like you said, about two miles uh, from the coast. We're in an evacuation zone C, which is not being evacuated, and we're in a pretty good house. It's a block house, so we're, we're not worried uh, about our safety until that extreme high wind warning comes our way, which in that case, we're going to hunker down inside an interior room. This is the worst of it we've seen so far, and from what you're telling me, Probably around 2 o'clock is when we're going to see that extreme wind warning. I'm about 90 miles from Bonita Beach, uh, where they're under their extreme wind warning right now. Uh, so we're definitely preparing for it. We know this is coming our way, obviously. And with the winds of, uh, what, 45 miles stretching out from the center of the hurricane, we're going to be on one edge of it, depending on the new track. I was waiting to go live, so I didn't see the new track or hear what you were saying about it, but I'm sure we're, we're, we're in, the, in, the, in the worst of it here. I'll have my photographer just zoom up to some trees as you see these gusts and these downbursts uh, come through the area. Just a lot of debris at this point and really uh, a lot of loud explosions in the distance, which are always kind of freaky because you just hear this rumbling and you don't you don't know what it is. You don't know if it's if it's a tornado popping down. It's most likely transformers. Uh, I'm hearing one right now. That was a really big one. Uh, the street lights are waving back and forth. Lights inside our, our home that we're, we're going to be staying in and hunkering down have been flickering on and off. But so far, so good. We still have power, uh, which is great because as long as we can keep power and we have all of our batteries, the longer we can stay on air, Dennis. So I, if you could tell me what, what you're seeing with the track and the path, we'll stay out here and you can come back and forth to me live. Yeah. And we'll just describe what we're seeing. And Mike, uh, so tell the folks exactly where you are and how close you are to the Gulf. So I think we're exactly 1.6 miles from the Gulf. We're in South Venice. Uh, we're in just a little neighborhood um, off of a busy, off a busy road, Inglewood, uh, and so we're, we're in an evacuation zone C, and we're just in this quaint, cute Florida neighborhood. Uh, seen some of the neighbors here; they left late last night. They were boarding up, doing final preps, and we saw another neighbor uh, walking around the area. But yeah, South Venice, about 1.6 miles from the coast, um, in one of those traditional Florida neighborhoods. Okay, and you're on the west side of the eye. So I will tell you, you probably will not get the extreme winds that they will have over on the northeast side. But when I say extreme winds, I mean, we're talking 120 to 140. You're still going to be looking at winds about 100 to 110. So we'll be checking back with Michael. Again, he's probably going to be in the eye, which is about 30 miles wide right now. So at that point in time, that'll be more than likely in a few hours. But as we mentioned, now this is not impacting our area directly in terms of the extreme wind warning. But eventually it will across Sarasota County, in through Hardy County, and eventually into Polk County later on this afternoon and this evening. So the purple area right there, Mike is a little bit more to the north, but the purple area is the extreme wind warning, and that includes Bonita Springs over to Fort Myers. And there it is. There's your eye, clearly. And the northeast quadrant, I mean, this is textbook. 
northeast quadrant of this hurricane is where the extreme winds and unfortunately it is also where the worst of the surge will be. So based on what we're seeing here again, the track is more north northeast. So right in this general area, probably from Port Charlotte south, maybe about five or 10 miles. That appears to be where the bulk of this northeast quadrant will be, and that is where the worst of the surge will be. There are a lot of areas in this region that don't have a ton of building. They don't have a ton of population. So what we are hoping for is that this may make landfall in an area that isn't quite as populated. I mean, it's a crapshoot. You never know if it's going to happen. But I mean, if we look outside right now at the main sale, which is in Manatee County, there you go. We are now starting to see winds gusting between about 60 and 65 miles an hour along the mainsail. Now, remember, when we show you these cams, they're going to the winds will be stronger along the coast. As you go inland, the winds typically begin to weaken just a bit because of the friction between the air and the land. So there's that live look right now. We're going to continue to look. I'll stress this one more time. The new track is in. The good news, in a sense, for Polk County is it does look as though that those winds will start to weaken a little bit more before arriving to Polk. But let's not candy coat this, folks. We're still going to be seeing extreme winds. And especially if you live in a mobile home, you do not want to ride out this storm in Polk County or in Hardy County if you're within maybe 10 miles of the line, the track, and especially on the east side, because that's where those extreme winds are likely to occur. Dia, James. All right, thank you so much, Dennis. Do want to pass this along to you now. We just got a media advisory from Hillsborough County Schools and also Polk County Schools. They are both closed on Friday. Hillsborough County Schools, as you know, activated 49 schools to be used as shelters. Uh, they need an extra day to clean those shelters, and I suspect that Polk County needs to do the same thing as well. And speaking of Polk County, that's exactly where our Paul Legrone is this morning. Yeah, let's get right out to Paul, and he can paint a picture for us of what conditions are like there right now if they've changed changed at all since the last time we checked with him, which was about an hour ago. Hey, Paul. Hey, guys. Yeah, it's uh, picking up. Uh, we got a rain band coming through. It's sort of been off and on the wind, the rain starting to turn up the volume, as you will, uh, with Hurricane Ian, uh, as, as Dennis has been pointing out, expected to move through here later this evening as a cat one hurricane by the time it gets up here to Polk County. The big concern from emergency officials is they've been communicating this morning with that last update. Uh, two things, folks in mobile homes, okay, because of the wind, and then two, uh, all of the rain that we're expected to get, uh, specifically along that Peace River Basin. They're worried about folks who live in that area uh, with extreme flooding uh, that will be building up uh, as the day and the night, as the day bleeds into the night and beyond. So I, I can tell you, we're in downtown Lakeland right now. That is Lake Mirror in my background here. This is right off Massachusetts Avenue. You can see the wind and the rain starting to pick up in sheets here. And I gotta say, I mean, there's a lot of cars that have been coming through downtown. And I, you know, you have a lot of people kind of cruising around. I think we've actually seen people. Here's this gentleman here uh, just almost turned around and we've seen people turn around in the middle of the street here. Uh, so I think they're sort of assessing things. You also have had evacuees come here to Lakeland because originally you, we've uh, talked today with people who were from Clearwater and St. Pete Beach. They made arrangements to come here to ride out the storm uh, because that was the best plan that they had at the time, given the information that they had 24 hours ago. Uh, as this thing has changed, now they're here. They're staying in either a hotel or with family, and they're thinking, okay, I guess we're just going to stay put and ride this thing out. I mean, there kind of goes the situation with, uh, as, as we all know, uh, how hurricanes can change their path uh, as they get closer. So right now, the story is the rain. Uh, obviously, it's going to get much worse than this, uh, but uh, you've got people out driving around, seeing what's going on uh, and taking a, an assessment. I, I spoke with a couple from Australia. Uh, we'll show you uh, what they had to say earlier. They were here on a three week long vacation. So you could imagine the impression that uh, they're being left with here. I said, please come back when things aren't so crazy, but uh, they're going to make uh, their way around the around the state of Florida. Uh, hopefully they get to a part of Florida eventually here where they don't have to deal with this. But uh, the story in Lakeland and in Polk County right now is one that we're going to see evolve later tonight with Cat 1 hurricane force winds 
and I, I'm not gonna put an exact number on it, you guys know that better back there, but they are worried about flooding. Uh, bottom line, too much rain, too fast. I can tell you my family in Plant City, uh, right down the road in I-4, that's where my kids are with my parents. They're riding it out uh, in Plant City. So I guess as you make your way back west, uh, the experience comes a, a little bit uh, uh, less severe, a little bit easier. Uh, but here in Polk County, they should be bracing for a long night ahead. Uh, but I get, you know, I'm gonna, I, I try to be optimistic, right? The good news is these storms pass and, you know, we'll get through the other side of this thing. The main thing right now is just stay safe. Guys, back to you. Absolutely, that is the main thing. Stay safe, hang in there, and we're gonna get through it. And as you just heard from Dennis, that storm surge that we were all so concerned about from t for Tampa Bay a few days ago is much less of a concern today. What a difference 24 hours, hours makes. And it's all due to that more southern track the storm is taking. And we did talk about Bayshore Boulevard and the water receding there. We're about to get our first look at it. We have our Larissa Scott, who has some new video to show us there from Bayshore. The big thing right now on Bayshore Boulevard is this right here. Hurricane Ian has sucked water out of the bay, also known as reverse surge. You can see the ground right now where the water usually is, and we have seen dozens of people running out here in the rain to come see this, but emergency officials are warning. Do not walk out here. It's dangerous and the water will return later with the storm surge. And again, as a reminder, Bayshore Boulevard is part of zone A, which is under a mandatory evacuation evacuation order, meaning emergency crews cannot respond if you call for help as conditions deteriorate. That's the latest here for now. I'm Larissa Scott reporting in Tampa. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Larissa. Another look here at Polk County, another area of Polk County. Our Chad Mills is live along the Peace River this morning. We've been watching conditions there throughout. Chad, what's it look like now? Sorry, we had to step out of the way for a moment. You can see this guy in the truck here trying to get it out of the mud before the river comes. I don't want to get splashed here. Yep, he was able to get it out, but others might not be so lucky as the rain continues to fall here. The earth already so wet here in this part of Polk County. Let me tell you where I'm standing. I am just east of the Peace River in Bartow. We are off State Road 60. They are expecting major flooding in this area. In fact, a Bartow police officer just patrolling through this area right now, kind of keeping tabs on how things are going. He says, kind of eerily reminds him of how the storms in 2004 started off before this, those storms arrived here. They started getting flooding like this in this very neighborhood. In fact, they are expecting the Peace River, which as mentioned nearby, they expect it to reach major flooding levels here. In fact, they think it could set a record. We've been talking to people in this neighborhood. It seems like a number of them are hunkering down against the warning, against the advice of Polk County Emergency Management. They said just a short time ago, they want people to get out of especially these mobile home parks that are so close to the Peace River. In fact, you sometimes get those alerts on your iPhone, uh, especially when uh, weather is approaching. We just got one just a few minutes ago on our cell phones, warning of, as the text put it, life-threatening flooding along the Peace River in Polk County. Caught up with one homeowner here just a short time ago. Here are his plans as Ian approaches. If they're gonna stick out here and they got cars that are low to the ground, I would definitely suggest parking at the front of the park. And if they can get out, I would get out. I've gotten things put up off the front porch. We're gonna have a lot of rain on the front porch. Uh, a lot of uh, exercise equipment moved to Mulberry to another house. Um, I'm about to put up some wood right here real quick. Um, and I'm gonna be headed towards Hayden C or, uh, Highland, Highland City. And back here live, if you actually look behind me, this uh, Chevy car right here, that's actually his car that he referenced. He says it's just way too low to the ground to keep here. You see the floodwaters already coming up around it. A lot of this from rain, some of this from the Peace River, which is just in the distance there, just behind the trees behind me. He expects that this area could easily have a foot of water. In fact, just a heavy rain in a typical Florida uh, day can cause ankle deep water in this mobile home park. So he says not something he wants to play around with. He's planning to maybe take some of his food, take whatever he can and get out of here seeking shelter with family in another part of Polk County, higher ground anyway. Other neighbors staying put, or at least that's the appearance right now. 
against the advice of emergency managers in Polk County, as we have been reporting this morning. We will keep an eye on this neighborhood right here in conditions around Polk County, including back in Bartow as well. We're also checking in with Hardy County Sheriff. They are expecting flooding along the Peace River in Hardy County as well as Ian makes its way up this way along the Peace River Basin. We're live in Bartow, Chad Mills, ABC Action News. Okay, you just heard from Chad, from Chad. It could be a very serious situation out there on the Peace River. I want to run through some outages now. The latest information that we have uh, across our viewing area. We're going to start uh, in Sarasota right now. Power, Florida Power and Light reporting 11,800 or so power outages in Sarasota County. Last update for this was about an hour ago. So this is an in, a significant increase in outages compared to the last update we got from them. And also we want to show you now uh, this is Highlands County now down to 60 customers without power. That is a big decrease from earlier today. We have a feeling that that's due to those bands that are passing through. We'll continue to monitor this and we'll keep you up to date on any changes. Another drop to show you in Polk County, just 28 customers uh, being reported without power right now. A big drop, but again, we do expect changes to happen here and that number to rise quite a bit. And also here's a look now at Manatee County, Manatee County at 5,560 customers without power in that area. Florida Power and Light just updated this number at 1017. Again, this will likely change as well. We'll update you as soon as we get new numbers. And in Pinellas County, Duke Energy reporting more than 2,000 customers without power. Uh, a huge increase here uh, from the last update, which came in an hour ago. And as of 1040 this morning, Hillsborough County, Tico reporting more than 3,000 outages throughout Hillsborough County. And we cannot stress this enough. Make sure that you charge your phone in case you do lose power. Be sure to download, if you haven't already, our ABC Action News app. So many of you watching this on streaming this morning, and we appreciate that. It'll help you stay up to date on all news regarding the storm. So grab your phone, open your camera if you can right now. We want to show you the QR code that makes it very, very easy. Yeah, It'll base the easy. phone. It'll just do it for you. If we can show that, can we pull up the QR code, guys? And it'll connect you to all of our apps. Stand by. There it is. Just point your camera at the screen right now. This will connect you to our apps in both the Apple App Store and Google Play. There you can find the live interactive radar in your neighborhood. And also, you can watch ABC Action News and ABC Action Weather 24-7, even if you lose power at your house. And that is very important because as you've seen all morning long, this storm can change by the minute, and it has been changing by the minute. Yes. Consistently it, inconsistent. That's, that's a good point. One area where it's been like that, Pinellas County, and that's where we're going to go back to right now. We have several crews in that county. We've got Heather Lee. She's live in the Ozona Crystal Beach area right now. Heather, what's it look like out there? Well, it is definitely a sight to be seen. We have neighbors coming from all over the place just so that they can see what's happening here in the intracoastal. This is something that we did see happen during Irma a few years back. Uh, so look, all the water has been pushed out of the intracoastal. In fact, Michael, I want you to zoom in over there. That would be Crystal Beach over there. You can see that pier just beyond that would be Crystal Beach. So you can see, I mean, that's probably a half a mile, maybe, maybe a little less. Uh, I mean, it is just completely wiped out here. You can see crab traps uh, out here. They have been uh, uh, surfaced. They have surfaced from the water. Uh, you can see here, this area, I spoke with the neighbor. He says, you know, if there, if there is a low tide, you may see some of this uh, popping out, but you never see what we're seeing out here. So this is definitely, again, a sight to be seen. Uh, you know, this is something Greg has been talking about, the wind shifts. You know, so, you know, you have the wind that's pushing the water out, and then you also have low tide. Low tide is around one o'clock, so it has been a falling tide for the last couple of hours, and then it's going to start to climb back up as the, you know, morning and the day progresses. And so around six o'clock, you're gonna see a higher tide. And that's also when Greg was saying we may see the the wind shift. So this may not be like this all day, but I can tell you again, this is something that neighbors are just uh, blown away by and they've been coming by just to take pictures, take video. I had to, a couple actually tell me they've been following me around on my trip around Pinellas County. Uh, they've been watching our newscast and uh, just following along, which of course we appreciate. We're glad they're doing that uh, just to stay safe and uh, keep updated and informed. Uh, again, we'll be out here in Ozona. We may actually go to uh, Crystal Beach as well. Uh, as soon as we um, you know, get a new live shot up or we find some new stuff, we'll of course bring that to you. For now, we're live. Heather Lee, ABC Action News.
All right, thank you so much, Heather. Uh, Hurricane Ian making landfall now near southern Sarasota County, it already beginning to feel the impact of that storm in the area. Our Jada Williams has been there all morning long. We do want to check in with her right now. Jada, what is what is it looking like there? You know, every time the rain comes and the wind grows, I'm like, I didn't think that it could get stronger. But the reality is, is that it is getting stronger and it will continue to get stronger. The wind is coming down. You can probably hear it in the background right now. There is a lot of rain. I mean, take a look at the wind and the rain together coming off of the top of this building. I'm currently at Fruitville Elementary School. It's serving as one of the 12 emergency shelters here in Sarasota County. Again, you can see how strong that rain is bring or the wind is bringing all of the rain off of the roof of this building you can see those trees that are whipping around as well now as we were driving around sarasota county this morning we saw a lot of downed trees so that's just part of the story you're hearing about these power outages here in sarasota county trees have already started to fall that means that there will probably be more trees that come down and here at fruitville elementary school again that is the emergency shelter that we are currently at. There are people who are continuing to come in. I just saw someone who said that he's just coming to check on some of his neighbors, some of the people that he knows. He knows that they weren't in a safe area. He wanted to make sure that they sought that shelter. There are more people inside. They're staying inside. Uh, there are lockdowns. Uh, sometimes breaks for people to walk their pets or just come out, get a breath of fresh air, but there are lockdowns because as these conditions get worse, as the winds get stronger and that rain continues to come down, the people here want to make sure that those who are seeking shelter at the school are inside, they're remaining safe. Now, there, there aren't a whole lot of people here. There is still some room. And like I said, people are continuing to trickle in. They're saying, you know what? I thought I could ride this out just wasn't the case so they're coming in and they're registering for shelter so if you are at a position where you feel like it may be safer for you to come here again there are trees that are falling down the conditions aren't great on the road but there are people taking that chance and they're saying I'm going to go to the shelter instead. Um, one thing about this shelter is it does not have a generator. So if you do end up coming here and the power goes out here, it, it will be a true storm where you're just riding it out without that power. Now, we will continue to stay here throughout the day. I will continue to have those live updates for you. So check back in with me later. All right, Jada, thanks so much. Uh, next, we are going to go to Tarpon Springs. And that's where we find reporter J.J. Burton this morning. J.J.'s been watching conditions there. J.J., the last time we checked in with you, it wasn't quite as bad. We can't see your live shot. Uh, tell us what you're seeing out there now. All right, so it's still not that bad. The rain isn't coming down hard. The wind has actually let up a little bit. but And there's still people outside, but again, that doesn't mean that things are okay. It's gonna gonna get bad out here, but we're right in the heart of Tarpon Springs. You can see right over there is uh, St. Nicholas Church. That's where they, when they're doing the um, uh, the epiphany and then they walk over here to the church. So you can see this is the heart of it. Again, it's really empty down here. The only thing that's open out here right now though is that Kappa Hagen Cafe. They said that they're just gonna wait it out real quick and, and see and then decide when to close. But hopefully they don't wait too long. Most of the businesses, again, everything out here is closed. You have sandbags and stuff right over here. And again, windows boarded up. Earlier, we showed you over at the sponge docks where all of those businesses were boarded up. There were some folks, some boat captains here, still out there, and they're staying on their boats because, again, they're watching the uh, cover and they are also making sure they loosen up their lines there so the boat doesn't flip, their boats don't flip over. And we also showed you down to where the um, Whitcomb Bayou, where that is gonna, that's a busy, busy, a big area for flooding. So their homeowners over there, they also boarded up their homes. Most of them are gone because that could get dangerous. But again, folks, um, the storm is coming and stay inside or go to a shelter. Reporting live in Tarpon Springs, I'm JJ Burton, ABC Action News. All right, thank you so much, JJ. I want to take a live look now uh, from our friends at WFTX in Cape Coral. That area is expected to experience storm surge. Now, even though that station is about two miles or so from the Gulf, there are a number of canals in the area. They can quickly fill up with that water pushed inland by Ian. We'll keep monitoring this camera. We'll let you know if we start to see any flooding out there. Dennis, though, this is not a surprise to you. No, yeah, I mean, the area is down south. Uh, again, that's going to be the biggest concern for the next several hours. We've got a lot of stuff to go over here, and it's very important information in terms of when the water comes on shore, when it doesn't come on shore, 
And a couple of things going on here. First of all, there is the center, right? There is the eye of Ian. Now, a couple of things. The center has to cross land for landfall to occur, not the leading edge, the actual middle of the storm. Once that happens, that's when we have landfall. Now, Greg and I were just talking about something, and this kind of concerns us because the track that it's moving in this general direction, right? I mean, it's headed toward around the Port Charlotte area, and it's moving about 10 or 15 miles an hour. Look at all the lightning that's going on on the left side and the southwest side of the eye wall right there. I mean, it doesn't look like compared to what we have in our afternoon thunderstorms. But remember, most hurricanes don't have much lightning at all. So when you see lightning around an eye wall and the, by the way, the way that it works, this is the eye where it's calm. This is the eye wall, which is right on the outside of the eye. So you literally can go from the eye wall, which could have winds of 140, 150 miles an hour to Tom to calm conditions in the matter of a couple of minutes. But when you see lightning in the eye wall, that is often a sign of intensification. So unfortunately, this is just worst case scenario for folks around Port Charlotte down to Fort Myers and up to Venice because you have an intensifying hurricane coming inland. You don't have a weakening storm. And I want you to look at this western eye wall. And folks, if you live in Port Charlotte up to Venice, where Mike Paluska is, and even into Sarasota, as this eye wall, as this entire storm moves off to the north, that western eye wall, where the extreme lightning is and all that heavy wind is going to ride over the same area for probably two to three hours. So instead of you actually getting the eye and getting a break, you're going to stay in that heavy wind for probably two or three hours. And I would say that's probably from around Englewood up toward Venice, maybe as far north as Siesta Key. So you see what I'm saying? This thing's going to be moving like this, right? In areas right here, you'll be in the eye where it will calm down. But areas on the left side, or for that matter, the right side from Sanibel up to Cape Coral in that direction, you will be in that eye wall for a prolonged period of time. So in terms of time frame, we're probably talking about a two to a three hour stretch. Now there is still that extreme wind warning that remains in effect for this area right here. That's the purple color. And that means usually when we have an extreme wind warning, quite often it means winds of around 100 miles an hour. We had extreme wind warnings with Irma in Polk County. That was the only county that had it, as a matter of fact. And they had winds of about 100 to 105 miles an hour for about an hour. Now, this is unfortunately heading to Polk County, but we believe it will be significantly weaker by the time it gets there. But I'll tell you, this track is an interesting track because the Hurricane Center has bumped it a little bit to the east. But at the end of the day, I think we all know that may not necessarily happen. The models at this point, I'll say it again, you, at this point in the day, at this point in the storm, you throw the models out the window and you look out the window because it is ready to move ashore as we speak. The red areas are hurricane warnings. This map hasn't really changed much except in the last six to 12 hours, it has expanded now east to Melbourne and up to Daytona Beach. This is a look at the current wind gusts. So across the area, Bradenton in the last hours had a wind gust to nearly hurricane force, Sarasota, Venice. But again, these numbers will update. And as that eye moves ashore, we are going to see this here. Now we are going to go to Mayor Castor right now. She is doing an update on preps in Hillsborough County and the city of Tampa weather stations that's located throughout the city of Tampa. And what happened with those weather stations? We are advised of the wind gusts. So in case of an emergency, first responders would not be able to respond once those wind gusts get up to a certain miles per hour. So we're asking you all to please remain off the streets, stay safe because you would not be able to get emergency services to you for the safety of you as well as our public safety first responders. We also want to talk about uh, generators. As we know, usually whenever a storm comes through, uh, we will possibly have power outage. In a situation like that, a lot of families have generators. Generators should be operated outside of your home, not inside, and it should not be started until after the storm is over. 
If you have any questions or need additional information about the safety of generators, please visit tampa.gov forward slash hurricane. That's tampa.gov forward slash, forward slash hurricane to get additional information. Now, because you don't have any power, a lot of families might light candles. Once again, that is a safety hazard. So you need to be extremely cautious if you decide to use candles. If you have a fire extinguisher, please make sure that is at hand, make sure it's available for you. Don't go out in the weather to get a fire extinguisher. So if you have one, make sure you have one handy and make sure you use it appropriately. Once again, if you have any questions about emergency services, please visit tampa.gov forward slash hurricane. Now I bring up the police chief, Mary O'Connor. Thank you, Chief Tripp, Mayor Castor. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just a couple of things. I just want to reiterate what, um, what has already been said, that we are not out of the woods. We are going to see some significant flooding in the Tampa Bay area. Um, as far as vehicles are concerned, I really strongly recommend that our residents try not to take your vehicles out and venture out. We need our officers and our first responders being available and ready to assist our residents in time of crisis and not get stuck in water. It only takes six inches of water to reach the bottom of most vehicles. So if you are driving around in six inches of water or more, you may get stuck and then we may have to come and, and help you out. Um, our shelters are still open. There are numerous shelters located throughout Hillsborough County. Tampa PD has been actively shuttling uh, numerous homeless individuals to shelters this morning. Um, shelters are still open, but residents are encouraged at some point once the wind speeds do reach um, higher gusts as we are expecting they will at some point today to just stay and shelter in place. Um, last thing I just want to mention, as I talked about yesterday with the enhanced property crime penalties in the event you are charged with a burglary or a theft, if it's a second degree felony, it'll be increased to a first degree. If it's a third degree felony, it'll be increased to a second. Tampa PD did make two arrests last night. We responded to the IKEA um, off of Adamo Drive to an alarm call, and we did locate two individuals in the parking lot um, that were loitering in the parking lot. They had numerous burglary tools in their possession, walkie-talkies, flashlights. It appeared they were um, definitely uh, planning on doing something at the IKEA. They were charged accordingly. So I just want to reiterate that you know property crimes are serious. Do not even think of you know preying on the vulnerability of our residents that may have evacuated. Um, Tampa PD is here, ready and willing to assist if anybody needs it. Thank you, everybody. All right, does anybody have any questions? All good? All right, thank you all, much appreciated. That was an update from Mayor Castor and officials from the city of Tampa. Again, we're gonna be giving you reporters out in the field, anytime emergency management's gonna be talking, elected officials, we're gonna give you all the information. We're not going anywhere and neither should you. Stay home, there's no need to go outside. A lot of folks are concerned about water with good reason. I mean, the surge is going to be just devastating down around the Port Charlotte area, down just to the south wherever landfall occurs. But a lot of folks are concerned about surge in our area. Now, here is what I would say is probably good news. And we have talked a bit about this, the next high tide coming up, okay? So this is the way it works. When you get a storm that's coming in, you get counterclockwise wind, all right? So opposite direction, kind of like that. So right now, as long as this storm stays south of your east to west line, wherever you live, those winds will be offshore. In other words, they'll be moving, pushing everything out into the Gulf. That does two things. One, it can drain the Gulf or not the Gulf, <laughs> that, now that would be something. That would be impressive. Yeah, it, it, can gain, it can drain the bay, okay? It's happening right now. We have our reporters out there and they've been showing how dry it is. It also, and this is important, do you remember with a couple of storms when we have an onshore flow, if you get all this heavy rain, there's no place for the rain to drain because the water's being pushed in. So it floods more, right? 
So for the next six to 10 hours, maybe longer, areas in Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, and all areas north will have an offshore flow. So the water will be pushing through. So it isn't until the center of Ian moves up along the latitude, the east-west line of wherever you live. And in this case, we're talking of the bay. So it isn't until that storm moves east of the bay and eventually north do you have the winds come around onshore. So that means we are going to make it through this next high tide without having any flooding problems. All right, let me say that again. The next high tide in the bay is around 5, 530-ish, okay? By then, that center will still be south of the bay, and we will still have an onshore, or rather an offshore flow. The winds will be blowing in this general direction. But you know, I mean, that takes us through 8 o'clock tonight. And then as your center gets closer to that east-west line, the winds start to change. And that's the overnight hours. We're now in more of a northerly flow. And then by later on tomorrow, the winds go onshore. But see, here's the thing. By then, it's a much weaker storm, right? So we don't have nearly the draw or the fetch that will put that water back into the bay in a flooding situation. So it will surge somewhat, but I really feel even though we are talking about a prediction of surges several feet above average, at least meteorologically speaking, things are in our favor with the timing. That high tide at five o'clock this evening, you will still have an offshore flow. So you shouldn't have to worry as much about a surge. But by later on, you will have an onshore flow. Jason, you have something coming. Right, a warning for DeSoto County. Okay, so here's what we wanna do. Greg, let's go on back to um, the radar picture, and we now have a tornado warning for DeSoto County. Now, I am telling you, actually in Hardy and DeSoto as well. All right, usually when we get a tornado warning, you know, you stop everything and you think, okay, we have to focus on this. Look, we are going to have dozens of tornado warnings today. All right, literally, there will be dozens in that northeast side. There is a ton of spin. Think about it. A hurricane is a giant pinwheel. There's a ton of spin. And within that spin, you are going to have smaller areas of spin. But I want you to, and, and more people, I swear, I think more people freak out about tornadoes in Florida than even hurricanes because they don't see them coming. I mean, it's one of those things, you're not going to miss a hurricane coming. But a tornado, you cannot predict where it's going to pop. And because of that, it can come anywhere, and especially at night. But at the end of the day, these tornadoes with a hurricane are extremely small. Winds of maybe 75 to 80 miles an hour. Now, let's not diminish 75 to 80 mile an hour winds. But when the winds of the hurricane are 155 miles an hour, you kind of see what I'm saying here. Overall, the threat of tornadoes versus the threat of the overall hurricane is significantly different. So if we zoom into the area here, I mean, again, Hardy to County over through Highlands County. Now with the track that it will be, this will all be moving back to the Northwest counterclockwise. You've got that spin, right? So at this point in time, these will be very small, very difficult to track. And I remember with Charlie back in 04 in Arcadia, we had a line of seven tornadoes that you could actually define. And I would not be the least bit surprised if we see something like that again, multiple small tornadoes at the same point. So again, this tornado warning remains in effect. This is a look at velocity. In other words, this is not, when you look at this radar, this is not rain. You look at radar, you usually think, well, there it's raining. This is air. And what we're looking at right here, there is the spin, okay? And when you have an area of red, that means the air is moving away from you. If you have an area of green, that moves the, means the air is moving toward you. And like a merry-go-round, if you think about it, if you're in the middle of that merry-go-round, half the time it's moving towards you and half the time it's moving away, so you will see that spin. Well, that's what we're looking at right here. And this is moving to the northwest. So areas like Zulfal Springs, I mean, I, I will tell you the majority of the time these tornadoes don't last very long. They usually pop up and then they spin back down again. But at the end of the day, you might as well prepare yourself. 
The only thing I can tell you in terms of direction with these, the majority will be from the eye diagonally on the east side of that eye. So that means people in Pinellas County and the western half of Hillsborough County and Citrus and Pasco, you will not be seeing these tornado warnings. Could there be a renegade one that pops up? Sure, we still have a hurricane coming through. But this particular cell right here, again, it continues to move off to the northwest. And, and I'll tell you, to me, I, I'm not going to stand here for 20 minutes and talk about a specific tornado warning like we normally would do when the bigger picture to me is a landfalling hurricane with winds of 155 miles an hour and an eye wall that's going to be moving in to areas of Northport, you know, down to Englewood, over to Venice. There is the significant threat. We will see additional warnings. We will note them. But in my opinion, the larger risk is right here. So there is the edge of the eye wall, all right? So this is the direction that it's moving. So what we'll be doing is showing these areas right here, the time frame that you are gonna see this wind. And I will tell you flat out, the winds with this are probably double what the winds would be with any kind of a tornado warning. So I'm gonna stay here for a minute because I wanna show you these time frames, okay? So this is the eye wall, and we are now getting close to landfall in the areas from Venice southward, all right? So we are now in that time. So if you live anywhere from Bonita Springs, and I realize broadcast TV, we only go down through Sarasota, but a ton of folks right now are watching us on streaming. They're watching us on Roku. They're watching us on, they're listening to us on local radio stations as they lose power. So we are gonna take our time and go location by location to let you know, because right now there is nothing more important than letting people know where these individual spots are and when this is going to hit, okay? So right now, this is some of the winds of probably about 100 to 120 miles an hour. A small area, 155 is not out of the realm of possibility, but in my opinion, the bulk of the wind is about 100 to 120, all right? This is the time frame. So Boca Grande, 1204 to 1214, all right? Right on through Englewood, 121, Port Charlotte, two o'clock, Northport, 234, all right? Laurel, 242. So we're at 1147 right now. So looking at the time frame, the worst of this wind, the damaging winds, and that is the area that we're looking at, the damaging winds, more so than what we're gonna see across Pinellas and most of Hillsborough County and even Northwestern Manatee. This is the real deal right here. That's the time it is going to move onshore and impact the area. And I will say this again, what really concerns us is this western eye wall because there are winds there about 100 miles an hour. And if you live, if you were to draw a line from the western eye wall right up along the path, that takes you into Sarasota County and northern Charlotte County. And you will be in this western eye wall for at least a couple of hours. So if you live anywhere along this line, look at the map, and if you're watching or if you're listening on radio, we're talking specifically southeast of Sarasota, diagonally down to the southwest as the crow flies out into the Gulf. That is where the bulk of this wind will occur, starting within about an hour and lasting for a few hours out of that. In fact, that's a good idea here. Let's go ahead and time frame the western eye wall. These cities right here, this could very well be some of the strongest winds. And this is your time frame, so be prepared. And as we've been saying, charge your phone now while you can. You will lose power. And you do not want to be stuck without any information, especially if we're talking about the depth of the severe weather that's coming through. Englewood, around 138. Venice, 219. Mike Paluska is in Venice right now. We went to him a couple of minutes ago. It's gonna be a lot worse over the next couple of hours. All right, and then we have Lake Sarasota 344 all the way down up until 5.30 or 6. So we're that confident in this track. As a matter of fact, we just talked about Mike Paluska. If he's standing by in the Venice area, I'm sure it's continuing to get worse as we go through time. But at this point, I'm probably about two to two and a half hours away before they really start to see the bulk of this eye wall. Do we have Mike? 
Not quite yet. Okay, so we're, we're trying to get Mike and we'll get him in a second. So again, all the lightning right in this area, right here where the extreme wind warning was in effect. I don't see that purple box anymore. Greg, is it still in effect or because it was supposed to be in effect until 1245? My guess is it probably is. These warnings will pop up and then they will disappear. But in the northeast part right there, there it is. It is still there. There is still an extreme wind warning. And if you're watching us on streaming, you can expect winds of 100 miles an hour in this box until 1245. So again, this is our biggest concern short term. This is our biggest concern the next two to three hours thereafter going into those cities I talked about. And there is the tornado warning that we also continue to track across Hardy County. Now, Mike Paluska is live in and around Venice, where at this point it's pretty nasty. But still, Mike, you've got a couple hours before. First, before we get into it, just to reassure everybody, you're not close enough to the coast where you're going to have to worry about the surge, correct? Hey, Dennis. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we're about, uh, I'd say, two miles as the crow flies from the coast. We're in an evacuation zone C, which they haven't called for an evacuation. So we're not worried about water. Uh, we're, we ran, of course, from the water, as you always say. And we're, we're at a house in a, in a, in a neighborhood with a, a block construction. And we picked a location that's actually pretty big and pretty open so we could show you guys and not be near any power lines or anything like that. Those I'm not worried about. We're a couple hundred yards away from those power lines and there's nothing else around us. So, yeah, we're in South Venice. Uh, we're just a few blocks off of Tamiami Trail, so 41. Uh, and we've been seeing these gusts come in, Dennis. And as you mentioned, it's getting stronger and stronger. I was getting set up and coming out here. I, I didn't hear exactly what time you said. I didn't hear what time you said it might be hitting Venice. So I was curious about that in my ear. Yeah, uh, Michael, we're, we're gonna be it out looks like the whole thing. about 2.15. We, we, the, the problem that you're going to run into is that Venice is going to be in the Western Iowa. You actually might not make it into the eye, which is bad news because you'll be on the West side for about two hours. So for about a two hour stretch, unless this thing wobbles okay. and we all know they wobble, you could be looking at 80 to 100 mile an hour winds for about a two hour stretch. And that time frame is probably between around 1.30 and 3.30 in that ballpark. Now, I see the water coming up behind you. I mean, is, is that been a recent thing? I mean, is the flooding continuing to be an issue? Because at this point, you're going to start to, to get an onshore flow uh, as the center approaches. Yeah, so I think this is just mostly just this rainwater backup. This is a culvert here, just a little bit of a ditch, and it's flowing pretty good down down back towards Tamiami Trail. So I think this is probably just one of the low-lying areas in the neighborhood where we're getting some of this. Uh, we're not too concerned about it. Right to right next to us, we're, we're good to go. We got an area, if it does get up a little high, we're just gonna pull our cars up and do a, a, a big elevated part in the neighborhood. And I can actually pan that way if Reed can take you over there so we can give you a better look at where we're at. That water does look scary on TV, though. It looks like we got like a boat coming in behind us. Um, but yeah, we're good to go. This is just a lower part of the neighborhood. Uh, and the thing that, that is concerning, of course, is we're going to lose power. Uh, and when that happens uh, any, is anyone's guess. But we've been hearing explosions. Uh, we've been seeing our lights flicker. Um, but the house we're staying in, uh, Dennis, this is great for us, you know, covering storms. Uh, there is a dryer in the garage. So we've been <laughs> able to dry our stuff in between these live hits. Uh, and I thought you'd get a kick out of that, uh, which is good. At some point, we're going to just be soaking wet to the bone. But, you know, being out here and being able to report what's heading up into our coverage area, I know we're on the farther south part of the coverage area. I mean, it's going to be crazy for people in Polk and Inland, as, you, as you've been saying, as it heads up towards Orlando. So we're safe. We're going to stay out here as much as we can. We want people to be calm. And then when we start to realize if our lives get in danger, we'll, we'll go in the house, of course. But um, I'm, I am looking forward to seeing some of these bands come through and seeing how sustained it is in this area, depending on the wobble, Dennis. All right. And one more question, Mike, and one more comment. We just checked. You are 20 miles from the eye wall, all right? So it's moving, what, 15 miles an hour, 12, 15, 10 miles an hour. So that's two hours. So in two hours, you will get the eye wall. So okay. right around two o'clock, as we said, it is going to really open up on you. Now, here's my other question. So this area that you're in yesterday in the morning was not even really part of the conversation. I mean, the conversation was the Tampa Bay area. It was not Venice. Right. And then all of a sudden, everything changed. So how have folks reacted? Are folks boarded up? I noticed one folks behind you, one, one house behind you is boarded up. But are there are all the houses boarded up? Or are there people who have just haven't had the time to do so? 
Uh, I wish all the houses were boarded up, Dennis, because uh, our, our house is not boarded up uh, and we only really have one interior room, but it's, it's a big closet. So we'll be fine. The neighbors next to me, they haven't boarded up. Uh, the only person that boarded up and got out of here we saw was last night, this guy just straight across the street, which will be hard to see. Now, back down where we were, Dennis, of course, you know, uh, Anna Maria Island, they were boarding up yesterday. People were evacuating off the island, uh, and, it, and it was it was a little bit different. We haven't been here that long, but driving through, I haven't seen as many people boarding up their houses as we did in the northern areas. And, of course, the track shifted, but and we were in the, the cone down here, but oh, yeah. people may have not have taken it as seriously and then just decided not to evacuate. We've seen a few people driving up and down this area and one guy walking around his house. But if I look down this street that we're on, I don't see any other homes, at least 10 down that have any boards on them. And, There's and, one and super far away, one side window. You're so right. You, I mean, we talked about, I mean, think about in Charlie. I don't know if you were even born when Charlie was, <laughs> came in 2004, but, but at the I, end, was, I was actually, I was in Charlie, but uh, I, yeah. oh, okay. Well, there you go. But I mean, the thing about Charlie I was, is, I was, I was, I was, well, I was in college, yeah. <laughs> well, it was the last minute turn, and and the folks in Charlotte County were not expecting it. I mean, nobody was. We thought it was a Tampa Bay storm, and this is kind of the same thing. See, you kind of I mean, it surprises me a little bit. Maybe these are folks that didn't live here back then, because all you got to do is go through one of these storms, and you'll never make the same mistake twice. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you've been out with our chief photographer, Eric Moore. He's actually standing here and he said, if anything flies my way, he's either going to tell me to move or knock me down so I don't get hit, which is <laughs> yeah. great. We have a spotter, too. But, you know, last night when, when I was talking to Eric, he's he's been through all of these. I've never really been in an eye. He said, listen, you go through one. This may be the last one you ever want to cover yeah. uh, because he knows how serious it is. So I think our viewers need to know how serious it is, too. And a lot of people have moved here. You know, we have all these new folks that are here and they think it's fun. They're going to ride out the storm, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, you, and you can't do it. I sent my wife and kids to Orlando. And yeah. uh, now she's probably going to get a cat one. So yeah, and that's we'll exactly that what goes. happened with Charlie. Exactly. People in the Bay Area evacuated to Orlando and they went right into the middle of the storm with 130 mile, went, 130 mile an hour winds. Again, Mike Paluska in Venice. Thank you very much. We will check back with Mike. He's about two hours away from the Iowa right there where you're really going to start to see some of the rough weather. Now, we've been talking about rainfall totals and the flooding. So let's go over to Shea Ryan in the Weather Center, give you a little more update about just how much rain we've seen and how much more we can expect. Shea? All right. Well, as we're looking at the totals as expected to the south is where we're seeing the highest amount so far. This is the 24 hour totals. And you remember yesterday south of I-4, we had a nice wide consistent band of light to moderate rain uh, that occurred for hours in the first part of the day and then moved north of I-4 through the second half of the day. So the totals are clearly going to be the lowest to the north at this stage of the game and will continue to be long term. Uh, but we're talking five inches of rain and in spots here around Venice, which we know based on what you just saw uh, with uh, Michael Paluska and what Dennis was showing you where that heavy rain and winds are coming on shore here within the next couple of hours. So we do have six and a half inches of rain just south of Venice here, right at the bend where uh, I-75 is heading toward uh, Port Charlotte. And then as you look inland, we've got a pretty wide area that has at least three inches of rain, five inches here just just south of Sarasota along the coastline. And look at this. This is what is headed in that same direction where we already have fairly significant numbers. Having six and a half inches of rain in a 24 hour period certainly is a, uh, a lot of rain for any area to handle. So we've already got some pretty drenched ground and then we've got the strongest winds and some of the heaviest rain going into that same area. So we put this in motion and you can see that even as the storm rotates, you're not getting the heavy bands moving in a circle with it. They're staying here on the west side of the system. System, and primarily heaviest on the north side. So as this continues along that path inland, anything north of the eye is going to be getting some of that heavy, very heavy, consistent rain. And that's where we'll see the highest totals working just a path across the state uh, more than likely. So as we look around Tampa Bay, uh, there's no road that isn't wet right now. And we're going to continue to see rain all throughout the day and into tonight overnight tonight and at least for a portion of the day tomorrow. So again, uh, this is the time to you know hang out and and just stay where you've sheltered in place and you can see the rain across I-4. We've got a little bit of a break there 
and then to the south again, heavy rain across 301 and into Bradenton and across the Skyway Bridge, which we know is closed now. All right, back to uh, James and Dia. You've uh, got some new video, I hear. Okay, uh, Shay, first we do want to go to um, Bradenton. Actually, this is the power outages that we've been telling you about in, in Naples. Just some incredible video right now. Uh, this happened as Ian was slamming Naples. You can see the power line sparking. It looks like an explosion as it comes in contact with the wet, the wet grass below. Florida Power and Light reports almost 37,000 people are without power. Just incredible video. And this right here, this is proof of why first responders tell you stay off the roads because you never know what's going to happen. This right here uh, is some of the dangers, some of the challenges that you could run into. You know, Michael Paluska get, talking to us in Venice, talking about hearing rumbling and hearing noises in the background. Not sure what it is. That's a possibility right there. We're going to go right back into Shea Ryan. Shea, what do you have for us? Yeah, no, I was just uh, pulling up a wider map here so that you can see uh, where where we're at. So we've got Fort Myers in Sarasota and Naples farther to the south. And again, the heaviest or the strongest winds at this point are uh, still yet to move on shore as this as we continue to watch the system. So again, as we uh, look a little farther inland, we've got that very heavy rain as well south of Wachula and along Sebring into Lake Placid. And we are going to watch the uh, movement of this system run right along that line here across the Fort Myers area and then inland across uh, portions of Polk County, certainly to be impacted uh, quite a bit by not only the heavy rain, but also some of these stronger winds. Uh, we did, as we take a look right now at the current wind speeds, we've got a good amount of the area here south of, I, uh, south of Tampa Bay that is already encountering those really consistent tropical storm force winds, of course, Gus higher than that. We've seen gusts into uh, the uh, 60 to just about 70 mile per hour range. And when you look at the direction of the winds, and again, these are the sustained winds. So in Naples right now, sustained winds at 61 miles per hour heading inland. And so we know the eye is right in there. You've got the winds moving to the northeast uh, on the south side of the system and then coming back around, which is again, that great news for Tampa Bay that it is at high tide coming away. The winds are pulling away from the coastline, but that's the circulation that we're seeing setting up right now with those winds and the speeds uh, highest right there around Naples at the moment. And again, those are the current wind speeds. Looking at the path of the rain, again, wanted to emphasize on the north side, that's where we're going to continue to see the heaviest rain. It's not going to wrap around it to the south. It's going to stay on the north and west side and then really shift more to the north as it continues to cross the state. So that path is where we'll see those highest totals. And then if as it's making its way out into uh, the Atlantic, that's where we'll start to see uh, some see where it's going to either continue on north or uh, or which direction it would head in at that point and what kind of impacts it can have on Georgia and South Carolina in the days ahead. All right, Dia, James, back to you guys. Thank you so much, Shay. Our Adam Walser is stationed right now north of Sarasota County, where that storm or Hurricane Ian is now moving ashore. And he's about to give us our first look at Bradenton. Adam, we're we'll send it right out to you. Hey, as you can see, the wind's kicking up quite a bit right now. These bomb fronds uh, coming off. Some of them we saw on the streets as we were heading over here. We've seen a really consistent wind, and the rain is just coming down in sheets. Right now, the the big concern last night when we were out here was that storm surge uh, coming in here but right now uh, here at the marina it, it's almost dry right now so uh, a lot of the water has moved out into the bay uh, we're protected by the big marina building here so it, it's, a, it's a lot uh, the wind is a lot stronger on the other side but we're still getting uh, these big blast of wind from time to time it is a steady rain you can see uh, some of the rain coming through these these drainage pipes it's, it's on the street starting to gather and so it's obviously going to be uh, quite worse in a few hours as this storm heads north but right now uh, we've also seen the the power blink a few times in our hotel it hasn't gone off yet but obviously some warnings of what could be to come right now we're seeing lights over behind us at the building across the street so power has not gone out but that certainly is a fear at the hotel where we were staying they shut down the elevators and uh, they've, they've warned people that 
They may be under a generator later on today. Um, obviously, a lot of people from those barrier islands, Santa Maria Island, and other places uh, that are on the on the coast there in Brayton have moved inland. Uh, here, here at uh, the, rather the coast of Manatee County, moved inland for shelter. So it's a full house in there. People with their dogs just uh, kind of riding out the storm right now. Uh, but we're seeing big gusts, heavy rains, and it's only going to get worse throughout the day. Reporting live in Bradenton, Adam Walser, ABC Action News. All right, thank you so much, Adam. Again, in Manatee County, we can see or imagine how bad it is as we look at the storm on radar. But our Jada Williams is in Sarasota County right now. She's in the middle of it. Yes, she is and expect to see conditions a little bit worse than what we just saw with Adam as we move a little bit further south. Jada. Yeah, the, the rain is pouring. It's coming down. The wind is so strong. Take a look at this. I am at one of the emergency shelters here in Sarasota County. It's an elementary school, Fruitville Elementary School. The wind so strong that this ball blew off the top of the building. Who knows how long one of the kids here at the elementary school got that ball stuck up there, but the wind has knocked it off and came flying down. There's a lot of small debris, not really big debris out here at the shelter that's on the ground right now. But as we were driving into Fruitville Elementary School, saw a tree down blocking an entire path of the road. We uh, saw a lot of people coming in since we've been here. We've been here a couple of hours by now. A lot of people who have kind of came in here, they said that they didn't feel safe where they were, so they wanted to come to a place that is safe. We'll continue to stay out here and give you the latest. But for now, reporting live, Jada Williams, ABC Action News. All right, thank you so much, Jada. As this storm continues to make its way on shore, Polk County is also in the crosshairs. And they certainly are, uh, certainly an area where we could have hurricane force winds. Paul Legrone, he is live for us this morning there in Lakeland. Paul, what are you seeing? Yeah, hey, we're on the corner of Maine and Massachusetts here in downtown Lakeland. That's Lake Mirror in the background here. And as I just, uh, I'm gonna walk across the street, look both ways, right? Uh, the wind has picked up, the rain has picked up, and we've actually seen a lot of people driving through this area of downtown Lakeland. A lot of cars around here, a lot of people too, because what happened, guys, is they came over from the coast thinking this was going to be the place to ride it out because obviously they were worried about storm surge. We actually have people arriving still uh, at this very minute. Uh, and so as I walk up uh, to this location that we're at, at, I can tell you that I've talked to a lot of people from St. Pete, Clearwater, Indian Rocks, uh, Tampa. They came inland here uh, to, to ride it out. So, you know, Cat 1 is what we're expecting here later tonight. The rain is going to be also very much in play in the equation because we're going to get a lot of it very quickly. The concern from emergency officials here, and they've made it abundantly clear, if you're in a mobile home, get out and get out now. They've opened virtually every single school in Polk County as a shelter, uh, but obviously your window of time is closing to, to get shelter. They're worried about the wind uh, with those mobile homes, but they're also concerned about the flooding, uh, specifically along the Peace River Basin uh, and then south of Lake Hancock. Uh, the storm expected to pass through Lakeland, uh, then to Polk City um, and, and as it moves on. Um, and so Polk County is very much going to be dealing with Cat one conditions uh, and the rain, the heavy rain that comes with it. Uh, I, I'm kind of interested in the fact that you just have a lot of people driving through. I think they're just kind of getting a sense of the conditions and what it's going to be like. And we've spoken, we, we actually spoke to a couple from Australia. Uh, I, I don't think it was their honeymoon, but they were definitely, this was a planned trip that they took the time to plan. They were going to be here for three weeks. And so they're now getting a true Florida experience uh, riding out a hurricane uh, during their vacation. So uh, we actually, it looks like there's some folks, Tim, arriving right now. Uh, so you still have people even at this late hour coming here to Lakeland uh, to get uh, to a hotel. Um, I've even, uh, I spoke to a couple earlier from Puerto Rico that um, that uh, they, they've lived through some storms there, obviously, and they were in a mobile home here locally, and they came here to this, uh, to this hotel here in downtown Lakeland. So uh, that's the story. It's uh, seek shelter, right? It's both not only hide from the wind, but run from the water, and people are doing both here in Polk County. Guys, back to you.
All right, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, we've got reporters all over the Bay Area. The entire Bay Area is going to feel the impacts of Hurricane Ian one way or another. Uh, Paul mentioned that people were just driving by trying to get a sense of what the conditions look like in Lakeland. It was calm there right now. We do want to check in with Riverview to see what kind of conditions are being seen there. That's right. We have our Sarah Hollenbeck. She's actually live near the Alifaya River. I think this will be our, one of our first looks at the Alifaya and let's see what conditions are like. Sarah, show us. Yeah, and similar to Bayshore, what we're seeing out here is that that water is just being sucked out of the Alifaya River. Let me step out to show you what we're seeing. Now, many people out here have stopped by to tell us they saw a similar thing during Hurricane Irma where this water was sucked out. Now, if you're familiar with the Alifaya River, it actually leads to Hillsborough Bay, and this area divides the Gibsonton and Riverview areas with this river. Now, lots of people we've seen coming out here actually stepping out trying to get to this area. Hillsborough County leaders are saying, please don't do that. It can be very dangerous with the storm surge. And as we've been out here over the past hour or so, we've watched as more and more of this area is exposed as the water continues to get sucked out. And of course, at some point that's likely to come back. And some of these boats out here are now grounded. And when we first got here, they were sitting in at least a couple feet of water. So it's really a changing condition out here. The big news from Hillsborough County is they're telling folks that this storm is not over. You want to be careful. Don't come out here and try and, you know, look at the sites because it's very important that you realize that the worst could still be yet to come in the Tampa Bay area. But we will continue to monitor conditions out here in Riverview. I'm Sarah Hollenbeck and back to you, Dennis. Thank you very much, Sarah. Yeah, we got a lot of things to go over here and over the next six to 12 hours, it is going to be a constant thing. So we'll remind you again, a lot of folks are going to lose power. Charge your phones now while you can. If you have battery backups, you want to do that. So there is the eye. It is getting very, very close to the coast. Now, a lot of folks wonder what does landfall mean? Landfall does not occur until the center of the storm crosses the coast. So the leading edge there, this is a visible satellite picture. This is like if you had a camera up in the sky and you're taking a picture. That's why it's dark at the beginning because it's nighttime and you can't see it. But again, this is the visible shot here as opposed to the other ones with the colors. Those are infrared. Those measure heat, the temperatures of the clouds. This is just an actual camera. Like if you had an iPhone or an Android, I don't want to alienate the Android folks. One of our early reporters said, oh, look at your iPhone. Well, I have an Android, buddy. Anyway, there's a look right there. And you can see there is a look at the eye and the leading edge is just about to enter around Fort Myers. We are already getting a ton of pictures out of Fort Myers of flooding of surge that is going on. All right. So this is what's new. The extreme wind warning has now been extended up to the north and west into Charlotte and the southern side of Sarasota County until two o'clock. Again, all you have to do is just look at the path as the storm moves off to the north northeast that will put this part of Charlotte and Sarasota. In fact, let's zoom into this area right here and kind of take a closer look at the cities that are going to be a part of it, because there you go here from Grove City up to Port Charlotte and down south to Captivia, which has already had a report last. Well, I think it was about 15 minutes ago. Sanibel had a wind gust of 98 miles an hour. So we are talking about some serious wind around the eye wall. So as you see right now, there we're already getting reports of large limbs and trees snapping off, covering the ground in the Pine Island Center. Now we actually have a live picture out of Port Charlotte right now. And there it is. I mean, that is just an angry looking Gulf of Mexico. The wind at this point, not tremendously high, but remember Port Charlotte is probably about two hours away from picking up the peak of this storm. So at this point in time, it has become painfully clear in terms of a location. Let's go on back to me guys. Painfully clear in terms of the heaviest wind and the heaviest rain. That would be an area from right around Boca Grand back toward Port Charlotte and then again back toward Captiva. So you can continue to see from Fort Myers over to Boca Grande to Port Charlotte, winds of 80 to 100 to 110 miles an hour. So there it is right there on that part of the eye wall. That is where the winds will be the strongest. And as we said, Mike Paluska is in Venice and in that area, 
They're expecting within about, well, I'd say around 2 o'clock. In fact, Greg, why don't we go ahead and do a little tracking on this here, and then we're going to toss to Jason in a minute because there's a tornado warning still going on. But at this point, you've got right in here in that western eye wall, as it moves north into the coastal areas, this is, I would say, between about 1.30 and 4 o'clock. I mean, this is the area we're most concerned about. This is great here because... As I said, the western eye wall is going to move in this direction. So some folks will not make it into the eye. They'll actually stay in the western eye wall the entire time. So from Englewood at around 117, Northport 224, Osprey at 308 in southern Sarasota County. And then you get into areas that we often talk about during our thunderstorm season. I mean, areas down south around Fort Myers, that's kind of outside of our viewing area, but I know we have a lot of folks watching on streaming. We are here for you. Our entire weather team, our entire ABC Action News team, and the streaming has certainly opened it up because a lot of folks maybe outside of our viewing area are still watching for the coverage. So trust me, we will not let you down in this western eye wall as it moves into the purple area. That is the extreme wind warning, and that is not like a severe thunderstorm warning that lasts about 15, 20 minutes. This is going to last a couple of hours, and as the storm moves northwest, the extreme wind threat will continue along. And now let's go over to Jason again, because Jason, we've been tracking a tornado warning and again, other severe weather with strong winds coming into the area. Yeah, a lot of wind reports beginning to come in from the National Weather Service. The latest 62 mile per hour gust now in St. Petersburg. That's getting into the severe thunderstorm criteria that we're so used to in the summertime, that 59 plus mile per hour gusts. So those are the types of wind, and we know those thunderstorms in the summer produce frequent damage here across the Bay Area. So 62 plus, that's what we're looking at now as the storm continues to move further north. So like we said, the hurricane warning, even though the eye is staying well to our south from St. Pete, we're well into the tropical storm force winds now. Not out of the questions for us to get back into those hurricane force gusts over the next couple of hours. I do want to focus in for those of you that were under that tornado warning here over the last 30 minutes or so. It was in western Highlands County, northeastern DeSoto, and also through Hardy County. Good news, even though it still shows up here, it expired at 1215. The rotation has weakened. The National Hurricane Center at this time is not extending that warning further to the east northeast. So there's some good news there. No longer an active tornado warning, but that particular spot where the rotation was, it's going to be moving to the northwest at 45 miles per hour. So in it, Baird and Vandola, you have about 5 to 15 minutes to be prepared for the potential that we see another warning issued if that rotation were to occur. Within any of these bands, those gusts could exceed tropical storm force regardless of a tornado warning or not. So we're talking about 39 miles per hour greater as those tropical storm force winds have made it to the I-4 corridor and now we're on approach to see those hurricane force gusts in our southern spots begin here momentarily. Here's the radar in Sarasota and Venice. Dennis just talked about that extreme wind warning now for Inglewood. It hasn't been extended further north here from Inglewood, but as the center continues to move north and east, that warning will be pushed north and east as well. So Northport, be on guard because those strong winds, the hurricane force winds you have now are about to get very, very strong here over the next two to four hour period, and we'll likely see that extreme wind warning issued and extended farther northeast from there. Same for those of you in the southern panhandle here in Manatee County, that southeastern section, and then of course Hardy and DeSoto counties. These three, four areas here are going to be added into that extreme wind warning as the eye continues to slowly move on shore here. And this is where in at least right now in our viewing area where we're seeing the worst of the winds and then eventually these are going to be carried inland and head up toward Polk County here in about six to eight hours as the storm is only moving nine miles per hour. So we're looking at a really slow movement, very heavy rain. We've already seen up to five inches of rain here in Sarasota County, only at around two to four inches of rain for places in and around uh, St. Pete over through southern sections of Bradenton and then further south. But those rains, they're really going to start picking up and ramping up here as we continue over the next couple of hours. In Manatee County, you've seen waves of heavy rain coming through. It started with just the green and yellow colors, which is light to moderate rain. Now look at all the spots of orange red showing up as these stronger feeder bands closer to the center continue to move north. These bands easily over 60 mile per hour wind gusts as they roll through, but we're almost to the point where we could start seeing gusts over 70 miles per hour in these feeder bands for our southernmost spots as these storms continue to track north. Tampa St. Pete, Tampa the strongest wind so far at the airport around 40 45 miles per hour. But like I mentioned a few minutes ago in St. Petersburg, 62 mile per hour wind gust was the latest at uh, the airport here right in St. Pete. We're talking about at Albert Witted Airport. As we go a bit further to the east in Lakeland, 
not too much happening right now, but we are beginning to see those tropical storm force conditions for you all as well as those stronger bands continue to go from southeast to northwest and the nature coast. We're not forgetting about you guys, but of course the worst, the extreme weather is to the south. We are looking at your gusts only on the order of 20 to 30 miles per hour right now with more light to moderate rain coming through. So that's the very latest across the entire Tampa Bay market from south to north. We're going to continue to watch the storm moving north and east and one of the places that I mentioned a second ago that could be placed here shortly under that extreme wind warning is in Venice, and that's where we have Michael Paluska live. Michael, what's the latest with you, and how are things shaping up? I imagine they're getting worse at this point. Hey, Jason. Yeah, you know, the, the, the weird part of this covering these storms with the bands is that it gets so intense so fast, and then you see me in like a lull like this, and, it, and it's super calm, but it, it's picking up where there's more of a cadence to it, there's more of a rhythm, and these bands are just coming in like this one uh, even, even faster. I want to show you these clouds up here moving through the northeast and if my photographer goes in you can see the trees moving around a little bit when we get gusts those go whipping i don't think we've experienced even a hurricane force gust yet uh which is kind of scary because those, those are pretty strong in themselves so when we're sustained out here in the western eye wall at 80 90 100 miles per hour that's going to be uh that's that's going to be a, a lot worse than the the gusts i'm feeling that aren't even hurricane force but I, these these clouds are just ripping through this area those are headed northeast directly the way that they're heading that is tamiami trail we're about two blocks from that we're in south venice uh in a neighborhood in a block home and we are about two miles I would say uh, from the coast so we're not in any surge warning we're not in any danger of anything like that so we're really just gonna have to hunker down interior when the winds come uh, and depending on the wobble we probably won't be in the eye if it just keeps on the track that it's going but that means we're just gonna get slammed uh, consistently with those winds on the western eye wall I want to point this out because I know you see this big thing of water behind me and you think that it's rising and we're going to get flooded. This is just a low lying part of this neighborhood. Uh, it's pretty much been here since this morning and it hasn't gone up. I've been monitoring it and it's draining out the South Tamiami Trail. Uh, there is a fence where we are staying that it looks like the gate got blown off by a, a, a burst, something like that. Uh, but that's really the only damage we've seen so far. We, we are getting prepared right now where we are for the worst of it. Uh, Dennis said around 2 o'clock, 2.15. Uh, Jason, you know, you guys know you're, you're watching it. You're giving us updates. So we're now in one of those periods where it's just kind of calm now. D you know, it's like uh, nothing's really going on. So um, we'll keep we'll keep uh, we'll keep monitoring this and um, we're going to figure out what what's uh, what's next for us. And then uh, as soon as we get some more winds and things start to pick up, we'll we'll, we'll uh, come back out live for now. We're live here in Venice. Michael Paluska, ABC Action News. Thank you so much, Michael. Earlier, Michael told us that he sent his wife and his children to Orlando to evacuate. Sadly, sent them right into the storm, but it's going to be a cat one, possibly a cat one storm by the time they get to there. A lot of people went to the Orlando area thinking that it was going to be a safe area to evacuate to. Now we know the storm is headed that way. Just a lot of changes in the last 24 hours here. We're going to get our first look outside of Disney and we have Katie Legrone there. Let's see how things are looking. Katie. Yeah, hey guys, and you really, it really is interesting that so many people from the Tampa Bay area and south did start to make their way here to Orlando, but here in Orlando, they are bracing for Ian to make its way to across the central region later this evening into uh, early tomorrow morning. You can see right now we're just outside of Disney Springs. This is really the entrance into sort of Hotel Row here in Disney. You can see there's a a bit of rain here, nothing out of the necessarily the ordinary for Florida in the summer. Um, but you can see also the traffic. There's actually traffic is up and running here. We're not seeing the empty roads like we're seeing in Tampa right now. Here we are a couple hours away from getting the real crux of this thing. Um, and you can see sort of life in Orlando is kind of going about. Inside Disney, though, it's a site that you really don't see very often. Disney parks have closed. They close, They are closed today, and they are closed at least through tomorrow as Ian continues to uh, make its way up the coast. Right now, the projected path is to actually go over Central Florida, even hit start that a weaker category, of, of basically a category one, making its way over I-4 into uh, the metro downtown area of Orlando. And so that's basically what we're preparing for here. The city is also preparing for what could be historic weather conditions. We're talking about historic wind, historic rain. Uh, you can see things are starting to pick up even as I'm out here. This is a little bit more of a gust of wind than what we've experienced 
since we've been here this morning. A big concern throughout the day as we're leading into the heavier, more deteriorating weather is going to be tornadoes. I know that's a concern down in Tampa. It's still a concern up here um, to your northern neighbors here in Orlando. But right now things are are starting to kind of pick up. It's been this sort of off and on rain throughout the morning. Traffic is notable to me just because we know in Tampa the roads are, are pretty desolate right now here. That is not the case. You can see here's a guy here getting ready to cross the street. We've seen a couple people coming out of hotel row with bags, presumably just getting ready to sort of hunker down in their hotel rooms. Um, as far as Disney guests, we know the people who have been at some of their exterior locations, the campground areas have all been moved into uh, interior hotel locations. But uh, we'll be out here for uh, obviously the duration of a hurricane in as Central Florida, as well as most of the Gulf Coast of Florida is nobody's immune to this storm and Central Florida, much like the rest of us, are expecting some historic conditions here. For now, we are live in Orlando. Katie Legron, back to you. Thank All right, Katie, Katie, thank you. Yes, uh, I'll tell you, it's a family affair. We've got Katie Legron in Orlando, <laughs> and then we've got Paul Legron in Lakeland. Yeah, you they, know, their family, no doubt, just watching you know, exactly. going to the TV. Right, and, uh, you know, we, we've got crews all over. Right? We have 10 crews out in total right now and possibly adding more. Let's head over to Polk County now. We haven't checked in with Chad in quite a bit. Yeah, Chad is along the Peace River now. He's been talking to people in that area. Chad, we saw someone trying to get their truck out before it got stuck a little while ago. What else have you uh, heard from people over there? Well, guys, the rain has started coming down pretty heavy now. The wind pretty constant, too. Not too strong where it's causing damage, but strong enough to where we are under shelter, just out of the rain. And I'm joined with two people I want to introduce you to. This is Melissa right here. And on my other side is Stephanie. They live in this mobile home park so close to the Peace River where so many people are anticipating flooding perhaps at an historic level. And Melissa, let's start right there. If people are unfamiliar with this community right on the Peace River, it floods on any given Florida oh, yeah. summer rain. Yeah, it does. Um, it gets really bad out here just with the rain. I mean, we have to watch it out here and everything like that. It gets really bad. How high uh, does the water come here? And, and kind of what are your concerns going into Ian? Um, well, right now it gets really bad out here. It gets flooded really bad. You can see, it. Um, I got, you know, video of that or whatever, but um, my concern right now is the flooding and it's going to get worse because even with the summer rain, it gets bad, but with the hurricane, it's going to definitely get worse. And uh, we'll come over here to Stephanie, and you're, you're actually FaceTiming with, with your sister who is in Lake Wales, if you can turn the, the camera around. Her, her hair really was blowing because you yeah. say it is pretty windy there in Lake Wales right now. Yeah, she was saying that the wind gusts are pretty strong over there, and her screens have already been ripped off, and part of her porch is lifting off of her concrete over there. What are your concerns here in this community? Um, here is the flooding because the river is like right there. We walk out back, and the river is right there. So... Um, that is a lot of our concern and it floods out here, like my mom said, with just regular rainwater. So, I mean, it's the flooding. I mean, wind and stuff's not that bad for my concerns other than the big oak trees and stuff, but the flooding is the main concern, I would say. You know, we all got the alert to our phones just a little bit ago from the county. Of course, county asking people to evacuate from areas like this one, naming this one specifically. Uh, obviously, you have another member of the family here, uh, a Great Dane puppy doesn't have all of the paperwork with her so uh, that's kind of your predicament as to why you're not seeking shelter but if it becomes too bad do you think you will try to leave um probably not because of my animals and stuff i mean yeah a lot of people say our lives are you know better than that but um our dogs are family too so I'm just going to have to bunker it down, down out here. So. And, and finally, real quick, we b before we were live here, you were on the phone almost in tears with your mother who lives just across the street, uh, asking her to go to a shelter. She's elderly. She lives near some big oak trees. You know, if not her, then another person like her, what would you say to them? I would tell them to please try and seek shelter and stuff. You know, excuse me, you know, for getting emotional. You know, it is really rough out here whenever... You do have family members and stuff, so I do recommend people finding shelter if you can. It's good advice right there. Advice Polk County, other counties would agree with. 
We'll stay here in Bartow, bring you more uh, updates from this neighborhood so close to the Peace River, along with other areas of Polk County. For now, we're live in Bartow. Chad Mills, ABC Action News. Thank you so much, Chad. We talked about this earlier today. Um, so many shelters uh, are taking pets. The governor even asked some of the hotels in the area to change their pet policy so that more people can evacuate with pets. But again, uh, that woman talked about, you know, a problem that so many people have. They don't want to leave their pets and they won't evacuate because they're not able to take their pets with them. So our thoughts are with her. We hope that she stays safe. Okay, our Adam Walser is um, north of Sarasota County right now where the storm is moving ashore. It, he has got to be experiencing some some pretty deteriorating conditions there as well. I would think so too, Dia. We last checked in with him about an hour ago and we're thinking as we pull up Adam's live shot, it's going to be looking a lot worse than it did. Adam, fill us in. I'm a lot wetter than I was an hour ago. It, it is coming down in, in just sheets of rain. You can hear that sound that sounds like a hurricane. I've been doing this for a number of years and, and used to live in Mobile where we went through about four or five of them while I was uh, there. And, and it's this uh, familiar sound of uh, almost like a train whistle. Even though we hadn't got the brunt of the storm, it, it has all the telltale signs that the worst stuff is coming. You can hear that whistle as it echoes through the buildings here. And right now we're starting to see uh, these boats rock a lot more than they were earlier. A lot of these things have been tied down with uh, you know eight or twelve lines, so they they wouldn't move. Uh, there is a seawall at this marina right in front of us. Right now, uh, our our photographer Randy Wright is, is standing under a, a covered area behind a wall, so it, it's a lot windier on the side of the bay uh, behind him. But but some of these waves are starting to make their way in. These boats are starting to rock, and we're really seeing the wind pick up quite a bit. Right now, if you look on the streets of downtown Brayton, almost everybody's gone. We saw a few people who were coming, just kind of onlookers wanting to see what was happening here at, at the pier and, and look out over the bay. But right now the conditions have substantially worsened, so hopefully most of those folks have, have gone and, uh, and, and sought safety. At our hotel, it was, it was packed to capacity. Lots of people there with their pets. A lot of them were residents of, of the uh, outer islands here in, in Manatee County who are going there to sheep, seek shelter, uh, completely full, but luckily they have a generator. They say they'll have power throughout the night and uh, hopefully we're not going to be facing all the storm surge uh, threat that we thought we were going to see about 24 hours ago. Back to you guys. Certainly some encouraging news and some encouraging signs there. Thank you, Adam. Uh, let's take a look at uh, water levels in Pinellas County. Now get another look at uh, what, situa what the situation is. Yeah, there. Heather, Heather Lee is in the uh, Ozona Crystal Beach area. Heather, what are the conditions like there now? All right, well, uh, it is definitely starting to rain more here. It looks like we are maybe experiencing some of those bands coming through. It was uh, sprinkling just about 10, 15 minutes ago, and now it's starting to really come down. The wind is not as bad. We're getting gusts of wind, but it's not a sustained wind by any means. Uh, but what is so fascinating is that water that you were just talking about being pushed out of the intracoastal. You can see here uh, how far it goes out. I mean, it is almost hard to see how far it goes out and so many neighbors are showing up here uh, to just get a glimpse of this to take pictures a lot of folks are walking out there I wouldn't suggest that because you never know uh, when that water is going to start to come back or when the conditions are going to start to deteriorate even more than they are we saw some folks out there just now that uh, started running basically back towards uh, where we are because they wanted to get out of there because again it is raining more and uh, we're feeling those wind gusts. Uh, but again, it's just so fascinating to see all of the folks that are showing up, these neighbors who are just wanting to get a glimpse of this. I said it's almost like an amusement park out here, literally, because people are showing up in troves to take photos. Uh, but again, I think most people are being safe. Most people are staying up here and taking photos uh, of, you know, from a safe distance and then getting in their cars and going home. Again, uh, we'll be out here. We'll continue to watch this. Uh, and as these, uh, you know, conditions start to deteriorate out here, we'll be out here. We may actually uh, make our way over to the Tarpon um, Lake area because that is kind of where we're staying for the evening. And uh, we hear that that sometimes can uh, start to see uh, rising levels in the Tarpon Lake. Uh, uh, you know, as storms roll through. So that is something that we probably will check out. Uh, 
you know, we've just seen a lot of different conditions all over the place. We've been all over Pinellas really uh, this, this morning and into today. So again, we'll just continue to watch these conditions and let you know as things start to worsen. Uh, back to you, Dennis. Hey, Heather, I'm wondering if that was my daughter actually running through her shot. It wasn't, but that's my neck of the woods. And, and when you look at the area around Ozona and Crystal Beach, I mean, the fact that the water is so low, that is a good thing because that means the flow is still offshore. In other words, the water is blowing in the opposite direction. So again, as we continue to see, this is a live look right now at the Skyway. Again, let's switch prompter, guys, so I can see the monitor. There we go, thank you. All right, so again, this is a look at the Skyway and an angry chop, obviously, out there. But right now, we continue to see that offshore flow and the next high tide is showing up at about five o'clock. We will still have an offshore flow in those areas. So the next high tide for Tampa Bay and any areas around our immediate Tampa Bay region should not have a surge problem with this high tide. 12 hours later, the next high tide, which would put us into Thursday afternoon. I think at that point, there is a better chance that we're going to have more of a surge issue, but it will not be anything close to what it could have been a couple of days ago when the track was much, much closer. Again, the Howard Franklin, no, no one on, obviously. Is it closed, guys? No, Howard Franklin is not closed, but obviously there's a lot of smart people not going on. The Skyway is closed. All right, so here's the latest on Hurricane Ian last. Now, here's what happens, all right? Every hour we get updates. The storm has not made landfall yet. Landfall is when the center of the eye crosses land, then we officially have landfall. The track north northeast at nine miles an hour, okay? And our concern at this point is, and we've been showing you this over the last 12 hours or so, is on the west side of the eye wall, that is going to move into areas like Port Charlotte and Inglewood and Venice for about a two or three hour stretch. So because of that, and you can see it right here, the purple color is the extreme wind warning, and that extends all the way down just north of Naples. As a matter of fact, we've got a live shot here out of Naples, the fishing pier, where they're reporting winds easily of hurricane force, and in some cases, even up higher, 95 to 100 miles an hour. Well, we'll take that later. Again, there is a look on the west side of the eye wall, and this extreme wind warning means winds of about 100 miles an hour. Now, if you remember in Irma, there was only one part of the Bay Area that had this kind of wind, and that was in Polk County. So this purple color is one of the worst weather advisories you are going to get, as opposed to a tornado warning, which believe it or not, a tornado warning will have less wind than these because usually a tornado and a hurricane winds of 75 to 80 miles an hour. These extreme wind warnings easily go 100 plus and that's from Charlotte County and Sarasota until two o'clock. So again, I'd like to take the west side of this eye wall here and do some storm tracking because what's going to happen here is the eye when the eye crosses into an area, you get calm weather. But the way that this is traveling about like that, this western eye wall, and by the way, the eastern eye wall is the exact same thing. In fact, we'll track that one next. But the western eye wall, these cities will stay in that heavy wind for at least a couple of hours. So unfortunately, from Englewood to South Venice, where Mike Paluska is right now, around 2.30, Northport about 3 o'clock. So we continue to see these push for the next several hours because it's moving 10 miles an hour. So at that point, slow moving system, it will start to weaken once it does. Let's go back and see if we can try this again. The Naples live, the fishing pier in Naples. Let's see if we have, there we go. And again, you can kind of see that's a look at it. I mean, again, angry seas, there's the pier. You have to worry it in some places, especially near the eye wall, whether or not the piers will actually make it through the wind and more than that, the surge, because not so much in Naples, but I think closer to Fort Myers and back toward the Inglewood area and over toward Venice, you know, that's where you're going to see the bulk of the surge. Let's go back to the computer again, because as you see right there, okay, so this western eye wall, that is where extreme wind is. But where will the worst surge be? All right, so let's go ahead and focus in, Greg, on this area right here, the northeast quadrant of where the eye of this storm crosses land. 
that's where the bulk of the surge is going to be. All right. So anywhere on the northeast eye wall and at this point, obviously this is right on the fringe, but I have no doubt from Fort Myers northwest and eventually up toward Port Charlotte where the water comes in. They are going to have the worst of this surge and we're talking about a surge of up to 14 to 16 feet and you can see anywhere from the Port Charlotte area. This is the time frame that the eye or the eye wall, the leading edge of it where the surge will be highest will arrive and this is important. So if you are on the water anywhere in these areas right here now, obviously Arcadia is inland, but along the coast right in there, that is where you are likely to see the highest surge. But that track also shows you where the extreme winds will last. The difference is with here, the extreme winds won't last as long because you instead of going into the eye wall, you'll go into the eye. And if you go into the eye of a hurricane, it's calm. There's nothing going on. But the thing to remember, and a lot of folks forgot this with Charlie, right? You're in the eye and you think I, I know people who went outside and started cleaning up their homes and cleaning up the branches and everything that eye extends about 27 miles across. That's a big eye and based north to south. As a matter of fact, let's measure it that way. So it's 31 miles. So if it's moving 10 miles an hour, you will be in the eye for three hours. That's crazy. But that is based on the current speed. And remember, when you get to the backside of the eye in the matter of minutes, you'll go from the calmest part to the roughest part when you go back into the other side of the eye wall. Now, typically the southern eye wall is not as strong as the northern one, but the point is you might only have a matter of minutes to go from calm conditions to 80, 90, 100 mile an hour winds. So again, one more time, this area with extreme wind warnings, meaning winds of about 100 miles an hour, that's the area in purple where that will last for at least another couple of hours. The leading edge moving into coastal areas and then you have the western eye wall moving into our viewing area in the Bay Area from southern Sarasota County, northern Charlotte County. I mean, there's the track right there. You can see the arrow. So there's the worst of the west side of the eye wall. You extend it north and it goes right into here and will stay there for about two to three hours. Let's go over to Jason in the Weather Center with more updates. Jason. Yeah. As you're talking and we're watching this, we're talking about one of the strongest land falling storms, not just here in the state of Florida, but in the United States at its current wind intensity of 155 miles per hour. So we knew this storm was going to be strong. We knew it was going to be a potential record breaker, and that is unfortunately likely coming to fruition with it getting even stronger than those forecasts of it to be around 140 yesterday. So again, a historic landfall happening here in the United States with this one. It does remind me of back in 2018 when Hurricane Michael came on shore in Panama City and Mexico Beach, where I used to live as a kid and it basically leveled everything there. So we'll likely unfortunately see similar scenes of the catastrophic damage to places down to our south. But this also includes areas here at home. We're talking about Sarasota County and our, our far inland spots over to Arcadia, Wachula, and then eventually into southern Polk County as the eye weakens and moves north. We're going to see some really strong winds happening over the next few hours. As we look at the winds right now, most of the 60 plus mile per hour winds are St. Pete South. So we've got widespread areas now showing up with 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. We've got 53 mile per hour wind gusts now at Tampa International Airport. That's our strongest wind gust so far today. So the tropical storm force gusts, they're here basically along and south of I-4. Looks like Newport Ritchie getting on the act as well with a 49 mile per hour gust wind. And then we're going to watch those hurricane force winds really start to move on shore. Remember, Dennis was telling you earlier, the hurricane force winds from the eye extend out 40 miles from the eye. So the eye and the hurricane force winds are about 70 miles across. So that's where we're going to see those extreme winds setting up for us and that will likely stay well southeast of Tampa Bay, but we're going to get some of those gusts easily up to 75 and 80 miles per hour. The other facet is the rain that's on the way, so we've already seen a couple of inches of rain. This is what our models are projecting that's still to come here over the next 12 to 18 hour period, and that's why we're also talking about our flood threat being a huge concern here. Of course, the extreme wind and surge potential happening right now, but once the storm begins to move inland and weaken and the surge begin to drop, we have flood concerns here across all of Central Florida. 
So we've already picked up around an inch in Tampa. We could add another five to 10 inches on top of that. Inland spots closer to where that eye wall will be shrinking and going northeast. We could see in that orange colored area more than 10 inches of rain additionally on top of what has fallen here in Hillsborough and Pinellas County. In that orange and white area, Lake and Sumter County, that's where the center will likely be moving up across the state. So we see the heaviest rain away from the coast, but we haven't picked up that much here in Citrus, Hernando, Pasco counties at this point, but we're looking at a general five to maybe eight inches of rain less west toward the coast, highest well inland and east of I-75. Back south across Polk County, I've got another five to 10 easily, but this model wants to go even beyond that. We could see another foot of rain on top of the half an inch to an inch that has fallen now, and this falls in line with our forecast we've been talking about for the last couple of days, a general eight to 12 area wide, but we could see some spots getting to 15 and 18 inches. It ultimately just depends on how slow the storm moves. We are expecting it to slow down just a little bit from its nine mile per hour forward movement at this point. Down south, we've already picked up five inches of rain, so that's not a storm total for you. We're going to add these totals to the five to six that have already fallen here in Sarasota, and that puts us close to the 10 to 12 inch mark, and that unfortunately could lead to flooding as we're contending with the strongest winds here in Sarasota County across the Bay Area, Sarasota and inland spots, DeSoto, Hardy counties. We have the highest potential for the winds. Now, the farther east you go, we're actually seeing a dry slot setting up, and that's why the rain totals are significantly less in far eastern sections of like places east of Highway 27 in Highlands County versus north and west. So again, we've already picked up a couple of inches of rain here. Another five to 10 is on the way. Guys, so we're watching not only the wind and the surge as it's happening now, but our flood threat really starts to set up later today into tonight. And this could be an ongoing problem for us, not only today, but through the upcoming weekend, because of course all the water has to funnel back into the rivers, the tributaries, the creeks, and that causes a slow rise as all that water starts to move in. Plus we have onshore winds, which is not allowing the water to rush out from the rivers like it does typically into the bay and into the Gulf. So that's something we have to watch here over the next couple of weeks. Jameson. All right, Jason, thank you. Taking a live look from Naples right now. We are seeing our best look at Hurricane Ian at this moment. You can see the winds are whipping around there and they are about to get the worst of it. And it's going to be for several hours for Lawrence St. Germain. I'm Jameson Euler. We're going to take over for James and Dia at this hour. Our morning team doing a fantastic job keeping you informed throughout this entire morning. A lot of people woke up this morning not realizing they had gone to bed last night and this storm had tracked even further south and now they have had to readjust their plans maybe a little bit here. So and a yeah. lot of people in Polk County too not even realizing yeah. what was going to be coming their way as most well. certainly. Yeah. So everybody hang on. We're going on for a long ride here. As you just heard from Dennis, the eye of Hurricane Ian is beginning to move ashore near Port Charlotte. Yeah, and just north of that in Venice in Sarasota County. That's where we find our reporter Michael Paluska. Paluska is braving the elements right now. What are you feeling right now? Hey, Lauren. Hey, Jameson. Yeah, it's going to be a long night and it's going to be a rough day. This just started really cranking up. It just turned on just like a switch, just like that. Show you the rooftops just over behind me. Uh, they have been getting rocked with some of these gusts. I don't think we've felt hurricane force gusts yet, but we're, we're getting there. And there was actually just an emergency alert that I got. Sarasota County has now suspended all emergency operations because winds are sustained at 45 miles per hour, so they cannot respond to you. If there was ever a, a line in the sand that told you that you should have evacuated and no one's going to come help you, it's when you get that alert that emergency vehicles and the firefighters and police officers and the first responders are now hunkering down. This is pretty incredible what we're feeling right now. We're going to probably end up being on the western side of the eye wall and in about an hour, an hour and a half or so, we'll probably have these winds sustained 80, 90, 100 miles per hour. You look down these homes here and you can see a few of them boarded up. Uh, you can see uh, a couple of them that aren't. Uh, we saw some neighbors leaving yesterday and uh, they were getting out of town, but they left really late. So, you know, I was talking to, to Dennis about this and, and I think people probably were hoping that it would take that path up towards Tampa and then it made that turn uh, just like everybody's been saying, like Charlie, and that's what we're dealing with. I'm standing in an area that's in a neighborhood uh, in, in South Venice, and I'm probably about two or three blocks from uh, Tamiami Trail, and we're really starting to get some, some winds coming through here. This is probably one of the worst gusts we've seen. We're gonna step back this way away from this tree and get some more cover just to be safe, and we'll probably end up walking over to the other side. Uh, I do wanna tell folks that we are in a brick block home, and where we're reporting from, we're able to get to safety if we need to uh, as these winds come, come whipping around. 
and we also have an area where we're not near any power lines or anything like that that comes down. So monitoring the trees and we have a lot of things in front of us so we can see them and visually at least get time for my photographer to tell me to, to jump out of the way. So far, things have been pretty, pretty good here this morning. We've had just a little bit of rain. We actually still have power here uh, at the house we're staying at. So that's great, but we've heard a lot of explosions. The lights have been flickering, and I probably think we're probably gonna lose power here within the next hour or so. I'm hoping that the power company, uh, everything's good to go. I'm looking at some pretty st sturdy lines in front of me. Uh, but yeah, we're hoping to keep power, and we're, we're just gonna wait and ride this thing out, keep everybody informed as it moves north up our viewing area. We're live here uh, in uh, Venice, in South Sarasota, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News. All right, Michael, thank you. And thank you for telling us that because as these conditions worsen where Michael is, he's going to get to safety and might not hear from him for a little bit. So at least he's getting us those reports before this gets really bad. Our Jada Williams is in Sarasota County for us preparing for the effects of the end. Yeah, Jada, you've been there since yesterday. So what are you feeling in this part of Sarasota? Well, we've started to see trees falling down here in Sarasota. There, of course, is all of the wind and all of the rain that's coming down. We're currently at one of the elementary schools. It's one of the 12 evacuation locations here, uh, sponsored by Sarasota County. And that, that wind was so strong at one point, a ball on the top of this elementary school came flying down. Who knows how long it's been up there, but Hurricane Ian definitely brought it down. Now, as of right now, everyone inside the shelter, they are ordered to stay in inside that's because it's too unsafe for them right now so they can't come outside not even to walk their dogs take a smoke break anything like that until it the conditions are safe now as you heard earlier also in sarasota county the wind speeds have reached 45 miles per hour that means that if you call 911 you won't be able to get anyone to come help you out until it's safe for those emergency vehicles to get back onto the roads so that just goes to show you out here now that they are taking it very seriously. The shelter that I'm at, this is Fruitville Elementary School. It's kind of in the heart of Sarasota Springs in Sarasota County. Uh, it's not extremely full, but since I've been here, I've been here a couple of hours today, there have been plenty of people who are walking in. They said that they thought they could ride the storm out at home. They realized they can't do that. It's not safe. They wanted to get to a building that is stable and can support anything that will come from Hurricane Ian. So plenty of people have been coming in saying, guys, it, we decided that we wanted to find somewhere better to stay, but it is not full. Now, again, this is one of 12 shelters in Sarasota County, and we have been here for a couple of hours today. We will continue to stay inside. We'll talk to more people inside, but we'll also continue to monitor these conditions that are going on out here. This wind is very strong. This rain is coming down. You could probably hear behind me just how wild it is out here, but I'll send it back to you guys in the studio for now. All right, Jada, thank you. And our Adam Walzer is a little north there of Jada, north of Sarasota County, where the storm is moving ashore right Yeah, now. so he's in Bradenton. And Adam, how is it looking near you? Well, Lauren, we switched up the, si the shot just a little bit so you can see the level of rain coming here. You, you can't really see it up against the gray sky quite as well, but up against these green bushes, you can see it's really coming down here, probably at the rate of, you know, an inch or two an hour. It's just really kicked up in the last little while. So has the wind. If you look at these masts of these sailboats that are anchored here behind me, those are behind a seawall. And right now, the bay is starting to, to come in. Uh, the white caps, it looks almost like the gulf out here on the bay. And uh, they're starting to, to rock quite a bit. We're in a very protected space. I'm here with uh, photojournalist Randy Wright, and we're here at the Pier 22, and he's under a covered area, which helps protect our equipment and helps protect us. But we can see that, that things are really kicking up around us. You can see the palm fronds kicking back and forth. We've seen a couple of them fly off. Uh, we're really seeing the rain coming down a lot harder than it was in the last half hour, and that wind is really kicking up. I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it almost sounds like a train coming through here uh, between uh, the howling wind, and, and then we're hearing all these uh, masts and all the lines clanking up against them. I think we're in for a really long day and night here in the Bradenton area. Luckily, the thing we haven't seen is a lot of the storm surge right now. Not much water here in the bay. Uh, it, it seems like that is uh, not as big of a concern as it was 24 hours ago when we were talking to you from this spot. But obviously, we're in for a long ride here today. Back to you guys. All right, Adam, thank you. And taking a live look now from Sanibel Island, where you can see the streets there are 
starting to flood. This is exactly what we expected, certainly down in that area. Sanibel Island, very uh, famous vacation spot, especially for people who like to go looking for shells on the beach. Certainly not going to be doing that the next couple of days, but I know a lot of folks are probably going to head out there probably sometime on Friday, starting to look for some of those shells that may have washed up because this is certainly going to provide uh, perfect conditions for bringing a lot of stuff on shore that we normally would not see otherwise. I mean, take a look at this this live uh, shot, though, because you see almost it looks like a street sign or something in the the upper corner there, and that's just how high the water is already, yeah. which is pretty incredible to it see. It is. Our Stasi almost is live for us uh, at Ben T. Davis Beach in Hillsborough County. Stasi, how are the conditions near you? Did we lose her? And if you see those those cranes, every time you're driving over the Howard Franklin, you see the construction of the expanding project. So they move those cranes off of the bridge and they're just kind of stationed right now in the bay. But if we pan out and show you the bay right now, that, uh, you know, the bay that everybody's talking about, the, the hurricane taking a lot of Tampa Bay's water out to the Gulf, kind of sucking it all up. That's exactly what you're looking at. Right now, this is the bay that's normally, you know, filled with water. It is low tide, but this is extremely low. People are actually coming out, parking their cars on Ben T. Davis Beach and walking in Tampa Bay. Now, authorities have said that is not safe because at any point this water could rise again and you don't want to be stuck out there. But it's just kind of an incredible view right now. Uh, sometimes you can see the bridge off in the distance and then it'll get a little bit hazy and you can't see. Same exact thing with Courtney uh, Campbell. The good thing is, is that the water is low, so we're not seeing that storm surge that we were concerned about earlier. And um, you know, if you pan back over here, you can see it's kind of not blowing me away, but it has picked up about seven miles per hour since about an hour ago. It was at about 20 miles per hour. Now we're seeing closer to 27. Um, so we are expecting some of those bands. You know, it's picking up, coming in. You feel, you feel the rain, you feel the wind. Um, but as of right now, I mean, it's pretty calm here in Tampa, and this is good. This is what we want to see. Of course, we're going to stay out here as long as it's safe. And if it does not, um, you know, get bad, we'll keep these updates coming. Uh, for now, we'll send it back to you guys reporting live Stasi almost ABC action news. All right, Stasi, thank you. And as you're seeing there, the, the bay is starting to kind of get sucked out a little bit. It's going to be coming back at some point. This is what yeah. we saw during Irma. And then it's not just in the bay. A lot of the canals and the rivers that feed into the bay throughout the entire bay area, they're starting to see their water levels drop as well. So. An important thing to note there, it's happening on Bayshore Boulevard. If yep. you take a walk out that area, that part of the bay is also being pulled out. And authorities really reiterating, do not go out into that area. The water is eventually going to come back in, yeah. and you don't want to get stuck in that. Yeah, certainly interesting to see. Uh, we continue our team coverage now of Hurricane Ian. We want to check in with Anthony Hill. He's in Apollo Beach, where the winds seem to be picking up there. Hey guys, I'm in Apollo Beach where you can see obviously it is raining. It's quite windy, but what we have been noticing is that the intensity in which it rains and the wind blows changes. One minute, you know, it's raining lightly and this light wind and then the next minute, you know, we have winds like this, how it's picking up and then the rain will be coming in different directions. And that's essentially what we're seeing across the Bay Area. Uh, we have seen some people who are curious who came here, who went out onto this beach right here. Actually, to be honest with you, it's not a beach. Normally, this is a dock. And so normally the water can be seen all the way up to the rocks right here. The water has receded um, quite a ways out, several yards. I want to show you a boat out there just for a little bit of context to your right, Bernie. There's a boat right there. And so, you know, normally that boat should be able to be lowered down into the water and be able to float. That owner of that boat wouldn't be able to lower that boat if they wanted to. And so that gives you a little bit of context as to how far the water has receded and that's why we're telling people to stay indoors especially i mean we understand that you may be curious Listen, i'm a boy from the bronx we don't receive weather like this exactly so it is it is very interesting but dennis has been doing this for 107 years if he's saying to stay home that is exactly what you want to do allow us to be your your eyes and ears out here as we continue to report on this storm throughout the day and we will stay here and continue to give you updates throughout the day right here in Apollo Beach, uh, but we want you guys to stay safe. We're going to send it back to you in the studio.
Anthony Higg actually agreed on uh, on that uh, that total. 108. 106. 106. 106. Okay, we'll okay. just verify that. All right, we're going to continue our team coverage right now in the Riverview area. Dennis is standing by here, but we're going to go to. Uh, what, uh, or Sarah Hollenbeck, she's live near the Alfai River? Yes, yeah, she's been out there pretty much uh, for the past several hours now. Sarah, what are you seeing? The wind is getting super nasty out here. In fact, we've watched as it's picked up a couple trash cans and thrown them this way. But take a look, the visibility is a lot lower than the last time you guys saw us too. It's a little hard to even make out those boats in the distance, but in this area of the Elifaya River, we've really watched as the water has been sucked out of this area, which leads to the Hillsborough Bay. Um, there have been quite a few folks out here and even they get out of their car and they're like, let's get out of here. It's getting really, really windy. Um, but those gusts have been picking up and really starting to blow things around this park as we're seeing right now. And I don't know when that water is going to return back to this area in the Alifaya River, but it seems like more and more water is being pushed out of this area by the moment. Well, we will, of course, continue to keep you posted as uh, the winds pick up out here in Riverview. Sarah Hollenbeck, ABC Action News. So, Sarah, we're going to take a little bit of time now. We're we've been showing you a lot of what's going on condition wise, but I think what we need to do is focus right now on what our local viewers can expect over the next six to 12 hours, because there's a lot of folks that have not really started seeing the bulk of this yet, and that is going to happen eventually. But I'll be very clear about this. Those northern counties are not going to see the kind of impact that they would have seen if this storm had been more to the north and to the west. And that includes Pinellas County as well, and it includes the western half of Hillsborough County. So I know the message, and we need to repeat this message, we are by no means out of the woods with a track like this, but it is also going to be far, far worse to our south and also to our southeast, including Polk County, than it will be across the metro area and back to the northwest. And I'm, I just don't think surge is going to be an issue for this next high tide. Tomorrow's high tide, there's a better chance as the winds then come on shore. So there is the eye. Remember, the land falling hurricane is when the center of the eye passes over land and that's still a couple of hours away. Still though, this is worst case scenario that a storm is intensifying as it approaches land. I mean, it's just the last thing that we wanted and Jason said it a couple of minutes ago. I mean, this may go back to be one of the record books. Greg and I were talking, we were trying to remember on the west coast of Florida, we're not talking the panhandle because obviously Michael and they've had plenty of cat five hurricanes, but think of the ones on the west coast of Florida from Wilma, you know, was one of the strongest hurricanes ever to form, but it weakened a little bit before hitting Naples. So this is truly, unfortunately, the last record you want to hold down across southern sections of the state, one of the strongest hurricanes that has ever hit this area. Now, the purple color is an extreme wind warning, all right? That means winds are about 100 miles an hour in this spot. There's your eye, there's your eye wall, there's your west eye wall. The northeast part of a hurricane right there is where the surge is the highest, and it's also where the wind will be the highest. So you see right now, obviously, winds of 100 to 150 miles an hour. Now, when you see that number of 155, I'm telling you that is in an extremely small part of the storm. Most of these winds, and Michael kind of referenced this a little while ago, are probably about 100 to 110 miles an hour sustained. There will be some gusts higher than that. But the small area right there is our biggest concern. All right, so let's go ahead and go over warnings, and then we're going to go county by county and talk about the latest wind projections for your areas. Because water, we know rain's on the way. It varies wildly between maybe 6 and 12 inches over a period of time, but the wind is what a lot of folks are most concerned about. I mean, we've talked a lot about surge, but surge only impacts people who live on the water. If you don't live on the water, and most of us don't, you are going to be seeing the impacts by far more from wind than anything else. So as this moves onshore, the winds are still offshore north of it. So in other words, the winds are blowing out into the Gulf. So you're not going to have as large of a surge at all. As a matter of fact, Tampa Bay itself has been draining all day up to low tide. 
close to the levels that it had with Irma. So as long as the winds are blowing offshore, the bay will drain. We will not see surge. The winds do not change onshore until the storm reaches your east-west line wherever you live, okay? So the latitude, east to west line, once this storm passes you, then the winds will start to veer out of a more north, eventually northwest, and then westerly direction. Here's the good news. By the time that happens for the Bay Area, this thing's gonna be on the east coast and a lot weaker. So yes, there will be a rise in water to the north, but I just don't think that is the major issue, especially with an offshore flow. Now on the downside, high tide tomorrow, I think there's more of an opportunity for a water rise than today at high tide, which give or take is between about four and six o'clock, depending on the location. All right, so winds. Last hour, Venice gusting to 71, Sarasota 67, Mayaka City 65, and Bradenton 72. All right, we are going to go to Governor DeSantis right now for the latest information, and then we'll come back with our local. Feel impacts. Now, while most people in the evacuations did leave, you know, there, there were some uh, that chose to stay. I was speaking with uh, the sheriff down in Charlotte fine. County, and uh, while fine. most people did leave, they had a small number of people that just that's wanted it. to hunker down. And at the end of the day, that's a decision they made knowing that they had the ability to evacuate and knowing what the stakes were. Um, nevertheless, uh, safety, life safety operations will commence as soon as it's safe to be able to identify people who, who may be in harm's way and who are need uh, of assistance. And Kevin will say, I'll say a little bit about that, but Kevin will say more. We'll also hear from FWC about their efforts uh, that they have staged and ready to go. Uh, if you are still in Southwest Florida, just please stay inside until the storm passes. It may appear to be calm at some point. You may just be in the eye of the storm and the backside of that will get very, very nasty. The storm is expected to move across central Florida and exit Daytona Beach sometime on Thursday. Uh, we've already seen around the state tornado warnings issued far from where the hurricane is entering in southwest Florida, uh, and those warnings will likely to continue until this finally leaves our state. So even if you're not in the direct path of the storm, you need to take all tornado warnings seriously, uh, and you need to take appropriate precautions if that is happening in your area. Uh, the Florida Department of Transportation has just announced that Fort Drum, Canoe Creek, and Turkey Lake service plazas on Florida Turnpike uh, are now closed. Obviously, they will try to get those open as soon as they can. Uh, we have 200,000 power outages reported throughout the state of Florida, but outside of Southwest Florida, crews are working to quickly restore power. Of course, 200,000 is a drop in the bucket for what's gonna happen over the next 24 to 48 hours. There's gonna be widespread power outages, uh, particularly in Southwest Florida. We have over 100 portable cell towers ready to be deployed into the area uh, once it is safe to enter. Uh, once the storm is passed and it is safe to go outside, you still need to be cautious. Uh, avoid down power lines, standing water, uh, stay clear of down trees and don't drive in standing water. Uh, and please, uh, if you're gonna use a generator for your home, uh, do not allow that to be inside. Uh, the exhaust needs to be outdoors. Stay out of the way of emergency crews, out of flood waters and away from all down power lines. Uh, stay off the roads. There's no need to rush back. Uh, you're gonna have a massive surge of people that are gonna be going in uh, to provide, of course, uh, life safety assistance for those who, who may have stayed in some of the more hazardous areas. You're also gonna have power uh, workers going in. We were just in Lake City. I was thinking we had all these power workers, these line workers from all these different states. I saw them from Texas, Louisiana, all these different places staged. We have a massive, massive mobilization. Uh, their job is to get in there and help to restore services. Uh, you're also gonna have folks bringing in things like food and water. Uh, so there's no need to rush back in. Uh, there's gonna be a lot going on in the immediate aftermath and a lot of people's um, uh, safety depends on that. Um, you know, if you're on the roads, you're putting yourself in danger and limiting the ability of emergency crews to restore power and clean debris. Now, we, we don't know how much debris is gonna be, 
but there's going to be debris and that's going to make it very difficult uh, to navigate some of these roads that's why FDOT's immediate mission is to clear the roadways so that people are able to go in uh, and access that to be able to help deliver service services for people in 2019 we were projected to be hit by Hurricane Dorian which was a category 5 storm yeah, fortunately at the last minute it took a took a northward turn and missed the coast uh, but we did have a really massive mobilization this mobilization's exceeded that uh, this is a really really significant uh, effort uh, county level state level uh, federal support. Um, it's really been impressive to see. Uh, Director Guthrie has asked for additional airlift hoist and high water vehicles from DOD in coordination with FEMA. Uh, the Secretary of Defense has approved Florida's request for dual status of our National Guard forces under Title 10 to be to, to provide additional forces, which we very much appreciate. Uh, we will also be submitting momentarily a major disaster declaration for all 67 counties. And we'll request that the federal government reimburse 100% of the upfront cost for the first 60 days to ensure that we can quickly recover uh, and move forward into the response and recovery part. And if you think about this storm, we, have we had storms that have been as strong as this hit Florida? Michael, Hurricane Andrew, Labor Day hurricane many, many decades ago. Yes. Uh, have we had big storms that left a lot of water and flooding? We had Irma recently. Uh, this is really bringing both to the table. I mean, you're going to have massive amount of power hitting that coastline with really, really strong winds. Uh, that is going to do a lot of wind damage. But you also have the storm is so massive and people are kind of comparing this to the track that Charlie took in 2004 because Charlie was like this was expected to hit Tampa Bay. Uh, it turned and ended up hitting South Florida. Charlie was strong, but it was a fraction of the size of what we're dealing with here with Hurricane Ian. So the effects of this are going to be broad, um, and we appreciate the Biden administration's consideration for the people of Florida uh, during this time of need. When I was in Lake City, you had massive numbers of linemen, but do you have those staged all over the state? Uh, there's now over 42,000 linemen and, and other personnel ready to restore power in 30 different areas across the state. And those linemen and other associated personnel uh, hail from, of course, many from Florida, but from 27 different states. Of course, our Department of Transportation does have 1,200 personnel on standby to perform cut and toss operations, understanding how important it is uh, to get those roadways clear as soon as possible. Supplies will be brought in by plane, boat, and by high water vehicle. Uh, airports in Southwest Florida do have teams behind, and they are going to work to clear those runways as soon as the storm has passed. Uh, we appreciate the Florida National Guard's really impressive mobilization uh, of over 5,000 folks, as well as 2,000 additional guardsmen from other states. They have nine Chinook helicopters ready to go, and additional 22 helicopters will be coming in after landfall that will be here within the next 24 hours. Kevin will talk a little bit more about this, but we have the five search and urban search and rescue teams. You'll hear from FWC about what they're doing, uh, high water vehicles from Florida Highway Patrol, and of course our Coast Guard partners. Uh, there is gonna be a massive effort as soon as it passes Southwest Florida uh, to be able to get out, uh, recon the area and identify areas where there may be a need of rescue services. And some of these counties obviously know where residents decided to hunker down in. So they're gonna be looking there first. Uh, but this is gonna be really, really important to be able to get, I think in Hurricane Michael, I mean, it took, it took a few days to be able to get into Mexico Beach. Uh, we have the air assets to be able to, to recon and know where the, um, where the re re response efforts need to go. And so in total, we have nearly 250 aircraft more than 1,600 high water vehicles, and more than 300 boats of all drafts and sizes, including 250 already in the major impacted areas and nearly 50 that are staged and ready to come in as needed. Uh, these include smaller rescue oriented boats, air boats, and larger boats uh, that will be delivering supplies by water if need be. I want to thank the 26 states that have sent us support, uh, including Tennessee, Virginia, Montana, New York, Colorado, Indiana, New Jersey, and Georgia. 
I just spoke with Kay Ivey from Alabama, uh, and she's uh, supporting uh, sending uh, some Black Hawk helicopters down to help. Uh, Governor Bill Lee in Tennessee uh, fast-tracked a request that we had from Tennessee. We appreciate that. I was also just able to speak with John Bell Edwards from Louisiana. They've helped us, but he said, hey, we've got a lot of experience in hurricanes recently, so these guys are good. Ask us. We want to send more. And so we really appreciate uh, that consideration. And if we need that, we, we certainly will do that. Uh, we also understand that people that are going to be that are displaced are going to need assistance so the Department of Economic Opportunity has already deployed funding and guidance through com community action agencies to help Floridians in need of short-term support like utilities hotel bills and transportation uh, if they have been displaced by the storm uh, please continue to monitor uh, local reports weather reports uh, be very cautious about going out um, into hazardous conditions and then once the storm passes your area uh, just make sure that you're very careful because there's going to be a lot of things a lot of hazards uh, that are going to be down on the ground uh, i know there's a lot of people that have reached out uh, first of all, I want to say thanks. A lot of people have offered thoughts and prayers uh, for the folks that are that are in the eye of this storm, and that means a lot to us. Uh, there's also people that want to be able to do their part, and so I've directed Volunteer Florida to activate the Florida Disaster Fund where people can donate. It's much better to donate financially rather than sending items. Uh, we have everything we need in terms of the immediate response needs, uh, but there will be thousands of Floridians who will need help rebuilding. And to contribute to the Disaster Fund, you can visit www.floridadisasterfund.org or text DISASTER to 20222. Again, that's text DISASTER to 20222. Uh, for those who want to come volunteer, we have an official volunteer portal at Volunteer Florida, and that's at www.volunteerflorida.org, www.volunteerflorida.org, and you can look to see of the volunteer opportunities. Um, you know, this is going to be a, a rough patch here uh, for the rest of today um, and into tomorrow. Uh, but you know, we understand how significant this storm is. Yes, there'll be an immediate response. Yes, there will be things that happen with recovery. Um, eventually, they'll there won't be much uh, media attention on this as the as the weeks and months go on. But we understand a storm of this magnitude uh, is going to require an effort over an extended period of time. Uh, those are good folks down in. Southwest Florida. They've got really great thriving communities. Uh, this is uh, not anything anyone wants to deal with. It's not something we certainly ask for, but uh, we're going to step up. Uh, we're going to be there for folks, um, and we're going to make sure uh, that folks get back on their feet, um, and Southwest Florida comes back better than ever. Okay, Kevin Guthrie. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> as the Governor has said, Hurricane Ian is a approaching landfall as a Category 4 storm with winds of 155 miles per hour in Lee and Charlotte counties. At this time, the division has received nearly 1,000 resource requests from our impacted local partners, and 864 of those are either in process or completed. We are working as quickly as we can to address the needs of those impacted areas. This morning, I talked with each and every local emergency manager in the direct path of the storm. If you are sheltering in place in the path of the storm, we're asking you to now please visit floridadisaster.org slash info and fill out our shelter in place survey. Again, that is floridadisaster.org slash info to fill out our shelter in place survey. The shelter in place survey is designed to provide critical information to first responders about the demographics of your household so that they can aid your families as soon as possible. This is primarily for those who did not evacuate so that we know where you're at. This is not a substitute for 911. If you have an immediate need and you need first responder assistance, you need to dial 911. Please understand that those 911 services may not be able to come to you right now, but again, if you need emergency services, dial 911. Even if it is calm outside, you may be in the eye of the storm. I encourage our individuals near Sanibel, near that Fort Myers area, as the eye wall starts to come on shore, if everything stops, the storm is not over. If you can hear us, if you can see us on your TV, you're most likely to have bright, sunshiny area here very soon. 
you are in the eye of the storm. Stay inside. Stay indoors. Do not go outside. You do not know when that eye wall will collapse. So please stay safe. Avoid down power lines and down trees and standing water when it is over. Use extreme caution. If you see any type of line, do not cut them. Do not cut fiber optic lines. Fiber optics are the backbone of our communication system that allows us to have connectivity for your cellular devices on wireless networks. It provides access to the internet. It provides access to social media. Please do not cut fiber optic lines. To the communication, or I'm sorry, to the communities beginning to experience these devastating impacts of Hurricane Ian, know that the state of Florida is standing with you. We have plenty of resources to respond to your need. We have thousands of boats on the ground. We have thousands of boots on the ground. We're ready to assist you. We will make sure that all available resources are used to help you through this difficult time. Please do everything you can right now to stay safe. Thank you, Governor, very much for your uh, for the opportunity to be here okay. and be your director. Thank you. All right, uh, Colonel Roger Young, the uh, director of the Division of Law Enforcement, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Director, for your leadership and support as always. Well, again, that was the Governor DeSantis press conference giving an update statewide on what's going on with Hurricane Ian. So we're going to use this time right now to bring it down to our neighborhood levels. And I want to do some reminders, okay? We've got several things that are worth noting. We are starting to hear reports of power outages and even in areas that you would not necessarily expect. In Pinellas County, where the winds haven't been all that strong yet, we're seeing some outages. And we may have just had one right there because I'm now in black. There we go, I'm back. So anyway, <laughs> as we continue to see a hurricane warning um, around Pinellas, Hillsboro, Polk, and areas to the south, okay? But the one thing that I wanna remind you, please keep charging your phones. I mean, that is something, and, and I get it. You know, walk around with your phone on your hip or whatever in your hand, and you just kind of do it, and you don't think about charging. But when you lose power, and a majority of the area will lose power, not everybody, especially Northwest, but when you lose power, you're pretty much at the mercy without having any information what's going on of Mother Nature and what's going to happen. But we're going to spend a little bit of time on tides. We're going to spend a little bit of time on surge. I'm going to spend a lot of time on winds because the winds have already gusted over 100 miles an hour from Sanibel and over to Naples, and that's down south. Now, remember, the strongest winds of this storm will be just along the northern and eastern side of the eye wall as it moves on shore. All right. Over the last hour, winds have been gusting in the upper 60s to low 70s from Bradenton over to Sarasota to Venice. And as I mentioned, a lot higher down south. And Jason will have more on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Tampa's wind gust has been 54. St. Pete has had a wind gust of 64. One thing you're going to notice that some of the highest wind gusts will be on the water because as the air comes in off the water, there is no friction there. It won't slow the wind down. Whereas as that air travels over land, there is friction and the winds begin to slack a bit. So you will notice your highest wind gusts right along the coastal areas. But here's something, and it's probably going to go against a lot of the things that you've been hearing. But I'm really confident in talking about surge here with the next upcoming tide. As a matter of fact, right now, some of the tides in our northern counties are actually four to six feet below average. Forget above average with the surge, they're below. And it's a good reason why. And we've been talking about this for 24 hours. The winds are blowing offshore. In other words, there's no way that you are going to see a rise in water or surge if the winds are blowing all that water out into the Gulf of Mexico. So as long as this storm stays south of where you are, so there's your east-west line. Let's say, well, let's just use St. Peter as an example, all right? As long as the eye or the center of Ian is below this point, your winds will be blowing offshore and you will not see a surge. But once the center passes wherever you live, and I'm only talking about folks on the coast, by the way, people who live on the water. If you don't live on the water, surge is not your concern. And that's probably 98% of us. 
But at the end of the day, it's still important because water will do most of the damage. And unfortunately, water is the most dangerous in terms of human life because you cannot outrun the water. We've said it a million and one times now, hide from the wind, run from the water. But again, my point is, as the winds go, as the center goes north, the winds will then come around from the opposite direction. We will then have an onshore flow, and that is when the water will build up. I do not believe that is going to happen, the building water in this next high tide, which is between four and six o'clock tonight, because we will still have an offshore flow. Now that is for Tampa Bay northward. It's gonna be close for Sarasota and areas to the south, because at that point, the center could begin to go north, and then you will have an onshore flow from say Sarasota, from the Bay down into Venice and into the Port Charlotte area. There will be an onshore flow there and that is where the water will build. In my opinion, the high tide tomorrow morning around 4 to 4.30 in the Bay itself, overnight tomorrow morning is when you're gonna have a much bigger issue with the surge at high tide. It's already a 2.7 feet, give or take. So it's already a higher tide than average, one of the highest tides of the month. And then you're gonna have the wraparound of the water coming around. Now you can argue, I think with a lot of validity, that by then the storm will be far away that you won't have quite the impact that you would if it was closer. That is 100% true. But this is a sizable storm and it still has a pretty decent reach. So I think you will have enough return flow that surge will be an issue. And unfortunately, that is overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. So in the Bay, my concern for surge will be tomorrow morning as opposed to later this afternoon. All right. So we got that out of the way. Now let's talk about winds, because I think every single person out there wants to know how these winds time out and when will they be the strongest. Now, this is based on the GFS model. These numbers, they're not exact, but they're going to give you at least an idea of the timing. This is this afternoon. Winds gusting maybe 50 to 60 miles an hour at Pinellas, 40 to 50 miles an hour, give or take, in Hillsborough County. And then by later on in the evening, we see those winds gust into the 60s range and into the mid-60s in Pinellas. So between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, you are going to see a pretty broad area of winds gusting from 50 to 70 miles an hour. That is almost identical to Hurricane Irma five years ago. I really think north of Manatee County, the impacts are going to be practically the same with Irma. And unfortunately, that includes Polk County. Because if you remember in Polk County with Irma five years ago, they had extreme wind warnings. They had 100 mile an hour winds around midnight to 1 a.m. So that is going to be another issue. We were hoping Polk wasn't going to have to deal with this. And I'll say this again. If you live in areas where the winds are expected to be over 70 miles an hour, you still have time to go to a shelter. You still have time to go to a safe building. Mobile homes are the absolute worst place for you to be. And I'm not talking tornadoes. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, mobile homes and tornadoes. You're right. For whatever reason, that seems to be a relationship. But this is pure and simple, straight, flat out, sustained winds of 65 to 70. And that is a forecast for Polk County that could come to fruition late tonight into the overnight. So if you're on the fence in Polk County, you might want to consider going again to a shelter just tonight. Because tomorrow this is over. This is offshore Florida by tomorrow afternoon. Earlier on, the models were showing that it was going to miss the trough and it was going to linger for a couple of days. That will not happen. This will be gone. So it's one night of inconvenience rather than face the, the possibility of some damage if you're in a mobile home. But only again if the winds are gusting, in my opinion, from 70 or higher. That's usually the threshold. So this is the overnight hours, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, still winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour. And by the way, I've been talking about this for days and we already had a report of this. We have some trees down in the Valrico area because there's been so much water over the last couple of months. And the problem is when you get as much rain as we've had, right? And then you have a steady wind of 50, 60, up to 70 miles an hour for about 24 hours, that ground will soften and those trees are going to fall. It isn't that there's just a mass amount of wind that will knock everything down. All that rain softens the ground and make it more likely that the trees can fall. To me, that is our biggest concern. Honestly, to me, right now, through the overnight, our largest concern from Pinellas, from Hillsborough North, is trees going down. 
Polk County will have heavier winds overnight. And of course, southern Manatee and areas down south, that's another story. That is the winds directly related to the eye or the outer winds of the hurricane. But remember, the hurricane force winds only extend 40 miles. That's not big. There's a meme and there's a picture going around with Charlie, the entire area of Charlie in the middle of Ian. I mean, that's kind of stretching the truth. It, it is kind of true. Charlie was a very small storm. Ian is a big storm, but the hurricane force winds really aren't all that big, and that's a good thing. They only extend out 40 miles. Now, the tropical storm force winds extend 150 miles, 200 miles out. So in other words, the entire area will have tropical storm winds until this storm exits to the east, and that'll be later on tomorrow morning into the afternoon. All right, so we go on through Thursday afternoon, 4 o'clock, still winds solid, 50 to 60 miles an hour. And then 7 o'clock tomorrow night, still 50 to mid-60 miles an hour, even as the storm has gone offshore. And in the Atlantic, we are still looking at winds of upper 40s to lower 50s. And then finally, as it pulls away even more so, the winds subside back down into the 30-ish 30-ish range and down to the 20s by later on in the day. So the heaviest of the winds will be through tomorrow afternoon and that persistent wind with all the rain and the rain totals probably are not going to be as high as some of the models were originally indicating, although right along the path or where some of the training rains pop up, there could be 15 to 20 inches. I think probably six to 10 is a pretty reasonable number for a lot of places. And again, Jason will talk more about that coming up in a couple minutes. So again, here's the wind gust. Let's go to citrus and Hernando and Pasco. So look where you live. All right, look at the time. That's two o'clock today. And then we go from here. This takes us to eight o'clock this evening. And we're now looking at winds mid 60s along the coast. The winds will be stronger along the coast than they will be inland, at least until the storm moves in again, because as I said, there's no friction to slow that wind down along the beaches. That's through eight o'clock tonight. Overnight, midnight, winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour. We're going to lose power in a lot of places, which is why having your phone charged and having our streaming app on your phone. If you're watching on TV right now and you're like, oh, man, when I lose power, I'm going to lose it. No, no, no. You download, you go to abcactionnews.com forward slash apps, A-P-P-S, abcactionnews.com forward slash apps. It'll take you to a link to download our apps onto your phone, and you will be able to watch the same coverage you're watching on TV on your phone, your fully charged phone, because we're going to continue to just beat that into your head that we are reminding you to recharge your phone. I've been there. We've all been there. I mean, you lose power on your phone on every day. You don't want to lose it now. All right, so anyway, we go on into the overnight hours tonight into tomorrow. We still see winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour. That kind of continues. Tomorrow morning, 7.30, 8 o'clock, still in the middle 50s. This is not the kind of wind that is going to give any problems for Citrus, Hernando, or most of Pasco County. Might there be a few tree downs, trees down? Sure. And that can happen in an afternoon thunderstorm. But that track is going to be far enough east that most of Pasco, Hernando, and Citrus should be okay. Eastern Pasco from Zephyr Hills to Dade City to Wesley Chapel. Maybe a little more wind there at times. Watch out for that. But otherwise, certainly not the kind of wind that will do structural damage. Maybe a pool cage or two could have some issues. Should not be a big deal. Even as the storm pulls away tomorrow night and probably begins to re-intensify in the Atlantic, there still could be a band of some heavy rain but that and heavy wind, but that should not impact areas of Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco County. But even still, overnight tomorrow night, we are still showing some winds in Citrus County in the 50s to low 60s because Ian will start to redevelop in the Atlantic and those winds will come around and increase on the backside. So finally, by Friday, it pulls away and then we're out of the woods. All right, let's talk about Polk County. These numbers are a little low, in my opinion. I don't think the GFS quite has its hand on how strong the winds will be because four o'clock, this is about right, upper 40s to low 50s. And then by mid evening, upper 50s to low 60s. The Hurricane Center has a category one hurricane just to the southwest. And granted, some of those winds will probably be in a very small area. But I think winds gusting closer to 70 seem reasonable to me. The track anywhere between Lakeland and Lake Wales, I mean, I think it could be. And there again, the, the, the GFS is taking it on more of an east track, as is the Hurricane Center. But earlier on, it was here. It really could be in any spot here with winds of about 
60 to 70 miles an hour. Again, the GFS is going on the low side. I would not be surprised if they're a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, these are still not damaging winds. They are winds that would threaten a mobile home, but they're winds that more than likely would probably give some trees down. And I know how many folks had people, families who evacuated from our area to Orlando. Raise your hand. I mean, we, a lot of us did, right? And at that time, that was the right call because we had evacuation orders, mandatory evacuation orders along the coast and in other places. And it was the closest place to be because even Polk County wasn't in a hurricane warning. It was a tropical storm warning. So it was the right call in spite of how it played out that they're going to get wind. Well, if you were around in 2004 in Hurricane Charlie, it was even worse because people went from Pinellas and the coast to Orlando and Charlie came through with winds of 130 miles an hour in Orlando. I mean, knocked out windows in hotels. It was just a nightmare and Pinellas County had next to nothing. So I would not be shocked if these many if these areas along the coast also have relatively calm conditions compared to what was forecast. And if you have family and friends in Orlando, do not freak out. I'm telling you, the winds will not be that devastating. They're going to see 60 or 70 mile an hour wind gusts. We're going to have it here, too. So I know a lot of folks have been messaging me saying, oh my, oh, what do I do? Do I bring my people back? You don't now. I mean, if you had overnight last night into early morning and I messaged a few people and said you could do it if you wanted to, and they did so. But at the end of the day, they're going to be OK. It is not going to be that bad in Orlando. So do not freak out about that if you have some of your family that went out there. But I still think the numbers will be a little bit higher than showing up in the GFS. So let's now go down to our next area from Manatee and Sarasota. Clearly, this is the spot. I mean, you look at the numbers, they're already getting wind gusts over 100 up to 110 miles an hour. It's already happening and it's about to make landfall. So through tonight, we will continue to see winds gusting from 75 to 90 miles an hour. But because it is not going to slow down, and that's great news, the faster it moves through, the faster these winds exit. And by tomorrow, even in the overnight tonight, the winds come down into the 50-ish number, and by tomorrow morning, they're down into the 40s to low 50s. So after the bulk of the rough wind today and tonight, things will clear out very quickly for Manatee and Sarasota County. But unfortunately, we are looking at extreme winds from Venice through Englewood over to Northport, Nokomis, Port Charlotte from now right on till about eight o'clock tonight. The landfall is going to occur probably in the next hour or so. And then the last area we want to talk about would be Hardy, DeSoto and Highlands right here from Arcadia over to Zolfo Springs, Wachula. There's your track winds gusting up to about 70 to 80. I think they're going to be a little higher in Hardy County. And of course, there will be tornadoes developing. We've already had two or three tornado warnings so far, and I'm sure there will be a lot more. However, those tornado warnings should be east of the line and the path of the storm. So if the path goes like this, that does not include most of Hillsborough County. That does not include all of Pinellas County, most of Pasco, Hernando and Citrus. You will not have to worry about the tornado development. That will be mostly Polk, Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands County, and of course, Sarasota and Manatee County. All right, so that was kind of an update on the winds, an update on the water. Let's go over to Jason with a live look at how the storm itself is looking right this second. Well, you had mentioned a second ago that we're starting to get reports of widespread power outages so far across the state, 316,000 without power, and we're now seeing them in Pinellas and Hillsborough County where gusts have exceeded 60 miles per hour. So currently in Pinellas County, we're running 23,000 customers on the low side that will likely increase in Hillsborough County. We're running a little bit close to that as well. It looks like 23,000 as well. Uh, Manatee and Sarasota counties, the numbers really starting to go up for here. So in Manatee County, uh, 29 9,000 customers are without power in Manatee and in Sarasota County. This is really going to start to spike because the eye wall is now moving into South Sarasota. Got 40,000 without power for you all. So like Dennis said, make sure your phone is charged as these power outages are becoming more widespread. That way you can continue to watch us here on our app, ABC Action News Plus, or on our Facebook live stream as well. We've got you covered whether you have power or not, as long as you get those phones charged. So I want to show you the radar as 
as a whole. Dennis talked about the winds. I'm going to talk about the rain and who's seeing what right now. We did have a tornado warning earlier in northwestern Okeechobee County. I was watching that storm as it rotated into the frost proof area. Thankfully, no rotation associated with it. So right now, no active tornado warnings, but that threat will be with us as the tornado watches out for the next several hours. You can see, of course, the eye beginning to move into uh, Captiva and Sanibel with a landfall. Of course, what they call it made landfall once the center of the eye goes over land and that looks to be somewhere here in and around Captiva Island. Perhaps Bo Boca Grande could potentially see that as it continues to move north as well. I want to back this up just a couple of hours because we've been seeing some significant wind reports finally beginning to show up associated with this eye wall. And the first one we're going to look at is the Naples Pier. 112 mile per hour wind gust at, with the eastern eye wall as it's now scraping I-75 from Fort Myers down to Naples. A little further north, we're looking at winds in and around Captiva and Pine Island. Sanibel, 107 mile per hour wind gusts here and I did also see the Pine Island area not in Hernando County there's a Pine Island down south just to the west of Fort Myers wind gusts there of 114 miles per hour. We've got 97 showing up in St. James City. I'm showing you these numbers because the southern eye wall is beginning to approach Sarasota County. So uh, let me back this up and we're going to go a little bit further north here and then we'll come back to the Sarasota County radar in a second. But look at this in Venice in Inglewood all along 41 all along 75. This is where we're looking at the eye wall, the northern part of the eye wall coming in to Sarasota County. I'm going to flip the rain off and look at the winds. It's going to be a kind of a mess for you, but I'm going to see what these winds are showing up here in Venice right now. We've got 65 to the north, 74 in and around Sarasota in Inglewood where it's more than 16. I was afraid it was going to show that. Let me go a little further southeast, 96 in Port Charlotte. So again, this is where the 100 plus mile per hour winds are now coming in two parts of Tampa Bay, and it's in our extreme southern spots at this point here in southern Sarasota County. So again, the eye wall, the worst of it now setting up for Inglewood, Minnesota Key. We're also looking at this from Venice to Nokomis. The northern edge of the eye wall is now moving into your area, and I don't think you're going to get the calm of the eye because the eye may pass just to the east of these areas, and if that's the case, you're, you could potentially be in the eye wall in these areas for several hours, and that means 100 plus mile per hour wind gusts over the next several hours and they won't relax until the eye starts to pull away and you get out of that eye wall. So that's what's happening right now in southern Sarasota County. Back to the north along I-4. I just got alerts on my phone in eastern Hillsborough County that power outages are already starting here as well. My Wi-Fi went out on the security system and it sent me the alert. So places like Plant City, Dover, over to Brandon, Valrico, and also into Tampa as these bands roll through. 58 mile per hour wind gusts at Tampa International Airport and we've seen 62 mile per hour wind gusts at St. Pete at Albert Whitted Airport. So as these bands roll through, that's when you're going to see the winds accelerate. They'll calm down with the lighter rain and then the heavier rain comes back from east to west. And that's when we see the surge in the winds picking up once again. Clearwater Beach haven't talked a lot about you. Thankfully, like Dennis said, we have that negative surge happening right now. Just like the scenes with Irma, Tampa Bay in downtown Tampa is six feet below what it normally is right now. Thankfully, nobody walking in it like we did see with some people doing during Hurricane Irma. But if we didn't have a hurricane out there and the water was that drawn out, you could walk 150 yards from shore out into what should be four or five feet of water in downtown Tampa. And we're not seeing that happen right now because of the negative surge that will change to a positive surge later on as we get the onshore winds back. But up until that point, our concern is just these power outages that are increasing now here in Pinellas and Hillsborough. Again, 20 to 40,000 people in both counties are now showing up with these power outages and these winds at 60 miles per hour. So we talked about the eye moving into southern Sarasota County right now. Let's go a little further north in Bradenton. The SRQ airport has reported 70 plus mile per hour wind gusts. These bands of rain where you see the yellow and red showing up, we're talking about one to two inches per hour, if not higher than that at times, especially in the eye wall. So if this eye wall continues to go a little further north, these are the areas that are going to see five to 10 inches of rain on top of what you've already seen here today. So where the yellow and red colors are, that's the highest amount of rain. And I say that because look at our easternmost zones in Sebring in Avon Park. You haven't had a lot of rain at all. We've had several rounds roll through, but we've actually run into a little bit of a dry slot in these areas. So thankfully the flood threat 
is low for you guys at this moment. That could change, but at least right now we're not issuing those flood concerns as the water levels are slowly certainly going to begin to rise as we continue to see these heavy rains and then back north into Polk County. Haven't seen too much in the way of power outages here, but 2000 were reported when I did take a peek at that here in Polk County as these tropical storm force gusts are continuing and it's these areas in red that are now crossing over 27 here between frost proof and winter haven. These are the areas that we have to watch in these easternmost zones here of West Central Florida for the potential rotation and those tornadoes again Northwest Okeechobee County. We had a warning earlier. It did not go to a warning here in eastern Polk County, but I'm going to be watching the radar extremely closely here for you guys as some of these storms in our easternmost zones have the tendency to rotate just a little bit. The nature coast again. We're not forgetting about you all. Thankfully, surge is extremely low right now with a negative surge and you're not seeing the extremely heavy rains at this point, but your rains will really pick up here over the next six to 10 hours like we're seeing down south as the center comes on shore here and continues to move off to the east northeast. So to recap, we've got 112 mile per hour winds, the highest I've seen from the National Hurricane Center so far in Naples and in Venice. We've got that 71 mile per hour 67 mile per hour report here at Sarasota Bradenton International and in St. Pete 62 58 mile per hour winds for those of you in Tampa. Now, if you're wanting to know when you're going to see the worst in your location, let's walk through it. We've got Bradenton, Sarasota, Venice right now over the next five hour period. This is when you're going to see the worst of it. Now, depending on the exact track of the eye, it really could be east or west, but the timing is not going to change. We're going to see the highest potential for the strongest storms and the strongest wind and that tornado threat increasing at the most here as we go to five and six o'clock tonight for Arcadia, Wachula, and then up 17 to Bartow. That's when they see the eye continuing to push off to the east northeast. Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater, that's when we're going to get into the hurricane force gusts. We've been in the tropical storm force gusts. The hurricane force gusts are on the way by five and six o'clock tonight. The nature coast, you're looking at five and six o'clock tonight for you to start seeing tropical storm force gusts as you have been below that threshold so far. As we go to about eight o'clock tonight, the center continues to move east northeast slowing down a couple of miles per hour. It's at nine right now. The forecast is for around seven miles per hour. That prolongs the worst, uh, worst weather for you over top of you. So Lakeland over to Winter Haven, Wachula, Sebring. This is when you're closest to the center. This is when we really start to see those hurricane force winds moving in for you all in these locations at the coast. We continue to see offshore winds, so the surge won't be really a concern until after midnight as we get that return flow back in here. Conditions begin to improve by eight, nine, ten o'clock for those of you from Bradenton down to Venice as the center pulls away. Of course, that takes the strongest winds. The surge begins to lax at that point too, and we are going to watch the rain really tapering down as well, lowering the flood risk. But by this point, we could see over 10 inches of rain in these areas. Then as we fast forward into the overnight tonight, by 11 o'clock tonight, Polk County could see the center over the entire part of the county, especially 17 East. So 11 to midnight, if you're in Lakeland, Winter Haven, places down toward Frostproof, Auburndale, you all have the worst coming to you as we go from eight to midnight tonight. It does start to get a little better for us here at the coast, but like Dennis just showed you with those wind gusts, the hurricane force winds extend out quite a bit as do the tropical storm force winds. So we're not going to see the winds going to nothing at that point, but slowly as hours go by, as the center continues to move to the east northeast, this is 2 a.m. Conditions approve from west to east, winds drop, rain coverage drops, and that surge actually begins to pick up at this point by the coast because remember we're looking at the onshore wind coming back but like Dennis said it may not be as bad as what it looked when of course we had the center a little farther to the north with the National Hurricane Center forecast track the last couple of days by 5 30 Thursday morning the coast starting to clear out we'll still see a few scattered showers around gusty winds but all of us back to tropical storm force the hurricane force gusts also out of Highlands and also DeSoto County's Polk County at that point and then it continues to go up toward the north Northeast potentially going offshore in Daytona, and then it could re uh, curve back to the west and a second landfall, possibly in places like South Carolina and Georgia. So that's a step by step, hour by hour of what you can expect when the worst is in your neighborhood. We're here all day with you, and we'll continue to update you throughout the day right here at ABC Action News. Jameis. All right, thank you, Jason. And we've been keeping track of power outages all morning long. The number is increasing and can only be expected to go up as Hurricane Ian moves through. Yeah, and we cannot stress this enough. Make 
make sure you charge your phone so you can stay up to date on all the news regarding this huge storm. Be sure to download our ABC Action News app as well. Grab your phone right now if you can. Open up your camera and then point it at your screen. This QR code you see will connect you to our apps in the App Store and on Google Play. And there you can find the live interactive radar in your own neighborhood. Plus, here's the best part. You can watch ABC Action News and ABC Action Weather 24-7, even if you lose power at your house. And also good to point out, I'm sure a lot of you have been getting uh, phone calls or text messages from friends or family in other parts of the country. They can download that app as well and watch live coverage just as you are here as if they were here in the Tampa Bay area. It's certainly good for them as well. And no matter where you are the next few days, we want to make sure you're able to get up to the minute information on Hurricane Ian, whether that's the track of Ian or emergency orders. And that's why we have partnered with these six local radio stations. They will simulcast our coverage so you can hear them uh, using a battery powered radio if the power goes out. By the way, if you have the iHeartRadio app on your phone or tablet, you can find all of these radio stations on that. So you can listen, even if you don't have an old school radio or even a weather radio, you can use the iHeart app on your phone to still listen. And as if you were watching TV, you can hear the coverage as well. There they are, our radio partners, 99.5 QYK, 98.7 The Shark, 92.5 Maxima, Q105, Wild 94.1, and Talk 10 10 a.m. By the way, I want to welcome Wendy Ryan here into our coverage. She's caffeinated. We're ready. <laughs> and by the way, we're going to be here until this storm passes. You're going to have to drag Dennis out of here. He's going to be here till the end. Yeah, we he are doesn't here for sleep. you. He yeah, doesn't he, sleep. He does not sleep. Yeah. And we're not going to be sleeping for a while either. So we're going to be here through this whole thing. We got our families to safety. We got our homes prepared. And we're going to be in here guiding you through this until Hurricane Ian says bye bye and gets out of the state of Florida. And I want to mention, you mentioned the apps and all that. And of yeah. course, our radio partners, six individual stations that will be simulcasting everything mm -hmm. we do here. If you lose power and God forbid, you also forgot to charge your phone. You can also go to your car, right? And yeah. charge your phone there. And also if you have a radio, you can tune in there. So because there's nothing worse than if you lose power and, and you're in the dark as we get into that nighttime where it can get very, very scary for anyone yeah. who is at home alone and doesn't have access to a radio. I know a lot of folks yeah. really don't have those battery radios anymore. Yeah. So go to your car, turn it on. Or like you said, make sure you have your phone charged. You can download the iHeart. App. And I swear these these storms always come in the dark, the worst of yes. them. It seems like we can never get a daytime storm here. So uh, yeah, we, we know it's going to be scary. Uh, we're certainly concerned, just as concerned as you are. So we're going to we're going to hold each other's hand here and, and get through this. All right. Our Paul Legrone is in Polk County for us right now, checking out conditions as the rain continues to fall there. Yeah, he's live there this afternoon in Lakeland. So many folks went north to Polk County, of course, because we thought initially this storm was coming into the mouth of Tampa Bay much further north than it's actually. Obviously, we're now Charlotte and Lee is um, the focus where ground zero will hit. But Paul, I know you're in Lakeland in Paul County. I have to imagine you're still feeling some of those outer bands as we speak. Yeah, we are. In fact, you guys, uh, right before you came to me, it was raining sideways. So uh, we're about to get probably another wave here. You hit us in a wave and the trees are starting to blow really hard and the rain coming down. We're at the corner of Massachusetts and Maine here in downtown Lakeland, Lake Mirror in the background. Uh, and we've got actually more guests arriving uh, at this hotel to ride out the storm. As you mentioned, a lot of folks from the West Coast, the Gulf Coast, Clearwater, St. Pete, our neck of the woods coming over to Lakeland uh, because that's what, uh, you know, they thought they were going to do. Let me let's get out in it together. I'll go on a walk uh, as people are starting to come through. How you guys doing? You good? <laughs> you make it OK? Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. OK? Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. You guys be safe. Get All right. dry. All right. Thank Take you. care. Uh, so we'll just walk here. I just want to tell you, you know, we're starting to see significant wind. I, I mean, I say significant, it's all relative, right? I measured it just before you came to me and it was uh, sustained gusts around 50 miles an hour. Uh, and, well, gusts 50 miles an hour sustained around 38, 40 miles an hour. So the trees are starting to blow. There's that parking sign there in the background that looks like it's probably going to go later tonight because uh, the wind's going to get much stronger. I'm going to cross the street again. The water kind of starting to pull up a little bit on the street, but overall the drainage has been good. I mean, we walk across here and you got Lake Mirror, which is uh, fuller than full uh, <laughs> at this point. I mean, it's not, you know, exactly storm surge on the bay, but um, 
for our location here, you can definitely see that it's it's churned up for a lake anyway. But this is the setting here, and I can tell you what sort of surprises me, to be honest with you, is how many people are still out and about driving through downtown Lakeland. My my best educated guess is one. Obviously, people are curious; they want to see, you know, what is uh, Ian bringing our way. And then uh, two, I think there are people still kind of, you know, making it to their destinations. Um, this parking garage across the way here is absolutely full. So it's uh, right now relatively quiet. Uh, I don't think people are going to be out driving the streets later tonight. I'm just going to walk back. I just wanted to give you a full scope of this location um, and now it's pretty empty. And, uh, you know, again, like five minutes ago, it was raining sideways and the wind was blowing. So we're sort of in between those waves but we still have people arriving here at this hotel uh, to basically ride out in. And they've come as far away, by the way, as Australia, uh, people on vacation, a couple I spoke with earlier, and uh, a lot of folks from St. Pete, Clearwater, uh, and the Tampa area, uh, and Indian Rocks Beach, uh, because they were worried about their property there. So as I bring you full circle, there's a car coming through. Uh, it's going to get it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's the bottom line, right? And the big thing is obviously stay safe. They're worried about flooding uh, as this storm makes its way through uh, the wind, you know, cat one, uh, 80 miles an hour or so. So we'll see what happens, but uh, we'll keep you posted on how it goes here, guys. All right, yeah, definitely going to be hanging on to your hat there later on tonight, Paul. Uh, for the last hour, Dennis and Jason have been stressing the eye of Hurricane Ian is beginning to move ashore near Port Charlotte. Yeah, and just north of that in Venice in Sarasota County, we find our ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska. Michael, what conditions are you encountering right now? I know you're about 20 miles off the coast where this storm is just about coming ashore. How is it out there? Yeah, we're actually rocked out here right now in Venice. We've been having hurricane force gusts coming in and it has just been whipping through this neighborhood. We're about two miles from the coast. We're in South Venice in a little neighborhood uh, and, and basically people here got to hunker down. We're right by our door where we're supposed to be. If anything's coming, my photographer's looking and we can get to safety, but we've got high winds, hurricane force gusts. Our power went out. Uh, we keep hearing those explosions I've been telling you about, which is the power cycling through. And we even heard some thunder and saw a couple of lightning strikes, which was a little odd too. Normally, you know, when you get these storms, you don't have the, 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 the lightning that comes with it, uh, but clearly it's a hurricane. So yeah, we've been getting some unbelievable gusts. Um, we just look over my shoulder at these trees here. These houses have been getting pounded. Uh, the tops of their roofs, it is just w wiping right over it. We got a northeast wind. So what we're gonna do is keep reporting here safely for the northeast wind, because I can actually see what's coming my way. And then when it shifts, we're gonna have to hunker down, but the Western eye wall will probably be in it for two to three hours as it whips through this area. And then we'll just be inside trying to report as much as we can, keep our backs conserved so that we can get on TV. Uh, at some point, uh, the internet's gonna go and our phones as well. Uh, so far, so good. My personal phone, I don't have any cell service, but my work phone, thank goodness, it's still good to go. But yeah, you look out there on the, those, those, that wind ripping over the tops of those roofs, and man, it, we expect something to come flying, um, and some, there's going to be some damage here. The, the wind is going to start getting extremely intense, even more intense than we're experiencing right now. This is just the beginning. I mean, this is just really the beginning, and it's been like this off and on for since about probably one o'clock this afternoon and the timing on it with dennis was about 2 2 15 that we're going to get nailed so yeah uh, i think dennis is there um dennis are you are you still thinking the timing is uh what you were telling me about an hour ago for this yeah yeah we were saying two o'clock and honestly that's about the time for the landfall mike you are right on the west side of the eye wall you're about a couple of miles away from just the entrance of the eye wall so it's going to get worse than this so I would say if it gets any worse, you're right. You're going to have to get into a spot that's quite a bit safer because you're very close to the eye itself. I mean, you're going to be within maybe two or three miles of the eye. How fast is the increase changing? It looks while we're watching it, we're seeing things get so much worse. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, I said this earlier, it's like a switch got turned on. And Dennis, you know, we had pretty good straight line winds from the northeast. Give me one sec. Yeah, they got to go. Yeah, we'll you guys got to go. We had straight line yep. wind. 
Yeah, that was that was chief photographer Eric Moore who walked in there and says we got to go. Eric has tracked these storms. I went with Eric to Hurricane Rita in Beaumont, Texas, and Eric knows how to keep people safe. So, you know, we try to share the information with you as it's going, but you do not want to be on the west side or in the eye wall of a category borderline five category five hurricane. So and you're also seeing right there and this is extremely common. There's a lot of spin. It happened in Andrew a lot. You get these little mini tornadoes in the eye wall as they come in. So the purple color right there, that would be the extreme wind warning. And you can see it anywhere with winds right there of about 100 to 115 miles an hour. And as we were watching Michael's live shot, I don't know if you could see it. It certainly felt like way to me. It just felt like it was getting stronger and stronger because that is how quickly these winds go from what was maybe 70 miles an hour to easily could be 100 to 110 because that's the difference. And we've been talking about this for days. There's an extremely small part of that eye wall where you get the bulk of the wind. I mean, it might only be five miles or seven miles. But if this thing's moving 10 miles an hour, that's a good 45 minutes that you are in that area. So again, we'll continue to track that for the entire Bay Area. We're going to be looking at landfall within the next hour. It's going to be in the exact spot pretty much just maybe 5 to 10 miles east of where Michael is, is where the center of the eye will be. But anywhere from Venice over to Port Charlotte, that appears to be where the bulk of the landfall is. And remember, just along that line and to the right of it, maybe five miles is where most of the surge will be. As Michael said, and fortunately for him, he is on the northwest side. That wind is still blowing offshore for now. So even though he's a couple of miles inland anyway, but in the Venice area for the time being, it is an offshore wind. But as this is moving off to the north northeast, we continue to see the storm moving north and shortly thereafter, the winds will come around out of the opposite direction. The winds will go onshore and that's when the surge will move in again. Let's go back to me, guys. We keep having these little power flicks here up. Oh, we are OK, so there you go. So as you can see, we go to the north. If you live in Sarasota County, now is absolutely the time to hunker down and not leave Manatee County. It's going to be a little bit longer, but from northern Charlotte, into Sarasota County, we will continue to have this serious wind situation with about 80 to 100 mile an hour winds and gusts even higher than that. Now let's go over to Adam Walzer. Adam is in Bradenton right now, where it's not nearly as active as it is down in Venice, but still I would expect the winds to start picking up shortly. Adam? That's right, Dennis. We are seeing some, some pretty heavy gusts that can almost knock you over. Uh, it, it, they kind of come every now and then. Some tree branches have been uh, blowing around. We're right here at the bay. You can see it, it. It looks like the Gulf of Mexico right now with all these waves coming in. And, and as the seawall is protecting a lot of these boats, we are seeing the levels start to rise. We're starting to see some of the, uh, the different canopies coming apart and, and these boats are rocking quite a bit. The mast uh, going up and down. Some of them have been uh, tied down with six or eight, 12 lines to try to keep them here safe in port. They've got a lot of loose uh, lines there to, it, you know, as the water comes in and as the movement comes to, to try to protect them. Right now, uh, the bridge behind me between Palmetto and um, Brayton here, we, we've seen traffic continuing to drive across that. I don't know who in their right mind would actually do that, but we have seen three or four cars in the last hour or so that we've been out here. But you can see that the things have definitely taken a turn from where they were about an hour ago when, when it wasn't blowing nearly as hard and when the, the rain wasn't coming down nearly as hard as it is now. So I think things are starting to get really bad right here in Brayton, uh, Dennis. And, and that's an interesting picture right there because we have an offshore wind in Bradenton. In other words, the wind is blowing out. But remember, the wind can curve in little places. It can go down nooks. It can go into crannies. And sometimes that can actually create the wind in a little small scale that can still cause water buildup. But overall, Bradenton and Sarasota, the wind is blowing out to the west. We are getting wind reports. Captiva last report was 126 mile an hour wind gust with Punta Gorda. 105 mile an hour wind gust. 
So in Venice, the last wind gust we had was 80 miles an hour. That was the official report. But again, that's where the official station is. That doesn't mean where Michael is. It is that high or it could even be higher. You can see 101 mile an hour gust as well along the eye wall. I believe Michael is in a place of safety right now. There's, there you go. That looks uh, far more tranquil and more safe, Michael. So what just happened? <laughs> Yeah, Dennis, you were asking me about the wind shift and if it turned on like a switch. And as soon as I was going to, you know, have a little back and forth talking, the wind shifted and there's a big oak tree over the top of the roof of the house. So we, we were being sort of protected from the trees. But Eric Moore, my photographer you mentioned, saw the tree limb starting to snap on the other side of the house. And we've already seen a couple of blow, blow over this way. So clearly, you know, you get hit with a tiny limb in the head, it's going to kill you. So we ran in, uh, got out of the way. We're under an awning now. The wind is blowing over us. It literally just turned and started blowing all the debris right towards us as we were on TV talking to you. So I'll have my photographer read. We're in a, the carport now, so we're good. But I'll have my photographer pan over that tree. That just snapped in half over there where you see all of that water. I mean, we're just starting to just get nailed back to back to back. They're not coming in waves anymore. We have sustained winds. I know you mentioned, you know, the gust of 80 miles per hour. And when I think about, Dennis, that uh, just a gust of 80, you've been in these storms. Man, 100, 110, 120, it just seems unreal. It just absolutely seems unreal. It's like a it's like a movie set out here where someone is just hanging up in the rafters, just dumping sheets of rain and with fans on. It just doesn't stop. So yeah, Michael. Yeah, so that's where we were. And I think I can hear you, Dennis. Yeah, yep. there we go. Yeah, it looks as though there's some tree limbs that were snapped right there. Taking a zoom in of that. Yeah, I think you're looking at winds probably 70 to 80 miles an hour. Again, Michael, you were on the northwest side of the eye wall, very, very close to the eye itself. It's going to be maybe a mile either way, whether you actually get into the eye. And if you do, you're going to have two hours of calmer weather. But unfortunately, if you stay in the west eye wall, you're going to be in there for a long time. So again, we're going to continue to check back with Mike. I do want to mention quickly, though, we do want to take a look at our viewing area. Obviously, the, the fiercest of the storm is down south. But we are still looking at bands of rain and gusty winds across our area of wet as well. And all of this again is moving to the southwest. You see the tornado warnings in the outer bands as expected. We will literally have dozens of them. But remember the track expected to be about like this. Pretty much all I won't say all of them, but most of them. Most of those tornadoes will be on the east side. I mean, there's the line right there. That is the expected track of Ian. So we would anticipate the majority, the overwhelming majority of tornadoes that form will be on the east side of this line. On the west side, that is not where you typically see tornadoes. So that means most of the Bay Area, and of course that's not the case near the eye because there's just a ton of spin near the eye and anywhere along that eye wall itself, you can expect to see tornadoes develop. But for Pinellas, for Hillsboro, for Pasco, for Citrus, for Sumter, for Hernando, and most of Manatee as well, we're not expecting a lot of tornado warnings, if any at all. The winds in these areas to the west should pretty much be between 50 and 65 miles an hour, gusting right on through the afternoon, right on through the overnight, and into the first half of tomorrow. So we're going to have about an 18 hour stretch of tropical storm force winds. That's areas to the west of that line. To the east of the line, clearly it's going to be stronger. From Hardy, to so Hardy and DeSoto County through Polk County. And unfortunately, the track is going to take this pretty close to Lake Wales. It will be a weaker system by then, hopefully. But at the end of the day, we're still talking winds of 70 to 85 miles an hour. And I will say this again, a couple of reminders. One, if you live in Polk County and you're expecting hurricane force winds, and we're going to be on problem is if I tell you, you know what, if you live wherever it is in Polk, expect 80 mile an hour winds in 15 minutes, it's too late for you to go to a shelter. And I'm talking about people in mobile homes. That's what I'm referring to. Anyone who lives in a mobile home, if you're in Polk County, I just strongly suggest you find a way to a shelter or at least someone you know that has a freestanding house, uh, uh, something with a little more power to it that can withstand winds of 80 to 85 miles an hour because a mobile home is not one of those places flat out. It just isn't. So that being said, a lot of power outages. Jason was talking about that earlier on with those power outages. You're going to lose the ability to watch. We are simulcasting right now 
on a lot of local radio stations. So you can check out our simulcast stream on various local radio stations. We'll have that graphic up for you coming up in a couple of minutes. I know Wendy and Jameson just said it. But remember, keep charging your phone. Keep charging your phone because if you lose power, it is literally your only source of having information of seeing where this storm is going. If you have any extreme weather coming your way and those extreme wind warnings usually mean winds of about 100 miles an hour. Right now, that is in the purple area down to our south. But it is certainly possible, if not likely, that that track will bring some of those extreme winds across our southern and central counties over the next 12 hours. Wendy, Jameson. And Dennis, I just want to point out something here because when Dennis talks about the possibility of tornadoes, it's not to scare you, it's to prepare you mm -hmm. and to make sure you have a plan in place if you have to go, if you haven't evacuated, you have to go to an in interior part of your home. Yeah, and, and Jameson, you know, I was talking about this earlier. I mean, let, think about this. Most of our tornadoes, the winds are maybe 75 to 80 miles an hour. Well, the winds with these storms, I'm looking at Jason over here showing some winds. They're 120 to 130 miles an hour. So to be honest, the hurricane winds are actually stronger than a tornadic wind. But yeah, absolutely. Of course, we're going to tell people there will be dozens of tornado warnings. That's what happens in a hurricane. But our goal is to tell you and give you a better idea where and it will be along or east of the track of Ian. All right. All right. Thank you, Dennis. Heavier rains are moving further north across Florida and there's now reaching into uh, central Hillsborough County. And our Robert Boyd joins us now live right now in Tampa. Robert, what are you seeing as we speak? Well, Wendy and Jameson, right now I'm obviously standing inside, but right outside these glass doors well, you can see the trees blowing. You can hear the wind howling. It is getting a lot more severe out there. Let's take a walk outside. Now, I'm not necessarily fighting this wind, but in the last few hours, it has gotten a lot stronger. Nothing compared to what Michael and Adam are seeing down south, but it's gotten stronger. I can tell you the rain has stayed about the same, though. It's coming down. It's pretty steady, but it's by no means a downpour. The rain's gotten a little bit rougher, but it's the wind that I've noticed. I've been up in this same location for about four hours now. The wind's got a lot more gusty. You take a look, you can see the trees blowing. You can see the stop signs, street signs blowing around a little bit more. And I got to tell you this, though, what worries me is I feel I've seen more cars venturing out on the road, more residents maybe, maybe feeling that, that it's not going to be affecting them, that they can go out and drive, uh, like you see this car going down the road right now. Still, as all our meteorologists have said, as Dennis has said repeatedly, we are by no means out of the woods. Stay home. Don't go on the roadways because even though we might not see that surge right away, still flooding can happen. This is Tampa. Flooding can happen uh, with a regular rain. So please be careful. Stay off the roads. And again, wind picking up right now. Uh, definitely not, like I said, as bad as the south, but definitely picking up more and more. And for those Bucks fans out there, I got to mention, we're right across the street from Raymond James Stadium. And I've actually seen workers over there. Now, I'm not sure what they're doing, but I've seen people doing some stuff over there. The Bucks are, of course, supposed to play this Sunday. We've seen some people over there doing some things, maybe some last minute preparations uh, for later this afternoon. But the trees, you take a look behind me, they are blowing strong. Uh, the wind is picking up. And again, I'll be continuing to be out here throughout the afternoon and keep you up to date on what's happening right here in Tampa. Back to you. Wendy and Jameson. All right, Robert, thank you. Yeah, the Bucks are supposed to play on Sunday. Yeah. But, I mean, they're practicing all week in, in Miami, Miami. Yeah. but we'll see if that uh, if that's actually if they actually yeah. play here. We'll see. I mean, you know, you never know. Right yeah. now, hopefully in Hillsborough County, things are going to be OK. But we turn now to Polk County and the Polk County Emergency Management is making a final plea to residents in flood prone areas to evacuate right now. ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit joins us live right now in Lakeland. Rebecca. The rain has not let up here in Lakeland and it's accompanied by gusts of wind. You can see the stop sign behind me being shaken by the wind, the trees being shaken and emergency management is warning residents living in low lying areas to seek higher ground because it will only get worse. Rain has been nonstop in Lakeland since Tuesday night. Some neighbor, some neighborhoods are already seeing flooding with the ground being saturated. Emergency management officials tell me there is a potential for flash flooding when Hurricane Ian makes landfall. The National Weather Service is forecasting 12 to 18 inches of rain. Some isolated areas will get more than 24 inches of rain in the next 36 hours. 
Do not wait until Ian gets here. Emergency management says teams will not be able to rescue you during the storm. There are 20 shelters open throughout Polk County that have not reached capacity. So conditions will worsen throughout the afternoon into this evening. Polk, in Polk County, there is also a tornado watch that you have to remember. And so as conditions continue to change, I will keep you updated here in Polk County. Live in Lakeland, Rebecca Petit, ABC Action News. All right, Rebecca, thank you. And we want to go back to Pinellas County now. We have several crews out there. Yeah, our Heather Lee is live in Oldsmar. Heather, the last time I saw you, you were handling some pretty strong outer bands there. How's the wind now? Yeah, so they continue to come by. We uh, have moved from Ozona, like you said, to Oldsmar, which is a little bit of ways from where we just were. We're now back at the bay. We wanted to get a second check on the bay after leaving Safety Harbor a few hours ago. Uh, the rain has picked up, the wind has picked up, uh, but it is again just these bands that are coming through. Sometimes it becomes calm again and then you see it pick up once again. I find this very interesting, but you can see that there is a metal trash bin all the way out there in the bay. Not sure how that got there or if it was already there before, but now you can see it along with some crab traps and some other things. That is because again, we're seeing, uh, we're continuing to see that water being pushed out and uh, it's really anyone's uh, you know, guess on when that water is gonna come back. Although Dennis does believe that it'll likely come back uh, maybe overnight tonight, um, that not, not, not before ha uh, we see the, um, uh, the tide rise again, uh, but after maybe this, or over the next time we see the, the high tide, that, that is maybe when we are gonna see that water come back. Again, anyone's guess, but it has been uh, a very interesting day out here. We've basically just been going throughout Pinellas County, checking out the conditions in different areas. Uh, we're gonna be staying kind of in the Tarpon area, um, more so Palm Harbor, but it's near Tarpon Lake, and that's something that we haven't been able to check on yet, so we're thinking that that may be where we head next. Uh, for now, we're live in Oldsmar. Heather Lee, ABC Action News. All right, Heather, thank you. And we know the Orlando area now will also be feeling the effects of Ian at some point. Yeah, and that's where we find our Kitty Legrone, where many families evacuated to when the track was heading further north until it changed over the last 24 hours. How's it looking in downtown Orlando, Katie? Yeah, you know, Wendy, we've actually been out here for about the last 40, 45 minutes or so. And really up until about three minutes ago, I was going to tell you how sort of nice and dry it was at the moment. But of course, you can see that that has since changed. We're here in downtown Orlando, where if you take a look, you can see there are some people still out and about. Um, local, the local officials here, local news, have all been encouraging people throughout the day that we've been listening in to basically be where you're supposed to be by two o'clock this afternoon. So clearly we're at that point and still there are people out and about. The roads are still, uh, you know, pretty heavy with traffic around here because of course we are a few hours after what we get in Tampa. What is what uh, Orlando will be getting, you know, we're looking at really late tonight, overnight hours as being sort of the thick of the storm starting to make its way over central Florida. And that's really still, of course, the track. I was listening to Dennis earlier and I heard him say, you know, the wind's not going to be that bad here in Orlando. And, and that's what the folks here, um, you know, believe as well. Um, I, I will say here at, at, at Lake Eola, you know, one of the things that stands out is some of the concern is look at these beautiful live oak trees. I mean, tree, there are so many trees around here in downtown Orlando. And I was talking to a friend of mine who lives nearby and she said, listen, Katie, there's a big issue with this tree. Some of these trees are over 100 years old and there's been a lot of rain in this area for some time now, you know, just over the course of the last couple of months. And so the, the, the ground's still very saturated. So the big concern here in Orlando is what kind of flooding from what could be potentially historic rainfall will head this way. I mean, we're talking about possibly two feet of rainfall when all is said and done. And so there is some real big concern that some of these beautiful trees that line so many of the streets in downtown Orlando could call, could basically come down. We know that the local, the, the mayor here has actually opened up the public uh, garages so people can park their cars in anticipation that there could possibly be some um, tree damage. But you know, that seems to be the big issue 
as uh, Ian starts to, you know, make its way farther, farther north. And again, the big time here in Orlando is that the overnight hours. I was talking to some people as they were making their way, sort of just making the last couple walks with the dog or are getting their exercise in around Lake Eola. And a lot of them are actually comparing Ian to sort of Charlie's track how actually it's coming into the, uh, it's expected to come into the city, to come into central Florida at the same angle. And so I've heard Charlie a lot as people around this area are sort of preparing uh, for, for Ian, uh, you know, to, to make its way. But I think overall the sentiment here is we're gonna be careful. We're not, we're taking this seriously. We're gonna get indoors, but we know that what we're dealing with here in Orlando is nothing near what of course we're gonna be dealing with even in Tampa and of course our friends in Southwest Florida. So there really is a lot of concern, even up here in Orlando, for, for our friends uh, on the, in the southwest side of the, uh, the state. So for now, that's the very latest from Orlando. We'll be here throughout the storm, and uh, we'll bring you the latest updates back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much, Katie. Again, we are pretty much about to have landfall here. There, the landfall occurs not when the leading edge of the eye or the eye wall hits land. It's when the center of the eye crosses land, and that's right very, very soon around Port Charlotte. So if you take a closer look here, right there, right there is where you're gonna have your greatest surge. And boy, that is Fort Myers. And we have been getting so many reports of water, the Fort Myers beach, six foot underwater right now. So you do not see the beach. It is literally underneath water all the way up. And there is a live picture right now. And you can see the winds, although gusting, you know, certainly gusting, but probably not as heavy as they are in other spots. This is Collier County right now, where I would say that's probably winds closer to about maybe 60 or 65 miles an hour. You're not going to get a lot of pictures around the eye or the eye wall because the cameras will not work. I mean, that's just the way the winds are now with 155 mile an hour winds. I mean, you're one mile an hour shy of category five winds. So. That's what's going on now. I want to go back and talk a little bit about how this is going to impact in terms of the track and tides for the rest of the area, because Heather touched on this a couple of minutes ago. I really do not believe surge is an issue for the Bay Area this afternoon with that high tide, because the wind direction is still blowing offshore. All right. And with that being said, it's very difficult to have a surge if the winds are blowing in the opposite direction, right? So there is the center. We're going to get landfall very, very soon. And Mike Paluska right there on the west side of the eye wall. And as we were saying, I mean, this is moving in this general direction. So in a few spots there from Venice and just to the west of Port Charlotte, they won't make it into the eye. They'll stay in the western eye wall the entire time, which means they're going to have winds of about 100 to 110 miles an hour for about two and a half hours while the leading edge continues to move north toward Arcadia, toward Waimama, and eventually eastern Sarasota County and in through Polk County over the next six hours. Hurricane warnings obviously remain in effect. Let's not forget folks in Pasco, folks in Citrus, folks in Hernando and Sumter, tropical storm warnings, winds of about 50 to 60 miles an hour for the next 18 hours, once the winds really start to kick in as the storm moves off to the north. Pinellas County, winds of about 55 to 70 miles an hour for about a 12 to 18 hour stretch. We're already getting power outages, still concerned about trees falling because the ground is going to be saturated and it's much, much easier for trees to go down if the ground is so wet and soft as opposed to most of the time when it isn't. Manatee County, winds easily up to 90 and in maybe even 100 miles an hour in southern Manatee County, Sarasota gusts of about 100 to 110 miles an hour. Same thing for Hardy County, but this is expected to become category one, weaken rather significantly. But I do have to say something, and Katie just mentioned this. Hurricane Charlie, same thing, similar track. Well, I don't know if you remember this. Hurricane Charlie did not weaken much at all as it moved across the state. And by the time it made Orlando, it still had winds of 130 miles an hour. So I bring that up because even though the Hurricane Center is forecasting very quick decrease in intensity as it moves across the state, that falls under the category, I will believe it when I see it. The models have done a pretty pathetic job outside of the Euro. The Euro nailed this storm, 
but most of the other models kept this out in the Gulf and just really did not ha do a very good job at all. So, and what can happen? And I just throw this out here. One of the reasons we believe that Charlie did not weaken is because the ground back in 04 was so saturated that we believe that it did not necessarily dry it out like it often can. I mean, that's one of the theories. We have had a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks. Now, granted, it also went to a foot, little bit farther south track. But at the end of the day, we hope for the development. We hope that the system will weaken and the Hurricane Center says it will do just that. This is the latest update, all right? Expected to be a Category 3 hurricane by 8 o'clock tonight as it moves into Hardy County. And then by tomorrow morning, we expect it to be a tropical storm with winds of 70 miles an hour as it approaches Orlando. So that's a pretty significant drop, literally from 155 to 70. But that's what it's supposed to do when it goes over land. Let's keep our fingers crossed that that's exactly what is going to happen. Tides. Want to talk about this because there's been so much talk justifiably about storm surge because a couple of days ago, this track, albeit it was going to be weaker, this track was coming directly into our area with kind of a worst case scenario for surge. We have an offshore flow. In other words, the winds are blowing away and it will be that way until the center of this storm passes our east to west latitude. And talking about Tampa, that's going to be tonight, well past the next high tide. All right. So at this point in time, this next high tide is probably not an issue for us tomorrow morning's high tide about 430. That's the one that I think we are going to see more water coming in. And of course, it would have to happen at night. Seems like that's always the way it plays out. So I'm warning folks, if you're watching, yes, there's going to be some flooding. There is with all the rain, but the surge, the problem with surge is not only does that onshore flow push water into the bay, it also keeps water from coming out. So when you get all this rain falling, heavy rain, it has no place to go. So then that backs up and causes you to have inland flooding. So my concern from mid overnight hours, 3 a.m. ish until maybe 8 or 9 o'clock ish tomorrow morning before we get closer to low tide. But we're still going to have that onshore flow developing for probably about 12 hours. So again, tonight's high tide, 530. I'm not as concerned about the one tomorrow overnight. But remember, by then, that storm is almost to Orlando. So it's not going to be as strong. It will have a reach. But I don't believe surge is going to be quite as pronounced as the forecast is right now. Maybe there will be a few spots that are going to see that. But I think overall, it might be closer to kind of an ADA. Not in the same spot, by the way. And we certainly would never minimize ADA because that came out of nowhere and was bringing water in some spots that had never seen it before. So we'll continue to track. I'll be honest. Tracking surge is one of the most difficult things to do because every little wind shift and every little turn here and there can make a little inlet or a little small area flood and just a half a mile around not because the wind's out of another direction. We'll keep our eyes on that. And of course, we'll be going back to a lot of our reporters out in the field as things really start to come to a head over the next six to 12 hours. Now we're going to go over to Jason in the Weather Center for, again, another closer look at the radar. Jason? Yeah, so the storm continuing to move to the north. What this is doing is bringing those tropical storm force winds now north of the I-4 corridor and the hurricane force winds now across most of Sarasota County. Those gusts have easily been over 70 miles per hour from Sarasota all the way south, of course, to Venice and Nokomis. And, of course, these locations from Venice south are now in the eye wall. So we know we're going to get those 100 mile per hour gusts over the next couple of hours as this eye wall continues to move through. Also watching our easternmost zones. We've got another tornado warning. It looks well just to the west, southwest of Melbourne. That is a possibility for our inland spots east of the center. So we're not expecting to see much in the way of a widespread tornado risk here along the coast as the center continues to move to the east northeast, mainly talking, of course, Manatee County north up through uh, the nature coast. So zooming in on a couple locations, we'll start here, of course, where the eye is now expected to make landfall at any point. Of course, landfall is when the center of the eye is over top of land. This will likely be Captiva Island. We're looking at 126 mile per hour wind gusts. That's the last report we got from Captiva. And by that point, 
the anemometer may have been blown away. So we don't know if those winds are going to be up to that 155 mile per hour mark that the National Hurricane Center is saying we're seeing the sustained winds at currently. They just flew the hurricane hunters in it. They're still looking at winds around that and the pressure is around 934 to 935 millibars. So no weakening is happening, but we're not seeing this continue to intensify rapidly like it did this morning. However, when you're borderline cat four, cat five, you've got a 16 foot surge possible. And of course, there's 150 mile per hour winds. The damage is going to be all the same. Also looking at this slowly inching to the north again. It looks like from Boca Grande, Little Gasparilla Island. I have some friends that have a house down there. I hope, it, it, hope it'll be okay with this. But as we see it now, the strongest part of the eye wall, which again, the northern eye wall, is going to be in Venice within minutes. We've already got the extremely heavy rain. We had Michael Paluska out there reporting as he was on air. We saw those gusts really picking up within seconds. And we're going to zoom in a little bit closer here for those of you in Inglewood, Minnesota Key, Northport. These are the locations right now beneath this red color on the map that are not only seeing blinding rains, but this is where we're looking at those winds exceeding 100 miles per hour. We had a 109 mile per hour gust in Charlotte in County, Charlotte County over toward Cape Coral. This is what's wrapping around the eye and heading west toward Inglewood and then up to Venice. Nokomis as well. We're looking at this very heavy rain over top of you all as well. Casey Key up through Siesta Key and Sarasota. As each of these bands come through, when you see the yellow and red colors shifting from southwest to northeast, this is not the eye wall itself, but you are in the hurricane force winds now. As we know, they extend 40 miles outside of the eye. And with the eye approaching the Northport area over to Inglewood, we know that we're within that 40 miles now here in Sarasota County. So sustained hurricane force winds are likely. We could see gusts even here approaching 85 to 90 miles per hour. And we are seeing those power outage numbers just accelerate now. Over half a million people without power, it looks like, here in the state of Florida. Most of them, of course, where the eye is coming through right now. But we're seeing those numbers tick up as well north of the eye. A little bit further north, we're talking about Manatee County. We're looking at the flood potential really picking up over the next few hours here as rain totals have exceeded five to six inches of rain. We're going to add another five to six inches of rain on top of these numbers as the eye is so slow moving. Charlie was moving so fast when it crossed the state, and that's why within about two hours it was already up in Orlando. This one's moving not even half of the speed of what Charlie was. So this is going to be a prolonged period of these winds sustained at hurricane force gusts, and we are sustained at hurricane force with gusts over that, and we're going to continue to see this rain just piling up here. And like Dennis said, as the surge is trying to come in later today, all these tributaries, creeks, rivers, they're adding all the rain into them and trying to get them out into the off to lower the flood potential inland, but as the surge is coming inland, it all butts together and we see flooding where the river is trying to dump out into the bay or into the Gulf. So that's what's setting up for us here over the next few hours. In Tampa, we've had gusts to 60 miles per hour. Hillsborough County reporting power outages that are becoming a little more widespread now. About 10% of the county reporting some power outages. And also in Pinellas County, same deal here. We're getting widespread reports of those uh, 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts, especially in downtown St. Pete at Albert Wooded Airport. We've had gusts exceeding 64 miles per hour and in our summer thunderstorms that do enough damage alone, those gusts are 60 to 70 miles per hour. So take those winds we typically see in our normal summer rains and that's what we're looking at now consistently happening for the next 10 hours or so here and that's why those power outage numbers are going to continue to climb. Going a little further to the east across the uh, Salmon or the Howard Franklin I should say and getting over the Gandy. This is where of course Tampa is and we're looking at those 58 59 mile per hour gusts that have been frequent here and notice while we've got a little bit of lull, of lull in the rain now the heaviest is to our south in Manatee County that's where the hurricane force winds are starting and that continues to nudge north as well. Well, tornado potential in Polk County. I don't see it moving much farther west, though, than Polk County. Wachula to Arcadia, the hurricane force winds closing in on you all as well, because again, 40 miles outside of the eye shows that the winds are starting to pick up significantly now in southern Manatee, eastern Sarasota, western Hardy, and western DeSoto counties as well. So 17 west is the worst right now, east over to 27 in Highlands County. Not much rain, but we're seeing those gusts picking up here as the center comes inland in about six hours or so. Your weather is really going to start to go downhill there. This is where we're watching for rotation. You see these red colors showing up. This is where we're getting a little bit of spin. Thankfully, nothing as far as tornado development at this time, but in Polk County, watching the radar very closely for you all. Gusts here picking up to that 40 to 50 mile per hour mark as well. Same deal. Each one of these red bands that goes past your house is going to have the potential to produce those tropical storm force gusts. The Nature Coast, a lot of talk, not about you all. That's a good thing in this instance because the worst is certainly to your south, and we do not have that surge potential at 
at this point because of the offshore winds and the negative surge that Dennis was talking about with surge levels actually four feet below what they are normally. We're expecting four to six feet above that once we get the center to move to the east and some of that onshore wind make a return. But at least right now, just some light rain for you all. Not looking at any kind of a tropical storm for sustained wind, but we could see some of those gusts over 40 miles per hour for you all. This will pick up for you as well tonight as the center gets a little bit closer to you. It'll be well to your east, closer to Orlando as we go to midnight tonight but you could start to see some of those tropical storm force gusts here ahead. So timing it out for you hour by hour between three and five o'clock. The center, the worst of the weather, it is going to continue to move through Sarasota, Hardy, DeSoto counties, southern Manatee County. And that's also when we could see those hurricane force gusts making it into Tampa, St. Petersburg as well. Also over toward Brandon, Lakeland, still looking at tropical storm force gusts by that point. But as we go from 530 to eight, the center closing in in Polk County, and we will still likely see this at a category two hurricane hurricane by eight o'clock, which of course means gusts over hurricane force. This is where we also could see significant wind moving into the Wachula and Arcadia areas. Unfortunately, the same spots that got hit really hard by not only Charlie, but also of course by Irma five years ago as it came up here and then made that left turn. It just really along the 17 corridor, we were without power for two and a half to three weeks. We could see something similar to that again with this extreme wind setting up at the center, moving inland here over the next three to five hour period by 11 o'clock tonight conditions improve at the coast. We'll still see those tropical storm force gusts, but the hurricane force gusts are now inland and the storm continues to weaken, but it still could be a category one hurricane as it moves through Polk County, getting into Okeechobee, Osceola counties and Orange County as it slides to the north and east. Finally, by two to six a.m. tomorrow, the center moves far enough away that we're going to look at some gusty breezes behind this. That's when the onshore wind starts and it may coincide with a little bit of high tide action as well. So that's what we're going to be looking at for our surge potential to really pick up here from Tampa Bay North. But like Dennis said, based on the angle that the storm is moving, we may luck out and keep that surge with the onshore wind overnight into tomorrow morning on the lower side instead of the higher side of what the range the National Hurricane Center has given. And then by 10 o'clock, we're pretty much done with this tomorrow morning. Conditions significantly improving by that point, but with 10 inches of rain on the ground, we could start to see some localized flooding with rivers on the rise as we go into the next couple of days. This will be something, guys, we're going to watch pretty closely as we head into the weekend. Jameson, Wendy. All right, Jason, thank you. We want to take a look at some video right now. This is from Fort Myers. Look at that. The incredibly high winds and flooding there. And by the way, this is actually where our sister station is in Fort Myers, and they had to evacuate from their building because the conditions were deteriorating so quickly and you can see why they're now actually broadcasting from a university nearby because it just wasn't safe to stay and it is not good. Dennis, that's that really looks bad. Yeah, Wendy, and, and I just got a report and you're talking about Fort Myers. So we're hearing that a home that was 11 feet above sea level has three feet of water in it. Wow. So that means there's at least a 14 foot surge coming into the Fort Myers area, and it does appear that that is certainly where the worst of this surge is going to end up being in the Fort Myers area. And yeah. that's what you've been concerned about this whole time with whatever this storm surge is going to be. Yeah, this is going to be the problem. So uh, it's north and east of where the where the eye crosses. I mean, that's what it is. Wherever the eye crosses north and east of that is where the bulk of that surge is, and that's exactly what's happened. And Dennis, we have to reiterate a lot of those folks in Fort Myers were not prepared, right? Because they had 24 hours notice that they were going to get hit. Yeah. I mean, this, this so storm right. was going well north of them. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, and it's so reminiscent of Charlie. We've been saying this over and over again. But yeah, when you have a storm that is expected to go north, I mean, 24 hours earlier, the track was right over northern Pinellas County. And I, now, granted, I would have to say that folks in the Punta Gorda area and the Fort Myers area would probably have gone through this before with Charlie because the exact same thing happened with even less time for them to get through it. So, you know, you can't look back and say, why didn't you do this? But certainly this has happened in the past. You would think anybody who's lived here since Charlie would know you simply cannot know for sure with a hurricane coming in from the Gulf to Florida from the south, especially. It just seems to happen more often than not. So, I mean, this is again a look at it. There is the eye. It is really making landfall as we speak. And by definition, and I, again, I know a lot of folks right now are listening on the radio. If you've lost power, if you're listening on the radio, you can download our app. You can go on your phone and keep charging your phone. Although now if you've lost power, maybe you have one of those little backups. But if you go to abcactionnews.com forward slash apps, A-P-P-S, abcactionnews.com 
forward slash APPS and you can download on your phone the app which allows you to see everything. And our weather team will do our best to use descriptive words to describe where everything is. But obviously for you at home, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to see where these storms are and where the heaviest weather is. And right now it is clearly moving in to areas around Venice, over to Port Charlotte, and the motion is still to the north northeast, which is eventually going to take it into the rest of Sarasota County. You can see the spin right there. See those little spins. You're always going to get little spinners, a couple of them right there in the northern Iowa, which is very, very common, which means probably additional tornadoes and tornado warnings are going to be issued. But again, I just wanted to let you know that sea level is 11 feet in this one home. There's three feet of water in the home. The folks actually had to go across the street to an even higher home. So it looks like we've had at least a 14 foot surge in the Fort Myers area, which is ex textbook. There's the center just to the north and east of the center is where the worst of this surge will be. That's where the push is. And I'll say it again for folks watching in our area. If you are north of the center, your winds are blowing offshore. They're blowing in the other direction. You are not going to surge until the center of the storm passes your east west line wherever you live. And if you're on the water and you're worried about a surge, obviously what happens is as this moves north and it doesn't just immediately flip a switch and all of a sudden the winds go offshore, right? This is a slow process which eventually turns the winds around and brings the water back in. Now we've got some video from Sanibel Island where they have been already had winds reported of 120 miles an hour and it's clearly there's folks there in a hotel trying to secure the doors and keeping either the wind or the water from coming in. And as Wendy said, I just think a lot of folks in this area probably were not as prepared for this as they could be because just 24 hours earlier, it wasn't going to be anywhere near Fort Myers. And honestly, you could make the same argument for Polk County because folks in Polk County were not expecting this storm. This hotel here is taking on water. So that's clearly why they're trying to do their best to seal the doors the best they can. But when you have a what is at least a 14 foot surge, and that's obviously a hotel right there on the water, they just weren't expecting it or they weren't equipped. I mean, it could be one or the other. I mean, they maybe they were expecting it, but there are some places that aren't. Ex I mean, we have not had a 14 foot surge on the west coast of Florida. Guys, can you ever I'm talking to the rest of the weather team. Do you ever remember a 14 foot surge on any storm outside of the panhandle? Michael, yes, but I can't think ever. Not, not on this side. No, no, not on this side. So it might not be that they weren't ready. It might just be that they were ill prepared to handle a 14 foot surge. So that's what's going on right now in Fort Myers. And we're going to continue to see reports like that because as this eye comes ashore and it's moving north northeast, that surge is going to continue right in the same area and probably right into Port Charlotte as well. So we continue to get more video coming in from also again the Fort Myers area and the Sanibel Island. Let's see this one is from Fort Myers, I believe. So let's check out that video. I mean, and this is what's going to go on for the next 12 hours. We are going to continue to see more video of storms, more areas of flooding, especially right along the area right there. Again, that's my point just to the north and east of the center. And it isn't just water. I mean, we're talking about wind in excess of 120 miles an hour in a very small area. This still has winds of 155. So this was a worst case scenario in the sense that this was not a typical storm that was going to weaken as it gets closer. And very often in our area, that's exactly what happens, at least in history. That's the way it's been happening. But this got stronger all the way up until you see it. So this is from Fort Myers or Sanibel. This is from Sanibel Island. And obviously, so this is on the other side of that hotel. The folks were trying to keep the water out. And this is why. Now, I've actually seen a picture of this and about three or four hours before there was no water. That was a pool. The water had not come up. So this is a clear indicator of what surge can do. And that's not even talking about the winds. What, Greg, that, that's got to be, that's got to be, wow, look at the way that's pushing. That, that's got to be 100, 105, 110 miles an hour easily, don't you think? And, and you know, Dennis, I, th I think this is important to look at this because I think a lot of people, when they hear the word storm surge, 
they really cannot imagine this happening. I mean, you know, you spend so much time at the beach, the water always sits in one place. And to imagine the ocean, like you're seeing here, it literally turns into a river. There is a motion to that water. It's not a wave. It's just a constant movement of that water into the beach. Uh, I just saw a video on Instagram. There was a remote camera on Fort Myers Beach. It was placed at the six foot level and the water topped it. So I suspect the water topped all of Fort Myers Beach. It's probably underwater other than the buildings. Uh, I cannot even find anything out of Cape Coral. And I'm really concerned about that area specifically, Dennis, just because you think about all the canals that lead the Gulf into all those neighborhoods. Cape Coral, I believe the population is way up there towards 200,000 people. A lot of them have canals in their backyard and that canal takes you back to the Gulf. So the Gulf is in your backyard when you've got a canal back there. And you're talking about a 12, 14, 15, 16 foot rise in that Gulf. That's going to cause some serious surge. And, and Greg, it isn't just the rise in water. And a lot of people don't realize that, that you have a rise of 12, 14, 16 feet, as you say, then you have waves on top of yeah. that water rise. Mm -hmm. So imagine you go out in the Gulf and it's a choppy day. In fact, when there's hurricane warnings, a lot of times we'll get reports of 15 to 20 foot waves out in the Gulf. Well, when it gets closer to the coast, those waves won't be quite as high, but the end result is you've got a 10, 15 foot rise in water and then 15 feet of waves on top of that water at times. So all of a sudden you're looking at relatively speaking, a water rise that at least some areas could see 25 or 30 feet. So that is why we are going to continue to see damage. And unfortunately, any homes on the water in this area, most of them are stilted. You know that most of them will be stilted to take into account the possibility of a water rise. But when you're building homes on the west coast of Florida, I'm not so sure a lot of people take into account a 15 or a 20 foot surge or at the very least water coming that high, which is exactly why, as I mentioned, uh, I had a message from a viewer saying 11 foot a home 11 feet up still had three feet of water in it. So, I mean, Greg, that that's something that we have to expect we're going to be seeing for a while. And you and I have been talking. I mean, that western eye wall still looks pretty fierce, and that's going right over where Mike Paluska has been. There's still lightning in it, which, which tells me there's still convective action. The storm is still growing. There is still energy feeding into that eye wall. And, you know, you think, Dennis, that water one goes up 15 feet. You get a 10-foot wave on top of that. It's the wave on top of the surge that then does the damage to the building or whatever it is. Yes, the stilts may keep the water, the, the water below the home. But when you start crashing waves into it, then you really start causing some issues. We saw that at Mexico Beach with Michael. I mean, you're really talking about this storm being up there now on that list of Katrina, of Andrew, of, of Michael in its intensity and the surge that it produces. You do not often get surges like this with hurricanes. This is in a category of its own uh, as it is so large. It's the size of this one that really makes it different coming in here into Southwest Florida and that Northern eye wall is now still moving into southern Sarasota County. So that's kind of the deal here. You know, the, the landfall, like Dennis was saying, that's going to be down towards Port Charlotte. It's probably going to be out of Sarasota County. But the stronger part of the eye wall is in Sarasota County because the eye is so large. Uh, so you got to figure, Dennis, Englewood up towards Venice right now, where Michael Paluska is, uh, this is as, worse, as, as bad as it's going to get in the storm. Yeah, and, and now remember, in those areas, at least for the time being, that wind is offshore. Mm -hmm but there's still a lot of spin. And Greg and I were talking about that earlier. That was a real common occurrence in Hurricane Andrew. I mean, we had a lot of reports of these small, uh, they're, they're very, very small spins. They're not traditional tornadoes as a lot of folks know it, but they still can do damage. But again, I make the argument, yeah, there's a little tornado there, maybe winds of 75, 85 miles an hour, but oh, by the way, the winds are 150 miles an hour around it. So. I want to break this back down to our local viewing area because I don't want to get too caught up in what's necessarily happening in Fort Myers when we have people in Sarasota and Manatee and Pinellas and Hillsborough County concerned about it. So again, and I'm going to toss to Greg in a second, but in my take here with this offshore flow, tides are not going to be the biggest issue right now. Now, Mary is in Sarasota right now, and I would expect that the waves may be not the biggest issue, but the wind is certainly howling right now. So, Mary, are you out there? 
Yeah, we are. We're outside of one of the 12 county run shelters. This is Fruitville Elementary School. And let me tell you, in the past hour, the wind has gotten just crazy here. I'll step out of the way so you can kind of get a look at the trees here. The wind, the rain is just blowing and it's been relentless basically for the past hour. So you know we're really feeling the impacts of those storms. We've got about 330 people who are sheltering here, about 60 pets. Everybody's just hunkering down. And this is one of the 12 emergency county run shelters here. Now, Sarasota County officials at about 1:20 this afternoon reminded people that weather conditions have changed rapidly and emergency vehicles are no longer responding to calls in Sarasota County as it's just not safe on the road. So right now they're just wanting people to shelter in place. Actually, in the last couple minutes, we saw a couple more people coming to the shelter here to seek shelter from this storm. Obviously, the message is people stay inside and stay safe. We had a chat with some of the folks who've been here. We've been here since 10 a.m. ourselves and we chatted with some of the people here and they they're looking at this storm and they're saying, well, we're just going to try to stay as safe as possible. But we'll be here in Sarasota and bring you the latest as it happens right now. We'll send it back to you. All okay. right, Mary, thank you. All right, we got uh, Adam Walzer. Yeah, he's been uh, staying in uh, Bradenton for probably the last 24 hours or yeah, so. Yeah, and the winds, the last time we checked in with you, Adam, were really gusting up. So what's it like now? I have to imagine it's pretty intense. Well, you, you can see it's uh, it's definitely, uh, we're getting these gusts that, that feel like hurricane force winds. I don't know if we're quite there yet or not, but, but we do get some of these very big uh, gust of wind from time to time and, and this rain is just a constant it's been coming down uh, just all day long literally and, and we're seeing some of these blasts of wind that are really hard uh, somebody's actually staying on that boat over there I guess to try to make sure that it's safe as, as they ride out the storm of course we don't have to worry about the storm surge as, as Dennis had said earlier but I guess they're trying to protect uh, the boat from getting beat up by all the winds coming in we just saw some dolphins coming in here into the harbor. I guess they wanted to get out of the bay as well and get away from, from all the all the wind and all these waves and what's going on right now. But it definitely has picked up here. We do feel like the hurricane's getting a lot closer to us and, and the conditions have changed. Nobody needs to be out and about in this part of Manatee County right now. The power's gone on and off a few times. Uh, right now, it looks like it, it's it's back on in a few places, but we've seen the, the lights flickering on and off. So that's certainly going to be a concern as we continue to see this high level of rain, I think about six inches so far, and the, these high gusts of wind, which are just uh, cranking up throughout the day. You can see right now we're, we're getting quite a gust and you can hear it howling. You can see some of the waves busting over the seawall here. It's all stirred around right here. So we're, we're getting gusts like this every few minutes and it's certainly picking up the speed of the wind and uh, the frequency of, of these blasts as, as we're seeing this storm move here to the north. Back to you guys. All right, Adam, thank you. And you heard Adam say that the power there was flickering a little bit. Just looking at the FPL uh, power outage map, Sarasota County right now, 78,000 customers without power. And in Manatee County, somewhere in the ballpark of 36,000. Those numbers are probably going to be increasing here as the as the day goes on. Yeah, I saw Duke Energy and also Tico uh, Tampa Electric mm -hmm. also had just thousands in the dark. And, and that's, you know, they're going to try. But yeah. if it's not safe to fix any power lines, they're not right. going to go out. So you just have to be patient yeah. until the power. And a lot of times on. it's just preemptive. I mean, they're just trying to make sure that they're protecting their power systems when the storm finally passes and they, they hit that switch back on again, make sure they don't have any issues there. So we want to go out now to uh, Tarpon Springs. Yeah, and that's where we find uh, our reporter, J.J. Burton. J.J., how are conditions in Tarpon? Are you seeing uh, wind, rain, or a little bit of both? A little bit about the wind actually starting to pick up, not like down in the uh, Sarasota area, but definitely starting to pick up and uh, the rain is on and off. We're right, we're sitting in the uh, Lanai right now, but right across the street over there is the Whitcomb Bayou and we are here with Mr. John Keenan, who knows all about the flooding here. You've been here since 60, uh, 2016, 2016 and you are the one who also took the picture that we use a lot that shows the flooding right outside right. Of, of your house. Yeah. So you know about the flooding, the issue that, that's always a constant, but yeah. with this storm. Com combination of the of the tides, the storm surge, plus the rain that comes in, 
Uh, you know, now the tide has sucked out. Dennis, I'm sure you can explain that to the folks. I can't. But uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll be back, as we know. And like you said, and, too, like, how low this is, this is not a normal low right here. Oh, no, it's a few feet below normal low. And, when you're, and you're, nerves, you're nervous about when it comes in and how high it can come up. This is it, your, right it, here. Can, it can come over the back, uh, over the seawall. It has come as high to about halfway into the pool. And that's the highest it's been since I lived here. So had we had a more direct hit than what it appears we're getting, you know, that would certainly be a concern or even, you know, up into the house. And, and you've also, you're prepared though. You, how, how, tell us exactly what you did in front of your house to make sure the water, if the water does come up. Into your house. Effectively built a berm. It's like a, a giant sandbag <laughs> under a single, under a single wrapper. Um, but that keeps the big threat with water is when I get the water build up in the street and trucks roll by, they will create wakes and push that water up closer to the house or into the garage. And so I block that water. So it's a good thing we're not going to get it as bad as originally thought. But again, make sure that you are prepared, though. Make sure your houses are, your windows are boarded up and that you have some sort of protection with the sand and all of that, or sand down on the, uh, the floor, up at the doors and stuff like that as well. And we're going to go back to Dennis with more. Thanks, JJ. Yeah, and he's right. As we have an offshore flow and the water is being pushed out of the canals back into the bay, that will alleviate the flooding. And at some point overnight and into tomorrow morning, the winds will come around first out of the north and then out of the northwest and then eventually out of the west. And that is going to bring some of the water back in to those areas. We are right at landfall. I mean, landfall is going to be either in Sanibel or Captiva. I mean, right there, because when the center of the eye makes it along the coast right about there. So we're going to get an announcement within any second from the Hurricane Center that Hurricane Ian will have made landfall as as strong of a category four as you will ever get. If it was 156, it would be cat five. So for all practical purposes, I mean, this is a cat five hurricane north northeast direction 937 millibars. So it is maintaining its strength. And if you look right here, there's some still some extreme weather on the northeast side and a lot of surge. But I'll tell you, Greg and I were talking about this. This west side of this eye wall is showing lightning. It is not showing of weakening whatsoever. And our hope is as the Hurricane Center track continues to bring this north northeast, it will weaken dramatically. But we have had storms go across the state at times. Some of them weaken quickly, others not so much. And that is obviously a huge issue for folks, whether you're in Polk County or in Orlando, because a lot of folks have relatives and family and friends who have gone from our area to Orlando to get out of the water issues. Because we remember, it seems like a lifetime ago, we had evacuations for Pinellas County for A, B and C because the track was right up along the coast and folks got out. Well, that is not the way it's going to play out. There will be some surge issues overnight, but it is clear as long as this center is south of you, you're going to have winds blowing in the opposite direction, which is why the bay has cleared out and dried out. Eventually, those winds will turn around, but not until tomorrow well, overnight and not until that storm is far enough away that I think it's going to limit the amount of water that comes back in. Hurricane warnings remain in effect. Here are some of those wind gusts. Venice last check 82, Sarasota 69, 72 in Bradenton. A lot of power outages and there's obviously going to be a lot more on the way, especially along the track of where this hurricane continues to move inland. Let's take a closer look with Greg over in the Weather Center. Greg? Yeah, tracking this rain. We'll also go back in the local area and look at some of the rainfall totals. You know, I think when you look at where the heaviest rainfall could be, and our computer models have been pointing to a very thin strip northwest of the center, I think they were trying to figure out where this western okay. eye wall goes, because this is where this heavy rain will likely set up. So anyone that's underneath this, because it's moving so slow, and the rain falling here at three or more inches per hour, this is where you could get some of those isolated higher rainfall amounts. 10, 12 inches, maybe more in a few spots. And if you just extrapolate that track towards Polk County, that's going to be Manatee, Sarasota, maybe southeastern Hillsborough into western 
Polk County. Here's the view up towards our local area as we take a look at the radar. Uh, Brooksville, Wesley Chapel over towards Crystal River. You're getting some periods of some light to moderate rain. Watching some of these heavier showers here in Polk and uh, over towards Hillsborough County, where you see some of these oranges on the map now. This is riding right down I-4 from Lakeland, heading through Plant City, Snef Sefner, Valrico, coming up the I-4 275 interchange, and that's going to go through Orient Park right down MLK into Tampa. These little orange spots indicate heavier amounts of rain. Wherever you get that heavier rain, you're also going to bring down stronger wind gusts. So in between the rain, like we're looking right now in the Keystone area, maybe West Chase Town and Country, Carrollwood, it's not raining all that bad. The wind's probably not all that bad either. And suddenly one of these little showers is going to come in overhead and that's where you get that wind gust to 30, 40, 45 miles an hour. The rain goes by and the wind subside. And that's kind of how this is going to play out for many of you, if not most of you, during the overnight, unless you're in that eye wall as uh, Ian weakens and heads up towards the north and northeast. Pinellas County, heaviest rain now in the southern part of the county. Manatee County, it is coming down. This is where we are getting some tropical storm force wind gusts for sure. Riverview down towards Bartow and Davenport. Wesley Chapel, some heavier downpours here headed your way. These are going to come through 98, cross 301 at Zephyr Hills, and then head right into Wesley Chapel, and then right down Pasco County towards the coast, up towards Newport Ritchie. So you saw the wind gusts there. It's really I-4 South that we're really starting to see a lot of the stronger winds. North of there, they're weaker, but even Tampa at TPA, 52 in the last hour into tropical storm strength. These are sustained winds, not the gusts, and you see they do vary. Locations near the water are going to see stronger winds, and then if you get caught under some of that heavier rain, uh, citrus over towards Hernando and Pasco County. It hasn't been that bad. It's been a breezy, maybe a windy afternoon, you could even say at times, uh, but the winds here, you're going to be the last to see them, and the strongest winds are going to be south and east. So it's going to be eastern uh, Pasco County that's going to see the strongest winds. Some of the weakest winds, because you'll be farther away from the center of Ian, will be up towards Crystal River, Inverness, Dunellen, as you head up 19. Over towards uh, Polk, Hardy, DeSoto, and Highlands counties, winds here are picking up some gusts here over 40 miles an hour into the 50s as you head down towards the Kinsey area, over towards Arcadia, Wachula at 46. Uh, so these are now stronger tropical storm force winds. And of course, the core of the winds, uh, these are going to be model estimated, but you got to figure with Englewood in the eye wall, the winds probably at times gusting into the triple digits. And that's something that we've consistently seen now uh, from Naples through Fort Myers, all the way up through Port Charlotte, consistent reports in that eye wall of wind gusts between 100 and 120 miles per hour. Tampa, here's what the winds are going to look like as we go into the evening with the center of the storm passing to the south and east. I suspect that most folks around Metro Tampa will see frequent gusts of 55 to 65 miles an hour. Now, east of 75 in eastern and southern Hillsborough County, if you do get into portions of that western eye wall, you could see a wind gust in excess of 65, maybe even approaching hurricane strength. And a lot of that is going to happen during the overnight. So it's going to get loud at times. That's when you're probably most likely to lose power. Hillsborough, Pinellas and Polk County. It's not now as the storm is building. It's going to be several hours from now, especially after sunset, as that strongest core of winds heads in our direction. So Dennis has been showing you the uh, GFS in terms of wind gusts. Here's the European, and I think it kind of follows along. The European may be a little farther north and west with the stronger winds, but it does show the center the lull in the winds there in the southern portions of our area over towards DeSoto County. These would be gusts, by the way, not sustained winds. Probably a little high, but, you know, as Dennis was mentioning with Irma, we did see gusts to 100 miles an hour in Polk County. So it may be possible if it holds together, if it doesn't weaken it fast enough. And this is why we're going to stay with you through the overnight tracking this thing just to watch the reports and see how it's weakening once it gets off the Gulf of Mexico. Tomorrow morning, still looking at gusts into that 50 or 60 mile an hour range across the region. But those triple digit dust, gusts, those likely are going to be behind us. And that's because as Ian heads inland, that core of wind that is tightly wound around the eye begins to expand. The area that sees strong winds gets larger, but the winds overall themselves get weaker. You get a lot of gusts into that strong tropical storm strength. That's going to be the case through tomorrow afternoon, likely. And then finally, as Ian heads off the East Coast and away from here, big improvements 
Thursday night into Friday. And I think that's really Friday is when a lot of the power crews and everyone around will get out there and really start to clean up after the storm. All right, so what about rainfall? Uh, this is going to be an isolated case of some heavier rainfall with most getting in that four to eight inch range and in some isolated areas north and west of the center picking up more flood watches for all our counties uh, just in case you see the models here updating kind of keeping up with the track of the storm uh, but this looks like it's pretty much on target most places in that western eye wall eight to 12 inches and then you're probably going to get some outliers a couple of spots picking up that jackpot of uh, 14 15 16 inches of rain and that's where some of the flooding could be now with places already saturated, as Chad's been telling you all morning in Polk County, you, you don't need 18 inches of rain to cause flooding. 6, 8, 10 is going to be enough to cause some major flooding in that area, and that's why we're watching this very carefully. This is the forecast from the Hurricane Center, and they're kind of right on target with our model. The darker orange here, that's about 10 to 15 inches. You get up towards the Orlando area, maybe up towards uh, just north of Cape Canaveral. Some places could pick up even more as Ian lingers. When does the rain stop? When does this move out? Uh, today and tonight, it's going to rain. Uh, rain is very likely. By tomorrow, during the day, it becomes more scattered. And then once we get into the weekend and early next week, it is looking a whole lot better. Waves of heavy rain moving in as the center of Ian continues to the south and east. I wanted to get to some of the Somebody rainfall accumulations the locally here. Mic hot on Nature air, Coast out happening. there as we look at eastern Pasco over towards Fernando County. That's where some of the heavier rainfall could be. Lighter rains as you get out towards the coast. In Pinellas in Hillsborough County, the heaviest rain by far, the I-75 corridor in east. So Plant City, Valrico, Fishhawk picking up a whole lot more than, let's say, Pinellas County. And by the way, this coincides with where the strongest winds are. So if you pick up some of the heaviest rainfall amounts, you're likely going to be in that western eye wall, and you'll probably see some of the heaviest winds. Down towards Polk County, there's going to be a very tight cutoff here across the county where places like Frostproof and maybe south of Lake Wales pick up much less rain. Polk City, Auburndale, Lakeland, these are some of the new numbers coming in from our computer model. Maybe as much as 10 to 13 inches of rain. That would definitely cause some serious flooding. Down towards Manatee and Sarasota County, the storm moving away. So additional rainfall. This is on top of what's already fallen another four to six inches. You've already seen at least this much in this area. So the totals right there with what we expect at about a foot or more. And that's the same deal in Hardy, DeSoto and Highlands counties. It's already been raining here through much of the morning. So this is additional rain on top of that. You add another three to seven inches and you end up with those eight to 12 inch totals. That's going to be the big story after the storm makes landfall. Once the wind dies down, we're going to shift to a freshwater flooding situation. And that's something we'll be tracking through the overnight and right into the day tomorrow. Wendy and Jameson. Greg, thank you. I just want to uh, mention a couple things that I just got in. Naples is now under an emergency curfew effective immediately. They just announced that. Also, the Manatee County EOC held a hurricane update just um, a little while ago. They're, uh, the administrator, they're urging folks to continue to shelter in place. Do not try to evacuate at this point, and it's simply too dangerous for them to send out their first responders. But they will try in the morning once the wind subsides. But again, if you live in Manatee County, just shelter in place for now. And hopefully in the morning, they will be able to get to you if you need assistance. Yeah, speaking of Naples, we saw a video from down there just a short time ago. They, it, they're just getting devastated right now. So uh, certainly the uh, wind and the rain uh, taking, uh, taking its toll on, on Naples as well. And we know that this is definitely going to be what we're seeing right along that area now as it's making landfall. So we've uh, been keeping track of the power outages all day as well. The number is increasing and can only be expected to increase as Hurricane Ian moves through. Yeah, and we can't stress this enough. Make sure that you charge your phone. I know it sounds so simple, but if you do, you can stay on top of all the news regarding the storm, especially as it continues to update. You see there, that's our QR code. Be sure to download our ABC Action News app. You just have to grab your phone, open your camera, and point it at your screen right there. That QR code will connect you to our apps in the App Store and on Google Play. And there you can also find, again, the live interactive radar in your individual neighborhood. Plus, here's the best part. You can watch ABC Action News and ABC Action News weather 24-7 
even if you lose power at your house. Just make sure you have that QR code. A live look now as the International Space Station flies over Hurricane Ian right now. As you can see, that's uh, an ominous look yeah. for sure because you can see the circle of the hurricane right there. Yeah, the eye, and then just that's quite the picture right there. Just uh, summing up just how big Ian is as, as we're taking a look for again from the International Space Station. Just an unbelievable picture there. and just shows you when you see our radar maps here through Throughout the day, this storm is engulfing pretty much our entire state. And right. It's just the, the good news, though, yeah. is that it was supposed to uh, linger and not move so yeah. qui so quickly. And so the good news is this huge storm is going to move much quicker. I think I believe Dennis said by Thursday night where before it was yeah. Friday afternoon before it was out. But now it's going to be Thursday, which is much better news for so many folks along the Bay Area as well. Yeah, it sounds like this is going to be uh, Georgia or South Carolina storm. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's supposed to hook back into Savannah and, and right. the northern you know Carolinas, yeah. which is crazy The how, how many people this storm is going to impact. I want to go back out to Adam Walls or he was uh, north of Sarasota County. I think he's in that uh, Pier 22 area of uh, Bradenton. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I know, Adam, the last time we checked with you, Gus, were really picking up. You were mentioning the power was going in and out. How is it now? Well, I'm, I'm looking over at some of the hotels and condos across the way and looks like no power. I'm not seeing any more lights, but take a look at this. Look at this wind. It is really barreling down on this right now. So when they said uh, the Manatee County EMS that they didn't want to send out any first responders, well, you can see exactly why right now, because imagine trying to go over that bridge between Palmetto and Brayton right now, completely empty, but we were seeing vehicles going across that a couple of hours ago. Now completely impassable. You'd be taking your life in your own hands if you even tried. These gusts are huge, I'm telling you. I've been through a few hurricanes before, and this is just like... Uh, some of the worst uh, winds that I've seen in, in quite a number of years. And, and we're a long way from the eye of the storm, but, but we're still seeing a huge effect right here. These boats are getting beat up quite a bit. Uh, right now they're rocking and rolling, even though there is a, the storm surge issue that they were concerned about earlier. A lot of these canopies are getting torn up. Right now our photojournalist, uh, Brandy Wright, is, is underneath the canopy here at, at Pier 22. We're on a side of the building that's able to cover him and protect him a little bit. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to set up a camera here because uh, these winds are just, just really, really starting to pick up here. And of course, we are seeing just a huge amount of rain. It's been going like this for hours and hours. So that ground is gonna be saturated. We could expect some of these trees to fall over here in Manatee County and widespread power outages, I think, before this storm is over because it is continuing to just barrel down on us. And right now, it's about the worst that we've seen so far, guys. All right, Adam. But yeah, it's, it's a little tough to hear you because yeah. that wind is so strong. Please stay safe out there. We want to head now to Sarasota, and that's also been seeing some strong wind gusts this afternoon, really, for quite a while now. Yeah, ABC Action News reporter Mary O'Connell is there for us live with the latest conditions there. Mary? Hey, yeah, it's absolutely windy right now. Actually, there are some folks outside because people are taking a little bit of a break from the shelter when they can. The staff here are allowing folks to come outside. But I will say everybody's phones just had an emergency alert go off. Um, and so maybe Dennis or our Mets back in the station can weigh in on this. But we just got an alert from the National Weather Service that an extreme wind warning is in effect for this area for the immediate danger of life-threatening winds until 6 p.m. So that's something that I'm sure you guys will be able to check in on. But we're at the Fruitville elementary station uh, the shelter right now it's one of the 12 county run shelters here in Sarasota County and I'll step out of the way so you can see a little bit about what we're looking at you can see it's certainly windy uh, the, the wind the rain it's picked up we've got debris all over the ground there are about 300 oh you can probably hear that very very windy you can see those branches moving in that wind too it's it's been uh, relentless to say the least over the last maybe hour and a half two hours um, there are about 330 people staying in the shelter over the last 30 minutes we've even had more people filtering in to get away from the storm emergency management um, here in sarasota county have let people know that because the weather conditions have changed so rapidly that emergency vehicles are no longer responding to calls here in the county so they really want people to shelter in place because the conditions are just dangerous right now. But we're going to continue to monitor it and talk to people here while we're hunkering down at the shelter with everybody else. But we'll send it back to you.
All right, Mary, thank you. We want to go back to Pinellas County now. We have several crews out there. Yeah, our Heather Lee joining us live in Oldsmar with deteriorating conditions as we speak. Heather? Hey, uh, Wendy, we actually moved up a little bit north. We're actually at Tarpon Lake now, right next to the Tarpon Turtle, which is a very popular restaurant over here. I'll step aside so you can kind of see what we're looking at here. We are seeing some uh, pretty intense wind gusts out here as well as some rain. The rain comes and goes. It can be heavy at times and then it can lighten up. Uh, but if you're looking here at the Tarpon or at the uh, Tarpon Lake, you can see that there are boats out here. They've got those uh, uh, tied up pretty, pretty well with some lines. Uh, this can they actually have a canal and a water control structure out here and that helps regulate flooding around the lake and also lower sections of Brooker Creek which is a preserve nearby and the structure also prevents salt water from the bay entering the lake because you know the lake is fresh water so that hopefully is going to help keep this lake from flooding if let's say in you know the overnight hours we do end up seeing that high tide come in uh, hopefully it will not be able to breach and come into the lake lake. Uh, that is obviously the, the goal of that canal system. Now we do have some folks over here who just wanted to say hello. Oh, maybe they're not going to wave. They don't know that we're on live television. Hey guys. <laughs> they're obviously doing the right thing, staying inside their home. They got to take their dogs out because that's understandable. All the dogs have to go to the bathroom. Honestly, right now the conditions are looking pretty good, but we will continue to follow this. In fact, we're our coverage is about to end. We've been up since four in the morning, so we'll be back out here again at four in the morning uh, covering parts of Pinellas County. And of course, at that point, we may even be looking at some damage in our area. Of course, we'll just play it by ear as the storm moves through our area. For now, we're live at Lake Tarpon. Heather Lee, ABC Action News. All right, Heather, go ahead and get some rest. We're going to have you back out there tomorrow morning, but though we still have crews scattered throughout the Bay Area right now as we're going to continue to track Hurricane Ian until this is out of our area. Now we want to give you an update on power outages across the viewing area. So far, over 272,000 Florida customers are without power all across the state. 36,000 of those in Manatee County are reported to be without power. This is a huge increase compared to our last update that we gave. Florida Power and Light last updated that number at uh, 2 p.m. We'll give you updates as these numbers change. Wendy and I here at the desk on our computers monitoring those as well. So every once in a while, even though we might not have a graphic up there, we're going to let you know if you're getting some power outages. Right. Meantime, Florida Power and Light FPL reporting 78,800 people, as you see there, without power in Sarasota. The last update for this was at 2 p.m., but this is a significant increase in outages compared to just earlier today. And, of course, we will update that number as it changes, and we know it will. And an update now on Highlands Power. Power and the situation there, the number of people without power right now sitting at zero. This is a big fall in numbers compared to earlier. Duke Energy provided that update for us around 2 p.m. We will keep you posted on any changes there. And Duke Energy reporting 72,000 people without power in Pinellas County. That's a big jump again in number compared to what we told you earlier. This update came in at 3 o'clock, so it's pretty accurate. We will let you know, of course, as we get more updated numbers. And a lot of those numbers, by the way, in St. Petersburg from the, nap, or the, uh, the map that I was taking a look at there. So St. Pete right now uh, seeing the worst of it. So. All right. We want to go to Greg D for the latest on Hurricane Ian and the impact it's having on the Bay Area. Uh, we have landfall guys so the official landfall 305 category 4 at Cayo Costa uh, was at 305 and the data from the Air Force Reserve aircraft in Ian right now is that the winds were near 150 miles per hour as it was making landfall with a pressure of 940 millibars. The landfall is estimated based on radar data, the winds gathered by the Hurricane Hunter aircraft. So 305 Cayoco said that was the landfall location in Southwest Florida. Now this purple box is of more immediate concern for us. That is an extreme wind warning and it basically extends through all of Sarasota County, down through Charlotte and Lee counties as well. So Fort Myers back up towards Sarasota County and now the western half of DeSoto County as well. And that gives you a heads up DeSoto County between now and six o'clock. So this is for the next three hours. You're gonna have some extreme wind working its way across the region. Uh, that means wind gusts potentially over 100 miles per hour, heavy rain, lightning, power losses likely here around as well as Ian continues to make its way 
inland over the next several hours. There you see the eye there. So Cayo Costa, that was the official landfall based on radar uh, right there near Port Charlotte and Punta Gorda. Basically, it's Port Charlotte is what it is as that landfall. The strongest part of the eye wall, however, right now is in Sarasota County. So we're watching you, Sarasota County, very closely. I'm getting a lot of reports of power outages, uh, trees down, tree branches down in this area. And that would be expected as Venice and Angle will just getting hammered right now. The darker reds here indicate getting extremely heavy rain at the moment, and it's in that heavy rain that you are seeing some of the heaviest wind gusts. That's coming up on Northport, coming up on 75. I know FDOT has some FDOT cameras here after this weather up there. I'm going to go in there and see if I can find you some views, if we can get some live views of this area or control room. If you can maybe look down here, this is going to be southern portions of Sarasota County, uh, 75 in the Northport area. There are several cameras here. We can watch this, and a lot of them are highly placed as this eye wall rolls in if they're still working. I I've tried accessing some cameras down in Englewood. Just about everything is without power, so I cannot connect to it or the well, the internet is actually down. Sarasota, moderate rainfall downtown, but just south of you is where some of the heaviest rain is, and this is going to spin up in your area. So you may not be seeing that strongest wind just yet, Sarasota, but it's headed your way. This is all going to build northward over the next hour. Here's the radar from uh, the National Weather Service there in Ruskin. You can actually see in greater detail some of these darker reds. The eastern eye wall really hasn't been all that impressive in terms of rainfall. Now, it has been productive in terms of winds. This is where the Naples area had wind gusts up above 110 miles an hour. The western eye wall, we'll see what happens with this as it's work its ways on works its way on shore. Not only has it been producing those triple digit wind gusts, but the rain back here has just been tremendous. This is where the rain is falling at two to four inches per hour as it moves in. And because you're going to be stuck for two to three hours in that western eye wall, if the whole thing tracks over you, well, that's how you quickly get to six to eight inches of rain just by spending three hours in that eye wall. Uh, Tampa, we're not going to get in it, okay? If you're Tampa, St. Pete, Lakeland, Wesley Chapel, you are not going to get into that western eye wall. The storm is likely going to track to the east of 75, maybe just south of I-4. But if you're in Polk over towards Hardy and Highlands counties, you're looking down the line here downstream and you're seeing or upstream and you're seeing that this thing uh, is going to be heading in your direction as it tracks toward the north and east. So the heaviest rain now extending mainly down towards Fort Myers and Sarasota areas of lighter rain once you get up towards I-4 with some heavier pockets from time to time as the storm continues to spin up. To take a look at Hillsborough over towards Pasco and Hernando County. Closer look at Davenport. Orange is here. And some lightning and thunder now around Lakeland, Polk City, Kathleen. This is all heading toward the east. Heavier rain right now to the east or to the west of 275. That's going to be Dale Mabry right here over the station. Midtown Carrollwood coming up on uh, over towards West Chase and Town and Country Keystone and eventually Oldsmar, Eastlake, Tarpon Springs back over towards Palm Harbor. And when this little shower arrives, not only are you going to get the heavy rain, you're going to get some pretty intense winds with it as well as the storm continues to move toward the north and east. Going to have to check out these wind gusts, see if that's verified. Getting a 97 right there out of Bradenton. That seems a little high that far north from the storm, but it's possible. Hey, Greg, it, mm -hmm. it could be because could be. there's an extreme wind warning now for Sarasota. So yeah, that just, just developed from Sarasota down south. Yeah. You're right. So, so this report would have been from the Sarasota Bradenton Airport, which is right there on the county line uh, between Bradenton and Sarasota. So that could be a 97 mile per hour recorded gust at the airport there south of downtown Bradenton. These are the kind of winds that are going to cause widespread power outages. This is when the power really starts to go out. And Dennis, we're going to be dealing with this uh, for the overnight. I think for some folks, especially when you look down the, the line for this storm, the worst of it is really still to come during the overnight hours. Yeah, and we have a flash flood warning. It was just issued for Sarasota as well. And that's different from what we often hear in the summertime as an aerial flood advisory. A flash flood warning is when there is definite rising water in certain areas. So again, Kaya Costa is the actual spot of landfall, as you saw right there. So it's just to the south, just to the southwest of Punta Gorda. So, I mean, this literally was Charlie 2.0 within a few miles the exact same track and the exact same landfall as Charlie as a stronger storm. Now, here's some good news. Winds are down to 150 now. They were at 155. So we are hoping that this will drop rather quickly. I mean, the Hurricane Center drops it down to Category 1 hurricane. 
by later on this evening. So let us hope that that trend will continue. But their purple, that purple area there, I mean, that is all extreme wind warnings. And the only time I remember that being the case with Irma, and I think that's a good ref. There's two good reference points for our area with these storms. And if you've lived here long enough, Charlie is the first one. Again, this track is almost identical. It's Charlie 2.0. It's a stronger storm in terms of wind field, but Charlie in terms of well, in terms of wind as well. I mean, 155 miles an hour, but it's larger than what Charlie was. So this purple area usually is winds of around 100 miles an hour. The last time I have seen this in our area, it was Irma five years ago. It was in Polk County. It was around midnight to 1 a.m. And areas of Polk County had winds of about 100 to 105 miles an hour. So obviously there's your eye. It is that northeast quadrant where the heaviest wind and the strongest surge is. And I have no doubt over the next few hours, we're going to continue to get video, continue to see pictures of how high the water has risen at or just to the right of landfall on the left side. And this includes our entire viewing area from Sarasota northward in terms of broadcast TV. Now, I know a lot of you are watching us on streaming, including areas down south. So those folks, unfortunately, they are picking up these winds of well over 100 miles an hour gusts and sustained in some spots. But in Sarasota, you're looking at this band right here and there is the extreme wind warning and boy, that remains in effect until six o'clock. So from Charlotte through Lee, Manatee, Sarasota, that is where these winds are by far the strongest. And that's going to stick around for several hours because this storm is not going to weaken that much in the next couple of hours. Now we do have some pictures at a Punta Gorda where again, you are literally a matter of four or five miles away from where landfall occurred. So as we continue to see the purple area right there, that is where the strongest winds remain. Hurricane warnings in red, tropical storm warnings in blue, the track taking it through sections of DeSoto, Hardy, Polk County as a much weaker storm. Granted, we're talking winds maybe 75 to 80, maybe a little higher in Polk County, but the hope is it will continue to weaken as there is the track. In fact, by tomorrow morning, tropical storm force winds around Orlando below hurricane force. And I have many times seen the track of a hurricane drop from a cat four down to tropical storm status in the matter of 12 hours. So it is certainly possible. We have clearly reached the peak at 155. Now that it has made landfall, this will continue to drop. And our hope is it's much sooner than later. Current wind gusts, Mayaka City 92, Arcadia 92. So it isn't just about the coast for the surge. It is, but those extreme winds, and that's very obvious why they issued the extreme wind warning for DeSoto County, because you're already picking up 92 mile an hour winds in Arcadia. And as Greg mentioned, a gust of 97 miles an hour in Bradenton, the track is just like this, right? West of that track, we don't expect tornadoes. East of the track, much more of the heavy wind and the possibility of tornadoes. Futurecast explains why we are not concerned, at least through this next high tide cycle. All right, there's been a ton of talk about storm surge, and a lot of that was based on the earlier track. But once this storm went down south, into the Fort Myers area that completely changed and minimized the threat of storm surge in our area. All right. With a north northeast wind, it is still pushing water out into the Gulf, which is great for two reasons. One, obviously, you're not going to see a storm surge if the wind is blowing the water in the opposite direction. But at the same time, it also allows the water to drain that falls. You're less likely to see flooding because it will have an opportunity to drain and go out in the Gulf. But when the winds veer out of the opposite direction, that's when the storm surge becomes more of an issue. So this is eight o'clock tonight. It gets us through the next high tide between about four o'clock and six o'clock overnight. Look what happens as the storm begins to push inland. The winds begin to go out of a more northerly direction. That could easily cause water to pull up on the eastern side of the old Hillsborough Bay. 
So I think the next high tide cycle, which is between four and five o'clock overnight, that is when we are going to see higher surge levels. We are not going to have the high surge levels even close to what the original predictions were when the storm was closer. And because it's moving away, I think these levels will be quite a bit lower, but it's still close enough and the wind is still strong enough that I do think surge will become an issue overnight tonight between four and six o'clock. And by tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, we have more of an onshore flow. Now at that point, we're nearing low tide. So that's kind of a good thing. Not only do you have low tide, you also have a storm that's moving away. Still a decent fetch of wind, a, a decent area of coverage. So I still think we're going to see for the next high tide, which is, well, it would be about 5 or 5.30 on Thursday afternoon. Because by then, we continue to have the onshore flow, but the bulk of the storm has now moved out into the Atlantic and away. So the way I see it, Winds, obviously, highest probability of damaging winds would be along the line and off to the east, especially Sarasota, southern Manatee, and Charlotte County. Surge, the farther north you are, the less likely you'll see it. There will be a rise in water. There will be some surge, but I don't think it is going to be a major factor for most of the area. A couple of spots, if the winds blow just right, we will have to watch it. And really, the only tide that I think is the real threat it would be between about 4 o'clock a.m. overnight tonight into tomorrow and 6 o'clock tomorrow morning as well. We'll have more coming up in a couple of minutes, guys. All right, All right. thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Ed. All right, our Adam Walzer is uh, north of Sarasota County. Uh, he was in Bradenton, still is, and that's where we've seen some of the, uh, the strongest winds from that map we were just seeing there from Greg. Yeah, and the wind gusts certainly strong there, Adam. Uh, how are you doing out there now? I know you're getting blown away quite a bit just a little earlier. I think he, um, yeah, he was, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, there he is. Back out into Adam, the you okay? Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time. It, it's so, so loud. I'm having a hard time hearing you, but um, I feel like a Tampa Bay Buccaneers lineman out here standing up against this wind because it's really, really pushing back. You know, and, and this rain feels like a needle, you know, hitting your skin. It's coming so hard. And we're hearing that there are some of these gusts of close to 100 miles an hour here. So the rain is falling down. You can see all the, all the wind hitting all these boats and making them start to rock. You know, we don't have a lot of storm surge and things like that right here. That's going to be the concern are these very, very high winds. And this, folks, is what a hurricane looks like. It is really, really blowing. The rain is coming down inches an hour. It is really blowing hard. So if you're here in Manatee County, you need to stay wherever you are because it is treacherous out here. It's really, really rough and it's just getting worse. In the last half hour or so, this wind has kicked up from, you know, 50, 60 mile an hour gusts to close to 100 miles an hour. So we are really starting to see a difference here in the wind and uh, it's really starting to get treacherous out here. Uh, right now, um, we know a man's over there on, on that boat right now. I guess he's not too worried at this moment, but you know, it's definitely not somewhere you want to be unless you have to be out in this stuff, guys. Yeah, Adam, uh, Greg D was just saying that you're probably experiencing uh, over 70 mile per hour winds there. So uh, yeah. it's understandable that it's tough for you to stand or hear us for that matter. And, and, and I don't I don't think it's going to get any better for saying? a little while. Uh, Greg D, I don't know how long. Do you know how long these winds will sustain? Well, this is going to last for a while. This is a slow moving storm. He's got rain bands heading in right now. One of the strongest ones overhead, uh, but there is more uh, headed in his direction. There's the view. So he's located over towards Manatee County. Here's Eastern Manatee County out on the pier. You see here every time one of these yellow rain bands moves by, that's when he feels the stronger winds. That's when the winds really pick up. There may be a lull here coming up. I see some darker greens, the rain uh, lightening up and then more heavy rain. And each subsequent band is going to get a little heavier as Ian continues to push inland. So uh, this is going to last a while. If you're in Bradenton down towards Sarasota, uh, where that extreme warning is, you saw Dennis show it to you. That's up for three hours. That is a long time. It's now two and a half hours left in that. You know, you see a severe thunderstorm warning issued during a cold front. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and it's over. It blows through. 
this is this is not like a summer thunderstorm. This is like a three hour a mega uh, a summer thunderstorm. It's going to last a very long time. Kylie McGivern is out there as well. She's in Tampa over on Bayshore. And Kylie over here, we've seen an offshore flow, and that's caused some different scenes around downtown Tampa. Absolutely. So we are on iconic Bayshore Boulevard and I'm going to step out of the way for a second because this is not what you are used to seeing when you look out to the bay and you can see how much the water has receded. It's just striking knowing that this is all a result of that incoming hurricane. Now, thankfully, it's a lot more quiet out here right now, you know, other than one gentleman behind us. That's about it. But earlier, when you're taking a look at this video, this was the image from a bit earlier this afternoon. Tons of people going out into the bay, and we are showing this as an example of what not to do. Tampa police has been going up and down, telling people you've got to get out of the water because that water will come back in, creating an incredibly dangerous situation that people were bringing their kids in. You know, of course, this is an image that you are not used to seeing, but please do not put yourself or your family in jeopardy by taking those chances. Talking with Tampa Police Department, they said, look, we can only do so much to protect people. We are going to try to keep you safe, but you've got to make those decisions to help yourself. So as they continue to patrol, they've also said anyone that has decided to stay. When you're looking behind me, these are some of the high rises. If people have decided to stay in this area, it's at the point that you need to realize that law enforcement versus responders yeah, sure. may or may not be able to get to you. This is a chance that you are taking on your own as these continue to pick up. So we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. For now, we're live on Bayshore Boulevard. Kylie McGivern, ABC Action News. All right, thank you. Uh, we want to go to our Michael Paluska, who I believe uh, is still in the eye of the storm. Michael, I know you're in Venice and you were getting really kicked around there. Are you OK? What's it like right now? Uh, we he's don't have we don't have Michael. Well, he's in Venice. I mean, that's you know, it's expected. I'm sure he's not. Uh, he it was the, the best eye of, live yeah. shot of the. Uh, and he know. was just two miles from the coast, yeah. the eye of the storm. Uh, Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips is standing by with the latest conditions now as Hurricane Ian has made landfall. Dennis. Yeah, Wendy. And as Greg and I were just talking, so we were looking at our future cast. In fact, I'm going to put this in motion. In fact, Shay, why don't you do that? If you go ahead and put this in motion, can we flip prompter, Jay? Um, if you put this in motion, you continue to see this track more toward the northeast as opposed to the north northeast. Now, it could be a wobble. Absolutely could be a wobble. But before we get to that, I, I do want to focus on, you know, where the warnings are. But I'll tell you, it would not surprise me. And some of our future cast models are showing this more of a track like this as opposed to a track like this. And at this point, again, looking at this track, all you have to do is follow the eye. At this point, it's really not even a matter of models even coming into play. I mean, I say you throw the models out the window and you look out the window because you can see. And by the way, I just looked out the window here at the station and it is really, really coming down. We're probably having about 60 mile on a gust right here at the station. But as I said, you take a track of this, it looks like this track could be early indications of maybe more of a southern track. So the Hurricane Center comes up with their advisory and their updated track in about an hour and a half. So it will be interesting to see whether or not they do decide to go a little more south. I'm just saying, again, it could very easily be a temporary wobble. You can't look at every frame because that's, this isn't like a perfect ball rolling. It's kind of more like a, a wobble here, a wobble there. And at that point, you look at the overall motion. So bottom line, the purple area is expanding and that is the extreme wind warning. I mean, this right here, the entire area in purple has winds of about 100 miles an hour. Now, that is growing in a sense because as the eye continues to move north, this left eye wall, the left side is expanding north. So this will extend, I guarantee you, in the next hour, maybe less than that, this area will extend into the rest of Sarasota County and potentially into Manatee County as well. So if you live in Manatee County, you're getting, as Greg just showed you, you're getting a significant outer band right there as it is, but there's more coming that way. So I would not be surprised if we do see that extended. Although, remember, counterclockwise flow 
So as Greg mentioned too, there's also a little bit l less rain coming in, but that does not show you wind. And I guarantee you there is a ton of wind with this in that band right there. So we're going to go from there. Again, hurricane warnings remain in effect. There will be no, no real changes outside of dropping back some of the warnings in Pinellas County. You're right on the fringe. I mean, we still have a hurricane warning for Pinellas. I could make the argument that is marginal at best. I, I'm more inclined to think, you know, Manatee and maybe eastern Hillsborough County. But at the very least, you are going to see winds gusting from 50 to 70 miles an hour. So here's that track I talked about. And the Hurricane Center is going like this and then eventually kicking off to the northeast a little bit and then offshore by tomorrow morning. But what we're kind of seeing is a track that looks to be a little bit more to the east northeast as opposed to the northeast. We'll see if it's just a wobble. All right, winds right now still continue to gust nearly 100 miles an hour in some spots. And over the next couple of days, I want to at least focus in on Pinellas and Hillsborough County and areas to the south. The winds expected to be in the mid to upper 60s gusts. We are not anticipating hurricane force wind gusts in Pinellas County. And I seriously doubt we see much of the same in Hillsborough. There's a chance down here close to Manatee County, but this reminds us a lot of what we experienced with Irma. There will be power outages. There will be trees down. There already are, but this is not the kind of wind that causes structural damage to homes outside. Of course, if a tree were to fall citrus, Hernando, Pasco, same thing. We continue to see heavy winds along the coast, but as we head into the next 12 to 24 hours, none of these winds, none of them make it into hurricane force. So we're really in a much better place right now for most of our area than we have been in the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, that is not the case down south. The models in Polk County, again, upper 50s to the upper 60s, but still not hurricane force. Even with the track of the storm, the models aren't all that impressed with the amount of wind that we could see in Polk County, and that would be a blessing. I say it again, though, at least under the better safe than sorry scenario. If you're in a mobile home and you live in Polk County, you don't want to mess with it. You don't want to take a chance. Go to a shelter or a safe spot as we head into the latter half of the day. And lastly, I want to focus in on Manatee and Sarasota County. Those winds are the ones that we're clearly most concerned about. And Michael Paluska is in the middle of it in Venice. We've been talking to Michael all day long. Matter of fact, things got so rough a while ago, he had to take shelter. Michael, you're still in it. Well, you're inside. So what <laughs> are you experiencing inside and outside right now? Dennis, we're standing in the middle of the house because the, the house that we're in is, is basically surrounded by windows and it's getting nailed with debris. The one behind me looks out to the front yard. We can zoom in on that one and you can just see we are sustained sustained hurricane force winds out there with higher gusts. When we were on TV with you, some of the oak trees started to break. The limbs were flying off and they were coming up over the roof. That's why my photographer grabbed me. He was my spotter. He was watching to make sure that I was safe. And so that's why we went into the garage. And then really right after we got off the air with you, it just flipped on and it just started howling through here and it hasn't stopped since. I want to guess looking at my watch, uh, my concept of time's a little off. I think it was around 1, 145, 2 o'clock. And then this is the back window over here. And you can just see this area has a fence to the left. There's a tree down. The fence has been blown over. And then I'll have my photographer hold this shot right here. And then you guys, this is what we're going to be experiencing for at least another two hours. It is just wave after wave of gust heavy winds, debris, we're here, we're at, we don't have any power. We're hearing loud noises. The, the wind from this thing as it's spinning in, as it makes landfall, is going over the top of the house. And then as it spins, it rotates and we start hearing noises on the other side of the house. We've been hearing explosions uh, and we've been hearing like this like weird generator type sound. Uh, and so th this is what we're, we're doing. We're, we're in the middle. We're obviously, I think, you know, concerned about the wind in a tornado potentially. That's what scares us the most. Uh, we can't check any of our social media or radar apps right now because we don't we don't have any any internet on my phone. The only thing I can do right now is I can text and I actually just texted my wife a video for her to put out because in, the internet won't let me post it or do a Facebook Live or anything. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to ride out the storm here. We were able to put some water in the sink, so we'll have a little bit of water. Uh, I haven't even checked to see if the water's still on. 
We do still have water, which is good. So we just filled this up, got it going. Uh, I think the main thing is that you mentioned somebody in a, uh, a, a mobile home. Uh, this wind, as soon as it hits, it'll push that thing right over. So if this is heading up this way, and you know it's gonna blow out of here pretty fast, Dennis, uh, as soon as it starts going inland, they should just get out of here because when we feel the wind, it rocks this whole house. I mean, we hear booms and bangs and you see the windows kind of just bend in. Now this is an old house too. So yeah, we're gonna ride out the storm. If, uh, you know, I, I wish I was out in it, reporting in it, but it's just too dangerous. <laughs> I mean, obviously, uh, I'm sure my wife wouldn't want me out reporting in the storm, <laughs> but uh, it, it's intense and, it, and it's, uh, it's just, I'm sure she's watching right now. It's intense, you know, it's scary, but uh, if you're inside and you're, and you're out of the way of the water, uh, I'm not too worried right now. Yeah, and Michael, I mean, I hate to say this, but we're not seeing any windows broken. We're not seeing any trees down. So outside of some small ones in the fence, I mean, have you looked out the window and seeing any kind of damage? Because truthfully, you're in a pretty good spot right now. I mean, there's a Cat 5 or borderline Cat 5 hurricane within a few miles of you, and I'm not seeing any kind of structural damage. So I would consider myself very fortunate at this point. You look okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I think we're doing pretty good. I mean, this whole row of homes are block houses and some people boarded up. A lot of people actually didn't, as we had mentioned before. The only thing we've really seen is some of the bigger trees in the front are down and they're leaning over. There's a little bit of that water we saw earlier. It's starting to come up. So we're looking at that. I, I don't know where it's coming from because we're not near any water. Uh, it's probably just regular flooding, but we're, we'll have to move one of the news units because we're not gonna lose a vehicle. Uh, hopefully right. we can you know, not have to do that and run out in the storm. Um, but yeah, so far I think we've we're 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 doing good at least right here. I'm sure farther out, you know, that are more exposed, Dennis. I mean, this storm, the winds are crazy. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, Greg, I was looking over at uh, where you are and compared to well, where the rest of the storm is, and you're really on the outer fringe of that eye wall. So honestly, I think you're going to be experiencing this for at least another couple of hours. So let us know when it's safe for you to go back outside. And then at that point, we can do a little tour with you. And, and you know, Eric can go outside because your chief photographer, Eric, out there has been through storms for 30 years. So he knows how to keep people safe. So no worries there. But once it gets better, we'd love to see yeah. what's going on. And hopefully we won't see a lot of damage. But when you have winds of 100 miles an hour, you think eventually things are going to go, right? Right, absolutely. And, you know, the ones that are hitting this window, Dennis, they're freaky because they're, they're taking out acorns. And those acorns flying at however fast they're going hitting that tree, uh, it's, it's scary because yeah. they're, they're like little pellets, like little. Yeah, if Reed, I don't know, Reed missed that one. But uh, I don't know how much time we have, but we could leave it up here and you could see it. Some of these, these uh, acorns, man, are just hitting this window. And the thing is, these are pretty thin, but we don't have any water leaking in. Mm -hmm. We don't have any issues with our roof at this point. Uh, it's going right over the top. But you know, if you're outside, you get hit. I don't want to say acorns, but debris and limbs, and there's, there's power lines actually back there too. Um, but th this is the scariest part of the house, so this is the area we're avoiding for the most part. Well, and when you are, we're looking at winds. It looks like it's about 80, 85. I'll tell you about maybe 15 miles to your west. It's 120 miles an hour. That's out in the so Gulf. But that remember, way. that's moving in the opposite direction because these go counterclockwise. So at least what we're looking at right now, you're gonna be okay. I still think you're gonna have a stretch of some pretty serious wind over the next hour. Again, that's Michael Paluska. Mike, thank you very much. Stay safe out there. If anything happens, if you start to see some, some more action, or for that matter, once things calm down and you have a chance to go out, we'd love to go back because again, first and foremost, we're gonna keep him safe. Winds of 150 miles an hour. It has now moved inland, moving north, northeast at nine. And there is the biggest concern right now. I mean, we've talked about tornado warnings. We've had a couple, but this yellow, or rather this area in purple, is a heck of a lot more powerful than any tornado warning. Typically, tropical systems spawn tornadoes of about 75 to 85 miles an hour. These are all up over 100. And Greg, we were talking a couple of minutes ago, the water rise, at least so far that we've seen, has been most extensive around Fort Myers because that is just north and east of the center. Everything north, they're not dealing with surge, obviously, because the winds are blowing offshore. But Fort Myers Beach surge is the biggest concern by far. And you were looking at some piers and we were looking at video in hotels earlier. And right now, as far as I can tell, that appears to be ground zero for most of the water. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, I think the surge there, I mean, it's textbook really when you look at it. It's just to the right of that eye and that track. It was Naples to Fort Myers. I suspect we have not seen video evidence of the worst surge as those places are probably inaccessible. Though, as I'll show you, there are some reports of some impressive surge. Let's do some analysis on the storm 
platform because I'm seeing something that interests me in that eye wall. So first of all, it's maybe looking a little bit more ragged now. It may be feeling the interaction with land. That's certainly good news. Here's the radar. That heavy rain band that Michael Paluska in is right there. It's the northwest eye wall, kind of an unusual side of the storm. Let's get into it and actually show you what's going on. There's that extreme wind warning that Dennis mentioned. It's until 6 o'clock for that eye wall. But as you look inside the storm, it seems like it's the western side of it that's stronger, and that's still to move through many areas. This is the radar looking at the speed of the raindrops in the air. We're actually looking at their speed. Around where Michael Paluska is, we're seeing winds of around 100 miles an hour. But check out this bright purple area down to the south. The backside of the eye has winds of 120 to 140 miles per hour. And look where this is going. This is actually heading back inland. So you could have the eye go by and the back side of the eye may actually be stronger than the front side that just moved through. So Englewood, I don't think you're out of the woods yet. Port Charlotte, you're kind of getting in the eye right now. Some of the strongest winds may actually be on the back side of Ian coming in with this northwest wind. So once you get into the eye and if you do, you need to stay inside and really wait it out because the winds back here appear to be stronger than they are on the front side of the storm. And that's something we talked about in the last couple of days. Some of the model data was indicating that the way Ian was going to evolve as it moved on shore was to have the energy shift to the western and northwest side of the storm. So it's going to be north and west of the track where some of the heaviest rain and the winds are. And you can see it here, this large area of red. That's where you're looking at some of these heavier rainfall uh, amounts and some of this heavier wind. A couple of storm reports out there for you uh, on this uh, evening. Captiva, 126 mile per hour wind gust in the storm. That symbol right there, that indicates storm surge in the region. And actually, uh, some of the folks at the National Weather Service indicating that they got reports on social media, multiple social media posts from Fort Myers Beach showing storm surge levels up to the first story roofs. That's how high on Fort Myers Beach, which you would imagine if you've been to Fort Myers Beach, it's just a barrier island that basically the Gulf of Mexico washed over Fort Myers Beach and that most buildings on the island there uh, were flooded. Uh, the eye right there just south of our area I looked into some of our local storm reports and especially around Tampa and St. Pete. Remember the last update here? I was tracking this heavy shower moving through downtown Tampa. Well, the Tampa airport just gusted to 55 miles an hour. And as that heavy rain was moving through the St. Pete area, Whitted Airport, right there on the water just south of the pier, reported a wind gust of 60 miles an hour. And actually in downtown St. Pete, the winds are sustained at tropical storm strength. Whitted Airport reporting about 44 mile an hour sustained winds gusting to 60. And here comes another one. This heavy shower right there near the university area. This is going to be uh, Temple Terrace over towards Fowler Bush, uh, heading over towards where Bush Gardens is just south of the southern apex. Lutes Lando Lakes over towards Carrollwood, Northdale, New Tampa. This is going to have some wind gusts in it in that 55 to 65 mile an hour range. And it's coming up on you, Carrollwood, Keystone, West J over towards uh, the West Tampa area, back over towards Midtown and eventually town and country and then again into northern Pinellas County. Some of the other reported wind gusts right now, gusting to near 70 now, so that's even higher in St. Pete and the Tampa airport continues to gust higher into the 60s. And whenever you start to get winds above 55, 60 miles an hour, you're going to start to get some sporadic power outages. So we'll be watching those numbers for Hillsborough and Pinellas County. So guys, as I send it back to you, uh, the winds only increase. And I think as far as the Tampa Metro, some of the worst weather is beginning now and will likely last into the late evening hours. All right, Greg, thank you. And, and speaking of power outages, FPL down in Sarasota County right now, 112,000 people. Without power, that number has gone up from about 78,000 at last check, maybe about 30 minutes ago. So the power outages are still climbing there. So if you are without power right now, you're still listening to us. You're not alone. You have a lot of neighbors there who are also without power tonight. Yeah, and because the winds have just been so strong, it's yeah, understandable have. that that will continue for some time. And next, we want to go to our Vanessa Ariza, who is standing by for us on Clearwater Beach. Vanessa. And Vanessa, yeah, we've seen a lot of folks in Pinellas County. We have several crews out there. Vanessa, what's it like where you are now? 
Well, good evening to you guys. You know, the winds are picking up here at last check on my app. It was marking about 44 miles per hour. About 15 minutes ago, it was sitting at 34. So it's kind of intermittent. It'll die down for just a second and then it'll pick back up. We're all uh, the street that we're on right now is Baymont Street, kind of just off of the main stretch here in Clearwater Beach. You can see the water choppy there. And if we kind of zoom into these palm trees here, you can just see how that wind is picking up here. The good news, though, guys, is that despite the wind here, though it is, you know, breezy, um, there's not a lot of rain here. And the only really damage, if you will even call it damage, are palm fronds. We drove around for about an hour or so uh, in the early morning, afternoon-ish, and we just saw a lot of down palm fronds. You see some limbs that are kind of down. But other than that, that is about it. So in the grand scheme of things, we are faring rather well here in the Clearwater Beach area. And around 11 o'clock this morning, we were driving around. We saw one business that was open and it was a bar, the oldest bar here in Clearwater Beach, the shipwreck bar. There was one customer inside. We talked to the bartender. He said, hey, look, we're Floridians. I'm watching all of the weather channels. We saw it up at the bar and uh, he said, we'll make the call. If maybe it gets around 50 miles per hour, we'll go ahead, shut down and we'll go home. He said, but other than that, we're just going to keep watching it. We'll stay open. They're the only business here along Clearwater Beach that is open right now. We've only seen a few vehicles, maybe one or two on the streets, but we're really seeing our uh, Clearwater police officers kind of setting up shop, keeping an eye on things, making sure that everything's okay. And for the most part, it is. We have those winds. They're knocking down the palm fronds, but other than that and some light rain, we, uh, we're doing pretty well. Knock on wood, it will stay that way, guys. All right, Vanessa, thank you. And we have our uh, Paula Grone, who's in Polk County right now, checking out conditions there. Yeah, he's live for us this afternoon in Lakeland. So, Paul, are the winds or the rain picking up? I know a lot of folks uh, in the Bay Area headed up to Lakeland in Orlando because they thought it would be safer. But, of course, what everything changed in the last 24 hours. How is it now? I... I tell you, Wendy Jameson, it really is the catch-22 of Hurricane Ian, right? The old switcheroo because uh, people thought that they were going to have to evacuate this way uh, because of the original path. And this hotel that we're at is fully booked from a lot of folks who did come from the west, from Clearwater, St. Pete, Indian Rocks. I've spoken to a lot of couples uh, who evacuated this way. They're going to ride it out here. We're expecting it to be about a cat one, although I know things are changing by the moment as it passes through Lakeland later tonight. Uh, you caught me in a bit of a lull here. It comes and goes in waves as we've been seeing throughout all the locations here on Massachusetts Avenue in downtown Lakeland. The rain, the wind starting to pick up. And earlier I spoke with a couple who came here all the way from Australia to visit uh, right in the middle of their vacation. They're getting the true Florida experience of a hurricane. Listen, uh, you guys were on vacation. Uh, what are you thinking right now? Uh... <laughs> We just want to, I don't know, we got to get on the road, make it further down south, hopefully drive around it. I don't know, we were meant to go down the whole west coast from Tampa down to the Keys and it's all been blown up, but we just hope everyone kind of gets out okay. And, and Chloe, you guys were here on vacation for, what was it, three weeks yeah. is your planned trip? How yeah. much longer were you supposed to be here? Uh, we still got another two weeks to go, but we had a week in Florida where we're hoping to get our tan on because it's a bit <laughs> cold back home. But um, we've missed out on that, so we'll head back up to New York after this, hopefully get some dry weather. <laughs> um, and where were you guys before Lakeland? Did you come here to get out of the storm's path? We'd actually come from Kennedy Space Center, okay, which was actually really good. Yeah. And we had a sunny day there and we kind of drove into it, but we didn't have much choice. Yeah. And where do you think you'll head next from here? Are you leaving today? We're leaving today. Uh, we're going to try and get to Miami. It looks like it's going to be sunny on the weekend, so we're still fingers crossed for that. And you guys are driving, right? I mean, you're yeah. driving yourself. I mean, this, this is unfamiliar territory for you. Are, do you feel safe? I think so. Chloe's a good driver. <laughs> Chloe, <laughs> Chloe we're just going to take it a little bit at a time and pull over wherever we need to. Yeah. yeah. And have you ever been to Florida before? Was this your first? Uh, first time. First time. What are your impressions so far, minus the hurricane? I mean, everyone's really lovely, that's for sure. We got um, told this is authentic Florida experience, so yeah. just embrace it. <laughs> I hope you guys are able to come back when there's not a hurricane. Yeah. I wish you the safest of travels, and thank you for taking the time. No, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. 
on the road during a hurricane. What an experience. Back here live in downtown Lakeland, the wind starting to pick up, the rain starting to fall a little bit heavier. I don't have to tell you, though, back there, this is nothing compared to what it's going to be later. I measured it uh, a couple of minutes ago. We're looking at 50 mile an hour wind gusts right now, sustained right around 38. I will say I've got family uh, that li live in Lakeland in the Plant City area. That's where I'm from. Uh, and I know my family in Lakeland's already saying that they have power out uh, also some folks in Mulberry. So I don't know what the exact numbers are. Don't quote me on this, but I, I did a quick count. It, it was nearing a thousand. Obviously, that's probably going to increase as the night goes on and the day goes on. Uh, so power outages being felt right here in Lakeland uh, as the wind and the rain start to pick up. This is kind of it, it really hasn't even started yet for us. Uh, so it's it's only going to get worse from here. But, uh, you know, you look at the silver lining, guys, and I think people have taken this storm seriously. The proof of that is this hotel that is sold out and packed. And the fact that we don't see a lot of people now on the roads, uh, so they're where they need to be. I do think about those people in the mobile homes around the Peace River Basin. Uh, the emergency officials here in Polk County voice their concerns about uh, the people who did decide to stay. If you were in a, a manufactured mobile home uh, because of the nature of the storm, the winds, uh, they're concerned about obvious for obvious reasons the mobile home uh, will be vulnerable to the wind and then the rain and the flooding in that Peace River Basin south of Lake Hancock. Uh, they're worried about uh, too much rain too fast, uh, too much too soon. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it, you know, the volume's starting to get uh, turned up here, uh, but we're, we're in for a, a long stretch. I, I think we're, you know, looking at around, I think the last timing was eight, eight o'clock is when it really starts get to, to get kicking. And then even into midnight uh, is where you're going to see uh, a lot different atmospherics uh, here in downtown Lakeland. I'll send it back to you. That's the latest here in Polk County. All right, Paul, thank you. Stay safe out there. And now we want to go to Sarasota, where uh, it's been a bit dicey out there as well. Yeah, it has. ABC Action News reporter Mary O'Connell is there live for us with the latest conditions. Mary? Well, dicey is a really good word for it because it has just been relentless, nonstop wind and rain here. And I know we've talked a lot about power outages across the Tampa Bay area. One thing that we're at a county run shelter here. It's one of the uh, 12 county run shelters here in Sarasota County. Um, but one of the things that we've been watching is the power going out at this shelter, you know, inside the lights will flicker here and there. And actually one of the things here that the staff has mentioned is there's not a generator here. So if the power goes out, it's out. So everybody charge your phones. I know we've heard it a lot from the meteorologists is to charge your phones and make sure everything, you know, you, you're all charged up. You can get in contact with folks. So that's something we're also keeping an eye on here. But I want to show you a little bit of the conditions here behind me. Um, it, I don't even know if it, it's easy to see on camera, but he, oh gosh, in person, it is just blowing, whipping winds here. And it hasn't stopped for, for a couple hours now. I mean, we're keeping an eye on these trees as well because they are bending in the wind. Um, we have debris all over the ground, and it's just the wind is, it, there's no real direction to it. They're, it's just blowing all over the place here. Here at this shelter, there are about 330, I, I'd like to call them our closest friends. We've got families, we've got pets, we've got um, the lovely staff here at Fruitville Elementary who have kind of been taking care of all the folks who are sheltering from this storm. Um, and, and, and they'll be here until this storm passes. We even, um, I would say in the middle of uh, about a half hour ago, we had about a family of four and a dog show up in the middle of this storm. So. They're still, you know, making sure people are staying out of it. But man, this has nonstop been bad out here. And of course, we're safe under this shelter here, but we're keeping an eye on the conditions. Here and there, we'll actually get little alerts on our phones. Those emergency alerts, you know what they sound like. We got one that said, alert, extreme weather warning. We know what it's like. That wind, it's just been crazy and nonstop. So it's something we're obviously keeping an eye on here. The note from people, county officials, is to really shelter in place and, and not go outside and stay out of this storm because oh, we have a couple people moving from one of the other buildings because people are also sheltering in classrooms here at this school. We got people in the lunchroom, we've got people in the classroom, and people all spread out here at the shelter um, here in Sarasota County. But this storm, it's nonstop, and I'm sure it'll, it, the impacts, we're going to feel it for, for several more hours. We'll send it back to you. Oh, yeah, you've got your work cut out for you tonight. All right, thank you, Mary. Our Stasi almost is live for us at Ben T. Davis Beach in Hillsborough County. She's been there all day. Stasi, how are the conditions near you right now? 
Well, right now we uh, moved a little bit down to Rocky Point. We're standing underneath a parking structure here at Sailport. As you can see behind me, that is Tampa Bay. It has very low tide right now. Dennis kept mentioning how you can see the water pulling out of the bay. So right now you can see that current. It's all going towards the Gulf right now with Hurricane Ian pulling that that water down as uh, you know Dennis mentioned we are at low tide so basically where all of this was was water it filled uh, Ben T Davis Beach over here it's really just land and we're gonna pan over and show you people have been coming out all morning to walk on the bay as you can see right now there are dozens of people that have come out um, you know we're getting those spurts of, of wind and rain you know uh, Greg mentioned wind gusts of 55 miles per hour that was uh, recorded at the Tampa Bay uh, Tampa Airport and we are feeling that right now as you can see as I'm standing out here you'll get a big gust of wind that'll kind of throw the uh, the rain at you and sometimes the visibility as well. So we're going to pan over and show you the Howard Franklin is completely covered right now. Uh, you can hardly see over that bridge and that is exactly why they do not want people out driving. I mean, really best case scenario here in Tampa right now that we're not getting that storm surge and uh, Dennis mentioned that we're not expecting to get that 5.30 p.m tide storm surge because the hurricane is pulling the other way that's good news but he did say at about four in the morning we could expect higher waters here you do not want to be those people walking out on the bay when that happens um, the Tampa police have already put out a tweet saying do not walk anywhere where there should be water stay home so technically all of those people right now could be getting in trouble but as of right now it is pretty calm it is picking up as we're getting those bands um, visibility right now is all right and uh, we're gonna stay out here as long as it's safe underneath this parking garage uh, but this really is best case scenario for right now here in our Tampa area reporting live here in Tampa I'll send it back to you guys Stassi almost all right Stassi thank you yes and, and Dennis was shaking his head yes that is in fact true that even though it will be high tide uh, in just a bit it will not affect uh, the flooding there we well now want to go to Kevin Lewis standing by live in Davenport Kevin usually does sports for us but he's taking the weather angle today. I know the Bucks may or may not play on Sunday. We'll see. Kevin, how is the weather out in Davenport now? It was calm. Uh, Kyle Berger and I drove over about 10 o'clock and it was calm. There's nobody on I-4 and the, the weather was calm most of the day. Uh, the rain picked up about an hour ago. It stopped, but now it's pretty steady uh, with the rain. We're at a 7-Eleven uh, around Sand Mine Road in US 27. Uh, they've saran wrapped the pumps. There's no gas left, uh, and they just closed the store. People were making last minute buys, some adult beverages, uh, potato chips, people just grabbing some snacks and, and running back to their cars and out of the rain. We met a couple of from Tampa who said they were really disappointed to get away uh, from the storm, and they hope things will calm down. But the wind has picked up. It's kind of just been a steady, moderate rain and wind so far. Uh, we'll see if business picks up a little later on tonight, but it looks kind of like business as usual. Some restaurants and businesses closed, other ones open where we got lunch. Uh, the manager said, hey, we're going to stay open as long as we can tonight. So I think some people are just content to ride out the storm and operate as usual because there are a fair number of cars on the road. Uh, despite people trying to get away from the storm, they know that there's going to be more rain uh, and more wind coming up tonight. So Dennis uh, has more from the Weather Center. Uh, we'll send it back to you in Tampa. Yeah, uh, Kevin talking about weather. Can I talk about my fantasy football team? Because I mean, I'm just thinking you know, we kind of reverse roles right now. Hey, uh, so uh, again, as we continue to watch the storm move in, winds are down another five miles an hour. So every advisory, every update we get, we would hope and expect to see this to continue. I mean, a Cat 5 is hard enough to maintain its strength over areas of very warm water. And I say Cat 5, I mean, Technically, this in at 155, 156 is Cat 5. So, I mean, you're splitting hairs, but technically it was a very strong Category 4 hurricane. Continues to move in and right around that center, that's where the extreme wind warning is. And boy, that to me is clearly the biggest issue. You don't see these a lot of time. Typically, the la in fact, I think I remember the last time we had one of these purple areas, this extreme wind warning was Irma five years ago and it was in Polk County. So this is a pretty large area from Arcadia back over to Sarasota down south 
to Fort Myers, and this remains in effect until 6 o'clock tonight. And it makes perfect sense. It's all the way around the eye wall and especially on the northeast side. The northeast side is the strongest. It's the tornadic side, and it also is the side that increases the surge risk. And it's becoming very evident. Greg and I were just looking at something. I mean, there's flooding, there's surge all the way down to Naples. So when you have the center of that storm moving in north of Fort Myers, you're going to have the bulk of the surge from Port Charlotte to Fort Myers. But as Stasi just said, and this is 100% correct, we still have an offshore flow across the rest of the Bay Area. There is no way that you are going to see surge with a strong offshore flow as a hurricane is moving in, even though it is coming up on high tide right now. Remember, there's a six hour difference between high and low tide. So if high tide is at four o'clock, low tide would be at 10 o'clock and then high tide comes around again six hours later, give or take a half hour or so at about four or 430. And that is the time of high tide that I think we're going to have to be a little more careful and worry a bit about the surge in the bay. The good news is by the time we reach 430 in the morning, this is going to be a heck of a lot weaker. So we're going to get a new track in about 45 minutes. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess if it were to go a little more south, it could bypass Polk County more. But either way, it's probably going to be on the weaker side by then as well, at least compared to what we're experiencing in Sarasota and down across Charlotte and Lee County. So there you see it through tonight, 8 o'clock, winds of 120 miles an hour. But by tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, it will already have turned downgraded into a tropical storm even before it hits Orlando. So I know there are a lot of folks out there who are worried about their family and their friends who evacuated into Orlando saying, you've got to be kidding me. Well, it happened in 2004 with Charlie where it was a last minute thing. Charlie was coming toward the Bay Area. We were pretty confident of that forecast. Everybody went to Orlando and then six hours, six hours before landfall, it went down and hit pretty much the exact same location that this storm has hit. And it stayed strong all the way across the state. So we had people in Orlando with 130 mile an hour winds. This go around, it's the same mentality. Folks evacuated with good reason. We had evacuation orders for A, B, and C because at that point the track was right along the coast, right? Well, fortunately for the Bay Area directly, the track has shifted. And as you can see right here, I mean, this shows us that the track still goes through Polk County. However, in our opinion, and Greg and I were just kind of looking at this, it would not surprise me at all if it starts to drop. So yes, this is still kind of a scary look at this point, but we really think it's going to start to be weakening pretty quickly by the time we get into that. But here's the end result. Folks in Polk County, you have to still expect winds gusting of about 80 to 100 miles an hour. That is very reminiscent of what you had with Irma. As a matter of fact, you could probably argue from the Hillsborough County line, the Pinellas County line northward, the impacts are going to be almost identical to what we had with Irma five years ago. 50 to 60 in Pinellas, 60 to 65 Hillsboro, 80 to 95 in Polk County, 50 to 55 in Pasco in Hernando, and 45 to 50 in Citrus County. Now, one other thing, when this goes offshore, it's expected to strengthen again. And that's why hurricane warnings have been extended up to Daytona, because there's a pretty decent chance this redevelops, this gets stronger, and all of a sudden you could have hurricane force winds from Daytona up to Jacksonville, although it does appear that it's going to stay east of Jacksonville. Current winds, again, anywhere from the low to the upper 90s. These are the hourly OBS, low to mid 40s. I actually, how many folks are checking their ring cameras and looking at the videos to see what's going on. Everybody's raising their hand. Greg did, Jameson did, Wendy did, I did. I mean, I just looked at my ring camera in Palm Harbor and there's nothing going on. I mean, there's not even any branches down. My basketball hoop is still up. So there are plenty of spots across Pinellas County and Northern Hillsborough County that are seeing gusts, certainly, that'll go up to 50 or 60 miles an hour, but they typically only last for just a few seconds and then they go down again. So. Let me one more time, because I think this is 
something that folks really need to see. And, and the reason I say that is because we've talked a lot about surge and the surge overnight could be an issue from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. But most folks don't live in the water and the surge only impacts those on the water. And we've covered the surge really well. So let's talk about the wind, which impacts everybody. 40 to 50 throughout the afternoon, 50 to 60 into the late evening, into the overnight hours, gusts as high as 70, but you are not seeing any sustained hurricane winds across Hillsborough, across Pinellas, right on through the period. And you would argue that if you go into Pasco County, and this takes us through Friday, by the way, and again, look at the timeline and look at your city and you can kind of see what the computers are saying. And then in terms of Pasco County northward, even less. I do think right along the coast, there could be some gusts a little bit higher from Newport Ritchie through Hudson, Holiday, Bayonet Point, over toward Trinity, Elfers. But at the end of the day, we're going to continue to see winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour across those inland spots. I do not expect hurricane force winds anywhere from Pasco, Hernando, Citrus, or Sumter County. So as we said, much like Irma. All right. Now I want to go from there to Polk County because Polk County is the one spot the models aren't sold on these winds as high as the Hurricane Center is. I mean, that track takes it right through here. If that's the case, you're going to get 80 to 85 mile an hour wind gusts. All right. Well, looking at what the models are showing, that is just not the case. I'm more inclined to go with the NHC on this one and say these gusts are going to be higher than what the numbers are showing, the computers are showing. I think 80 to 85 is probably a pretty good bet, especially from wherever it crosses east. Now, the track, we're tracking radar. It does look like it's going a little more to the south. If that were not just a wobble and actually a trend, then the numbers might be a little lower and stronger on the east side, which is pretty much Highlands County and over on the east side of the state. Of course, the winds will be strongest across Manatee and Sarasota County. So through the evening hours, the winds continue. They're going to be dropping now that the storm is moving away. Mid 70s by 8 o'clock, mid to upper 70s through the overnight hours, and then down into the 50s range by late tonight into tomorrow morning. And then after that, everything moves away. And I think the actual West Coast, Southwest Coast, especially who picked up most of the rain and most of the wind will probably see things get better sooner than everybody else. And then lastly, Hardy, DeSoto and Highlands County. Here's your wind again. Look at the time frame for your areas as the center comes through. I could easily see winds of 60 to 70 miles an hour in gusts, but because it is going to be weakening pretty quickly, we do not believe sustained hurricane force winds are going to be a major problem outside of right along the track. Because remember, hurricane force winds only extend 40 miles from the center and the strongest of those winds, maybe 10 miles from the center. So even though it's a big storm in terms of size, the actual significant winds are still a relatively small area. And again, that is good news as well. So as we continue to watch what will be a pretty active night, Greg has been looking at a lot of the other things going on with the storm, including the path that may be changing a little bit. Greg, we're about 45 minutes away from a new track. You think we're getting any changes at all? I think they kind of lock it in. You know, I don't know. There's looking at that track when you show it, they keep updating the position, but they keep the old track and it almost looks like it would have to go due north and then make a hard uh, right to kind of keep up with their line. I think they're going to smooth this out and maybe make it a little bit more northeast than north northeast, kind of like you've been seeing in the track of that storm over the last uh, several hours. The eye is definitely getting more ragged. It's filling in. So we're starting that process of weakening. Okay, it's only going to get better from here in terms of the intensity of the storm. Unfortunately, remember, as these winds that are tightly tightly wrapped up around the eye weaken, they spread out. So Wind gusts will continue. Tampa now regularly gusting above 60 miles an hour. St. Pete gusting into the 70s. Uh, Shea just showed me a report out of the Punta Gorda Airport. They just gusted to 124. So Ian still has a lot of punch left. And that eye wall, that northern eye wall, I actually, there are probably two dozen FDOT cameras on that stretch of I-75 between Northport down towards the Port Charlotte area. 
only about one or two of them are working. So power loss is something that is very common now. Remember that extreme wind warning continues from western Hardy County into Charlotte, Lee, and most of Sarasota County from downtown Sarasota South. This is for intense winds that could at times exceed 100 miles per hour. And it's all in that eye wall that is now moving through the area. Look at this bright red. That is just intense. Some of the most intense rain right now on the north and northwest side of that eye. So Sarasota downtown, darker reds here. The winds are gusting easily into the 60, 70 to 75 mile an hour range. But then the real meat of the storm, the real powerful winds are going to be in this rain band right here. So from about Venice down to Englewood, over toward Northport, it's the southern portions of Sarasota County. And I'm not forgetting about you, Bradenton, Manatee County. You're on the outer edge of those stronger tropical storm force winds, occasionally gusting to near hurricane force. We'll check with Bradenton coming up in just a little bit. Arcadia, you're getting into that front side of that stronger part of the eye wall. So now the wind's really picking up in portions of DeSoto County. Western DeSoto, remember you are under that extreme wind warning. I wanted to show you some of the winds here. And it's not just, yeah, the edge of the, the front side of the eye with that extreme wind warning, we're getting strong winds there. But radar is also picking up very strong winds on the backside of the storms. One of the great part about Doppler radar, it's the way we sometimes detect tornadoes in storms, is that it can track not only the direction that raindrops are moving in, but it can actually measure their speed. And you're still seeing winds above the Gulf here in the 120 to 135 mile an hour range. And this part of the storm, the stronger winds here in this pink, this uh, purple color, that's working its way back toward the coast. So Englewood, you're going to continue to see strong gusts. Venice, the wind is going to stay up for a little bit longer. You've been in that eye wall, Venice, for a very long time. And it's not over yet. You still have a little bit ways to go before you clear out of there. And that's going to swing right back through Port Charlotte as well. To the north now, into Pinellas, Hillsborough, and Polk County. Uh, Eastern Polk County actually clearing out. There's been this dry slot on the east side of the storm out on the east coast. Some of this drier air is getting pulled out towards Highway 27. So uh, Winter Haven, Lake Wales, maybe Auburndale, Davenport, kind of getting a bit of a break from the heavier rain. But we're still getting some really heavy downpours down across uh, portions of Pasco, Hillsboro, and over towards Pinellas County. Let me take you in here. So from Brooksville South, look at this heavy rain band where 98 and 19 come together. Southern Citrus County, there's some gusty winds there probably 40 to 50 miles an hour you get farther south and now these showers on 301 and 98 Zephyr Hills Dade City uh, these are probably producing winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour so Wesley Chapel heads up this is heading right down your way towards 75 and uh, over there towards 75 and eventually it's going to make its way towards Lando Lakes and 41 and then eventually to the western part of the county. Farther south, Pinellas, Hillsboro, over towards Polk County. Uh, we've seen the wind on and off here, gusting in the 50s in Lakeland. The Tampa Airport, every one of these little yellow showers as they move by these downpours, the airport automatically gusts above 60. The reports just coming in one after the other. The first one produced a 55 mile an hour gust, then a 62, then a 64. Each subsequent a little shower increasing the wind. So that's the kind of wind we're seeing right now. East Lake, Tarpon Springs, Palm Harbor down to Largo, Dunedin, and this is going to head out to the beaches. So Clearwater Beach over towards uh, Caladesi and Honeymoon. This is all going to head out offshore, really extending even up towards Anclote and the Anclote River, all the way down through the Pinellas County coast, now heading out into the islands, moving offshore. And there's plenty more to come to the east of that. Uh, this is something interesting. I showed you this earlier this morning. This is a model-based power outage index. This is the computer model, our computer model, making a best guess as to where the heaviest winds are going to be and where power outages are going to be the biggest problem. You can see the eye wall there, the red here. Those are severe power outages, and I suspect that anyone in that eye wall is going to lose power this evening. But farther to the north, the chances of power outages low to moderate. Now, this is the updated track from Futurecast. It's new thinking, and it kind of keeps the heaviest power outage density south of I-4. Southern Polk over towards Hardy, DeSoto, and Highlands counties. And then as the storm continues overnight out towards the East Coast, you see, if you do have friends and family in Orlando, there are going to be some power outages out there around Orange or Osceola County. But the storm will be nowhere near as powerful 
as it is right now over towards Sarasota County. Orlando is a safe place to be. It's just going to be a little inconvenient if they do have to lose power for a part of the overnight. I showed you that rain ban now impacting Manatee County and Bradenton. Our reporter Adam Walser is down in Bradenton. Uh, Adam, earlier you're out on the pier. What are the conditions there now? I know you were battling some really strong winds. Well, you, you can kind of see, I uh, look like the, the state book uh, marshmallow man. You can see how, how hard these winds have been gusting right now. I don't know exactly if you're getting the measurements here in the studio, but it certainly feels like it's at least 100 miles an hour because they've been steadily, steadily, steadily increasing over the course of the day. Take a look at this. You know, I'm just sitting back here. A lot of the water coming in from the from the bay there hitting us, uh, hitting up over the sea wall. You can kind of see where these squall lines are. Really just a huge wall of water. And we're seeing lots and lots of wind here. So we are certainly seeing conditions deteriorating here in the Bradenton area. Don't need to be out here. We're, we're, I think we just lost our uh, audio here. But just want to let people know that, that, that winds are certainly increasing and there's no reason at all to go outside if you don't have to. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea, Adam. I, I think you should probably um, head into safety because you, that wind is definitely blowing you around. And, and I know, Greg, you were talking about earlier that is not going to die down anytime soon. No. Um, I think we need to move our coverage now to Lakeland. If we move on here, our Rebecca Petit joining us now live from there. Rebecca, I know within the storm was supposed to be heading through Polk County, so I imagine uh, conditions there are deteriorating as well. That's right, Wendy. The rain has not let up here in North Lakeland. A steady pour of rain, and it comes with strong wind gusts. You can just see the trees blowing in the wind. This parking lot that I'm in, it's a hotel parking lot. It is packed. I'm told this hotel is at capacity with people who have evacuated, seeking higher ground. Emergency management is warning residents living in low-lying areas to seek higher ground because it will only get worse. Some neighborhoods already seeing flooding. With the ground being saturated, emergency management officials tell me there is a potential for flash flooding when Hurricane Ian makes landfall. So residents who are in areas that are prone to flooding should evacuate now. Do not wait until Ian gets here. Emergency teams will not be able to rescue you during the storm. And so, like I said, um, the conditions have deteriorated and they're going to continue to get worse this afternoon and this evening. As we as the conditions continue to change, I will keep you updated. Live in Lakeland, Rebecca Petit, ABC Action News. OK, Rebecca, thank you. Turning now to the governor comments earlier saying, quote, this is going to be a rough patch. Governor Ron DeSantis saying that this afternoon as Hurricane Ian made landfall, bringing high water, historic flooding and, of course, powerful winds to southwest Florida. Our Capitol reporter for Saunders has the latest from state officials at the Emergency Operations Center in Tallahassee. A lot of eyes here at the EOC glued to monitors, televisions as Ian is making landfall. We did just get a press conference a little bit ago. One of the big takeaways is there are no reported fatalities at this time, but it is still early and this is a very, very dangerous storm. We will make sure that all available resources are used to help you through this difficult time. Please do everything you can right now to stay safe. Florida Emergency Management Director Kevin Guthrie there reminding those sheltering in place to stay put until the storm is over. He's also warning that emergency crews may not be able to reach you until conditions improve. Those under EVAC who've decided to ride the storm out, they're asked to take an online survey. That'll help state officials better understand where aid may be needed when rescue work. All right, we want to go to St. Pete Mayor Ken Welch. He's giving an update as Hurricane Ian has moved through. Let's listen in now. Energy as well to get out and start restoring power uh, to our community. But for tonight, please stay at home and please stay safe. Continue to monitor the storm progress at stpeteprepares.com, city channels and news reports for the latest information. Now, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to respond and I'd ask you to raise your hand through Zoom. I think the first question is from Telemundo. We can promote them and ask them to Yes, go ahead. my name is Natalia Fernandez from Telemundo and I wanted to know if you have rescued any people from uh, outside and how have you responded from? 
We were listening to uh, St. Pete Mayor Ken Welch there. Uh, just giving a quick update, but more or less than anything else, uh, taking some questions uh, from local media there as uh, they're trying to figure out, uh, you know, what's going on. Of course, he's saying stay in place there tonight. This is the best place to be. You know, it'd be a great place to be right now, just kind of staying at home <laughs> and letting this thing go by. But we've got a job to do. And right, right. But I think what the mayor, Ken Welch, was yeah. saying, uh, especially important, is stay in place because first responders cannot get to you right now. They are not going out to rescue anyone as we speak. So um, I think as the winds die down and, and the storm passes through, then hopefully uh, they'll be able to get to you. But for right now, stay hunkered down until this storm passes. Yeah, that's why the mandatory evacuations are in place. They might not be able to get to you. So let's check back in now with our Robert Boyd. He's been tracking conditions in Tampa. He's right outside our station at uh, Raymond James Stadium. Robert. Okay, so right now we are right across the street from Raymond James Stadium. I'm sorry if I came in a little late when you tossed it to me, but I could hardly hear anything because this wind is just whipping around. It's very loud, it's howling, and it's pushing you around a little bit. Now I know these aren't hurricane strength winds. This is not what we're seeing down south. However, it's still pretty strong out here and pretty dangerous. You don't want to leave the house right now. We're seeing debris fly down the streets. If you take a look at the road signs, they're flopping around a little bit. Uh, the trees obviously are getting bent over and uh, it is definitely a storm right now and a storm you have to take seriously. Uh, fortunately, I have not seen many cars on the road, which is a good sign because this could be tough to drive through. And like I said, uh, Raymond James Stadium right across the street, uh, but at, nobody playing any football there tonight. The Bucks are supposed to play uh, the Chiefs on Sunday, but today I don't think you can throw a football more than five yards again because this wind is getting really strong I've been out here on the second floor facing Ray J uh, the entire day and this is the strongest I've seen it and I gotta assume it's only gonna get a little bit stronger and the rain is just coming from every direction but especially right at you it's that really quick whip and rain it's not like it's a downpour but it's just being controlled by the wind so again if you don't have to be outside and you're in Tampa right now I would say uh, go inside definitely stay uh, stay safe and stay in shelter Back to you guys. Yeah, Robert, thank you. And, and I obviously want to keep our eye on the ball here, but uh, I know a lot of people have questions about that game on Sunday night for the, uh, the Bucks and the uh, Chiefs. The NFL just announcing that if they do have to move this game, they're going to move it to Minneapolis there at U.S. Bank Stadium. That's a big if, though. Right now they are uh, seeing what happens with this storm as to whether or not they have to move it up to Minneapolis. The NFL not giving a timeline here, though, on when they're going to make that decision. My guess is probably on Friday afternoon, maybe. They want to see the conditions of the field, see if it can withstand a, a big game, especially on uh, national TV on Sunday night. Right, and if you're a Bucks fan, no worries. They're practicing in Miami, so they got the whole week to practice. They're going to get ready for the game, whether it's here or whether it's in Minneapolis. All right, we continue our team coverage now of Hurricane Ian, and I think we're going to Anthony Hill. Yeah, he's in Apollo Beach right now checking out the conditions there. Anthony? Hey, guys, we're out here in Apollo Beach. You can see the wind is really picking up right now. One of the things we're concerned about are trees coming down. Now, we haven't personally seen any trees down, but we have seen our branches down. You can see I'm counting one two, three, maybe at least four branches that have been knocked down. I mean, you got to think about it. Over the next 36 hours, we're expected to receive nonstop rain. And, you know, that rain has to go somewhere. It goes into the ground. It goes into the soil. And that compromises the stability of the tree. Um, the roots that hold the tree into the ground, it compromises that. And then you add insult to injury, and that's the wind. As Ian is making its way from southwest Florida to where I am right now in Apollo Beach, this wind, which is pretty extreme right now, as you can see, it's going to intensify even more. Some scary stuff, actually, when you think about it. Um, and we're not trying to scare anybody, obviously. We just want to inform you guys. And this is the reason why we're telling you that you want to stay indoors. We actually just saw three people. Three people are here. We can see them right there who decided to come out. Um, we're telling people to stay indoors because I mean, these trees can fall, branches can fall, you can be injured, and we don't want that to happen at all. We did speak to one woman who lives here in Apollo Beach, and she told us she's just happy that the hurricane is not going to be ex as extreme as we originally thought it was going to be, specifically in this area. Take a listen. As you can see, the hurricane is coming. Um, you, guys, you guys are from here, but how do you feel so far? I feel pretty good about it. I feel like it, we're, we're dodging a lot of it from what the turn has done, so we're just hoping that turn continues. and. I feel like we've seen worse, so I think we'll get through it. 
Yeah, it looks like it's you know going to stay away from us at least you know the heavy stuff. Watching all the the weather guys and Dennis Phillips and all the professionals and Peace. yeah, they're uh, predicting it to go a little more south. So I just wanted to come check it out out here. And again, back out here, uh, weather conditions. As you can see, I, I really don't have to say much. Uh, the wind and the rain is intensifying. I mean, we've been out here reporting all day, and it seems like each time we come out here. Um, it does get worse as we expected as the wind as the hurricane rather makes its way from southwest Florida into our area. So that's the, one of the reasons why we're telling people to stay inside. We just saw three people who were out here. Um, they just left. Thank goodness. Um, but we're telling people to stay inside. I'm Anthony Hill in Apollo Beach. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you, Anthony. And our Paul Legrone is in Polk County right now checking out conditions there. Yeah, he's live for us in Lakeland. Paul, how are the conditions out where you are now? Yeah, it's, it's getting a little worse, right? The volume's starting to get turned up here on Hurricane Ian. Uh, you still see people here driving, though. This is Massachusetts and Maine at the corner there. Uh, and I'll tell you, one of the stories starting to emerge, I think, is the fact that hotels stayed open and accommodated people. I know where we are right now, they've taken in a lot of people who evacuated uh, from Clearwater, St. Pete, and Point South. Let's, uh, let's go on a walk, shall we? Uh, come walk with me as we uh, go outside. I just wanted to take a quick measure of the wind speed before I sent it to my man Chuck from St. Petersburg who came over to Lakeland to ride this thing out in this uh, hotel here off of Massachusetts Avenue. I mean, guys, you know, it could be much worse right now, right? I mean, we know it's gonna get worse than this as I cross the street. Uh, you can see the, the palm trees are definitely blowing. And, you know, I tell you, you know, but depending on when you come to me, if you come to me in five minutes, it'll be raining sideways and the wind will be blowing uh, pretty hard. I'm gonna get a reading on the wind here I mean, it's still saying uh, gusts 50 miles an hour sustained around 3840. I don't know if it's a little heavier than that. It just depends on the timing. Let me walk a little bit over here so you can see me. But you don't see people walking out in the street anymore. You still see some cars out there. But uh, I want to send it to uh, Chuck from St. Petersburg. This is what he told me earlier about his experience over the last 24 to 48 hours. It's a journey I think a lot of people can relate to. Listen in. Why did you come to Lakeland? Uh, because I live in a, a Zone A flood zone. So we, it shows storm surge of four to six feet, so which is uh, right at my doorstep. What have the last 24 hours been like for you? Uh, very harrowing, actually. Trying to pack at the last minute, prep the house to, uh, before we leave. And um, it's just the unknown that is just really stressful. So you're here in Lakeland. What is your plan from here? Uh, just to ride it out and uh, kind of hope for the best. Okay. Have you been through a hurricane before? I've been through uh, Charlie, which took a very similar path to Ian, um, but it wasn't nearly as strong. So, um, yeah, this is a first for me. All right. Well, and you feel safe? I mean, you're... I do here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that remains to be seen, but we'll see. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going through the same thing, right? And uh, they came here to ride it out. I'm just watching uh, some folks here still driving around, still kind of getting a sense of where things are. The wind's starting to pick back up again, um, but no one out on the street. And I, I really do think that, you know, one of the, I don't know if you can call it a, su a success, but certainly a competent story is the fact that, you know, the governor uh, said, look, there's shelters available, obviously, but he uh, also made it known that there was going to be uh, hotels that are available that people could book. And people have been doing that up until the last minute. And guys, how you doing? You doing all right? Good. Yeah. You riding it out? I was actually just watching this this morning, so it's awesome. Right, yeah, yeah, we're hanging good. in there. All right. yeah. We're from well, um, St. Petersburg. St. So. Petersburg. Yep. See another, another couple from St. Petersburg. Stay dry, guys. Stay yeah. safe. So that's the story. And they found options over here in Lakeland and other places. Uh, and so I think that's a good thing. I mean, the fact that they were able to rearrange their plans to get to safety. And I think a lot of people are seeking shelter where they can, including motels, hotels, and the fact that it was open, you know, and we still got this thing to come through here around eight o'clock uh, tonight and uh, further, further uh, after that. So that's where we are right now, guys. Yeah, Paul, that's uh, what Dennis and um, and Greg was just were, they were just both telling us that um, you'll be seeing some stronger winds, definitely, but it's going to be a few hours away. So just hang tight and uh, stay safe in yeah. the meantime. Right. <laughs> Maybe get some rest before the big storm. Yeah, comes. Exactly. <laughs> I know, I, uh, 
Sure will. I know some people don't have power, uh, family included, so I know that's tough to deal with. Uh, so, uh, But I know, again, they've got people positioned to get the power back on. So just stay safe, bottom right. line. All right, thanks, Paul. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of that, we, as we track more power outages here, Make sure you charge your phone so you can stay up to date on all the news regarding this storm. Yeah, and be sure to download our ABC Action News app. If you want to grab your phone right now, open your camera, point it at your screen. That QR code right there will connect you to our apps in the App Store and on Google Play. And there you can find the live interactive radar in your own neighborhood. Plus, here's the best part. You can, can watch ABC Action News and ABC Action Weather 24-7, even if you lose power to your house. And no matter where you are the next few days, we want to make sure that you're able to get up to the minute information on Hurricane Ian, uh, you know, during the storm, after the storm, whether it's the track of Ian uh, or emergency orders. That's why we've partnered with these six local radio stations. They will simulcast our coverage so you can hear us by using a battery powered radio if the power goes out or a weather radio. And by the way, uh, if you still have, you know, your, your phone it doesn't lose power, if you use the iHeartRadio app, you can get any of these channels. So you might say, oh, I don't have an old school radio. I can't listen to you when the power goes out. Well, you can if you have the iHeartRadio app uh, to uh, listen to any of these radio stations. 99.5 WQIK, 98.7 The Shark, 92.5 Maxima, Q105, Wild 94.1, and Talk 1010 AM. Yes. All right. Yeah, Dennis, I wanted to just mention real quick that uh, as you as you talked about, the storm is actually moving faster than initially it thought. Right. Mm -hmm. So it will be through our state. What through Thursday night by tomorrow afternoon? Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, a big change. You're right. And by the way, just following up on what Jameson said, too, you can also download our app and actually watch us right on through the coverage. And you go to abcactionnews.com forward slash apps, APPS. ABCActionNews.com forward slash apps, APPS, and you literally on your phone, you can watch us, you can see what's going on here as we continue to track a, a pretty powerful storm. But these numbers sometimes can be a little misleading to folks because 145 mile an hour winds, you look at that and you say, well, is that the whole picture? No, it's a very, very small part of it right around the eye. The overwhelming majority of the winds around here or probably between about maybe 40 and 70 miles an hour. Right along the eye wall is where the bulk of the heaviest winds are, and that's why we still have this extreme wind warning in the purple area from Arcadia over to Sarasota, down to Fort Myers. The area really hasn't moved much in the last couple of hours in terms of where the highest risk is. And as is the case with most tropical systems, just to the north, and east of the eye wall, right in that area there, is where the heaviest wind is. It's also where the surge is. But as Wendy mentioned, I mean, not much of this storm has done what the models were predicting for days. First of all, the track was way up north, which is why a lot of folks evacuated with good reason, because we had evacuations in Pinellas. We just took a power hit ourselves right here. Yep. So we are still on the air. You can't see me, but you can hear me. So we're back in radio days. So again, we do see what a lot of folks have moved from here to here. And I know that's freaking out a lot of folks because they think they're going to be right in the middle of the storm. Well, yes and no, because what's happening is this storm will weaken rather dramatically. Matter of fact, the new track comes out in a couple of minutes and the Hurricane Center could possibly say by the time it makes it into Polk County, it's a minimal hurricane or maybe even a tropical storm. But right now, Right now, if you live in Hardy County, if you live in extreme southern Sarasota County or areas down south towards Charlotte County, and usually, you know, we think about a broadcast area, people would watch us from wherever, but not when streaming is on the table because we have a lot of folks all over the place that can watch us. So you may be watching us in Fort Myers as we are showing all of the flooding, the surge that comes in. Speaking of surge, we'll say this again, High tide is coming up right now, and a lot of places, a lot of sources are saying, oh, the high tide's coming up now, we're going to surge. No, we're not. Not at least this high tide, because we have an offshore flow. The wind is blowing offshore, so the water is being pushed out. We're not going to flood when we have that water pushing out from surging. Now, we will from heavy rain, and there is that green box right there, that flooded, and it's actually a flash flood advisory for areas south of Sarasota because of all the heavy rain around the eye wall of Ian. 
So there are the latest numbers, the latest advisories. We now actually have a hurricane warning on the east coast because after it weakens and moves into the Atlantic, we think it's going to redevelop. And if that's the case, then we could see this restrengthen into a hurricane. So this is the updated track. Notice tonight at 8 o'clock, category 3 with winds of 120 miles an hour. It's a 4 right now. And it's interesting, Greg and I were talking about this. I mean, it's looking for a pretty sharp turn right here. To me, it's not really looking that way. It's just kind of going straight north, northeast. And if that's the case, it could very easily make a track a little bit more to the south. But regardless, you see that three right there in Polk County, you're like, oh man, we're going to get these serious winds in Polk. Yes, you will see gusts of 60 to 80 miles an hour. I'll say this again. Think of Irma five years ago. From Hillsborough County north, it's almost the exact same setup. Pinellas County, 40 to 65. Hillsborough County, 50 to 70. Pasco County, 50 to 65. Hernando, Citrus, 45 to 60. Those are the gusts that I think you're going to see. Eastern Hillsborough County, maybe as high as 85 in a few spots. Manatee higher. Polk County is the one area we're just going to have to wait on. I don't think you're going to see anywhere near this, but I do think you could see winds gusting from 85 to 105. And if that's the case, like with Irma, you would get an extreme wind warning. So that's something that we're going to have to watch very closely in the new track. New numbers come out from the Hurricane Center in about five or 10 minutes. Last report again, winds gusting nearly 100 miles an hour along the coast. St. Pete had a gust of 75 miles an hour. Apollo Beach had one of 57, but I had a a former employee here actually sent me a picture a couple of hours ago. The water at Apollo Beach was 10 feet below average. That's because it all was being pushed out of the bay. So again, clearly there will be no surge issue with this high tide. But by 4 a.m. tomorrow, clearly it's not 38 in Hernando. That's just ridiculous. Bad data there. But at the end of the day, well, wind gusts maybe. Maybe temperatures. That'll be in January or February, right? But at the end of the day, when you get a west wind coming in or a northwest wind late tonight and tomorrow, I think that's when the surge possibility return. So if you're worried about water, if you're worried about water, I think the best opportunity for surge would probably be between about 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. Jason, do you have something going on there? Six mile per hour wind gust over the Sarasota Bay and a buoy out there. So a buoy report in the Sarasota Bay is having a gust of 106 miles an hour, and it makes a lot of sense over water because the air that travels over water, there's very little friction, so the winds aren't going to come down. But the minute those winds go over land, they have a tendency to weaken. I remember with Hurricane Jean back in 04, Fred Howard Park had a wind gust of about 90 miles an hour when everybody else was about 60 because the air was coming right off the Gulf and back in. So these are the wind numbers like we're saying. These are the forecast numbers over the next 12 to 24 hours. Nothing we can't handle in Pinellas and Hillsborough County. Honestly, all of the areas from Pinellas and Hillsborough County north, I think gusts of about 45 to 60. There will be a few spots that are going to get heavier winds. It just works that way. But overall, by far, the strongest winds would be Southern Manatee and then cutting cross over into Polk County. Let's go over to Greg and see. Greg, it looks like you're taking a look at new tornado watches over on the East Coast, right? Yeah, so the Weather Service has most of Central and South Florida under a tornado watch until 5. Uh, they've now issued a new one along the I-95 corridor. And it looks like this is the one that's going to take over after the one at five expires in the next 19 minutes. And really, the tornadoes earlier had all been in this band that is now over the Bahamas. It seems like the Gulf Stream off the East Coast has been feeding some of these outer bands near I-95 and really giving them enough energy to produce some uh, stronger rotating storms. Though this batch of storms rolling into uh, Orange County coming up out of Osceola County south of downtown Orlando, any one of these could spin up as well. Uh, they'll be brief and remember they're usually usually pretty weak. Most tornadoes in landfalling hurricanes are of the EF zero variety. That's the weakest that you get. We're really much more concerned about the wind down to the south. Jason just told you there in your Lido key that report of 106 mile an hour winds in Sarasota. That's the backside of that eye wall. That's what we were analyzing on the radar. And we'll continue to do so. That's still to roll in. So the winds are coming back Sarasota County off the Gulf as the backside of this thing rolls through. And I really think when you 
tally some of these higher winds down the line, it's going to be this northwest quadrant of the storm that's going to produce some of the heaviest gusts because that's where all the rain is. And it's that rain that's going to push the wind down towards the surface. So looking downstream, Southern Hillsborough, Manatee, Hardy, DeSoto, Southern Polk County, Highlands County. This is all moving in your direction. In fact, there's a heavier band now coming up on Southern Hillsborough County. Now, I just looked at some of the winds here. This is very close to the National Weather Service radar site in Ruskin. I'm not seeing anything I'm concerned about, but there could definitely be where you see some of these reds here gusts in excess of 40 or 50 miles an hour. Down to the south from downtown Sarasota through western Hardy DeSoto counties or, or through western portions of DeSoto County down to Charlotte and Lee County. That's an extreme wind warning still goes on for another hour and 18 minutes towards the six o'clock hour. Still looking at this eye wall, the back side of it back over the Gulf of Mexico, and this is where some of the heaviest rains and winds are. And you see these rain bands. This one now, this is the one up here north of downtown Sarasota that produced that really strong wind gust out over the Gulf. That's rotating back into Bradenton. So Bradenton over towards the Skyway, Palmetto, uh, Lakewood Ranch looks like over towards the Meadows. Very gusty winds in this. These could gust 70 to 80 miles an hour at times. And then you get into the uh, the main part of that eye wall, this dark red here over 75 into southern uh, portions of Manatee County, Arcadia. The winds have been increasing. They'll continue to build. And now when you kind of transfer this or track it back, Wachula, you're going to be in this for a while. These heavy rains here on Highway 70, the dark reds, there's probably winds here of about uh, 60, 70, 80, maybe gusty more than that. There's that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh I don't, there it is. Hey, we just had a, a report of a sustained wind in Cape Coral at 112 miles an hour, and we had a maximum gust at 125, 135. So is that that might be the that might be the strongest we've seen? Yes. I think 135 is the strongest we've seen. And then is that's kind of that backside of the eye wall coming back in. I really think a lot of these winds back here that the radar is seeing out over the Gulf still, these are going to roll back in here. I mean, we could still see gusts into the triple digits uh, from Venice, Englewood, down towards Port Charlotte, Cape Coral, Fort Myers. Uh, the storm is not done yet. When you look at this area in pink here, some of these heavier winds, it's rolling back into Sarasota, Lee, and Charlotte counties. And we could definitely, after a lull, after being in the eye, see those winds return and turn really, really gusty. To the north, it has not been as bad. Uh, we've seen gusts of 50 to 60 miles an hour in Tampa over towards uh, St. Pete. The strongest gust I've seen in St. Pete, 74 miles an hour. Now, the gusts out of St. Pete are a little skewed, and that's because Whitted Airport is right on the water. And with an east wind, they're getting the wind right off the bay. So it's always going to be stronger at the bay and with the airport out in the bay. I think it's reading the maximum wind you could possibly see there in St. Pete. If you actually work your way into the city, into the neighborhoods, the winds are probably gusting below that, maybe in that 60 to 70 mile an hour range. And most of them are going to come in the heaviest rain. So I'm going to be watching the reports now out of the southern portions of the bay, the skyway. There's a couple of weather stations here in the bay and a couple of buoys. These reds and oranges coming in out of the east, the parish area, Riverview, Brandon. If you live in these areas, start getting some gusty winds. Get on our social media at Greg D Weather, Twitter, Instagram. Message me. Let me know what your personal weather stations are reading. The Weather Service is actually passing some of those reports over to us. And we, in turn, will pass them over to the National Weather Service to get a better picture of what folks down the road can expect as Ian continues towards the east and northeast. There you see the power outages. Some of these are going to be still widespread in the darker oranges and reds. But as Ian continues into Polk, Hardy, DeSoto and Highlands counties, I think we're going to turn to more of a sporadic power outage situation. A lot of this is really going to be dependent on tree branches falling on power lines, saturated soils, trees toppling over onto those power lines. That's where we're going to see some of those issues. Here are the current winds right now. These are sustained winds, not gusts. So you see it's windy into tropical storm strength across Pinellas and Hillsborough County. Still lighter than that, we're approaching tropical storm strength in Pasco County, below that in Hernando and over towards Citrus County. Back over towards Polk, winds increasing now, maybe near 50 miles an hour over towards Fort Meade, and then the winds really building Hardy and DeSoto. This is where those, uh, that extreme wind warning is for western DeSoto County. Of course, the strongest winds, 
Venice, Englewood, Northport, over towards southern Manatee County. That's where we're going to see uh, some of those wind gusts at about uh, 10, uh, about 90 to 100 miles an hour at times. This is Bradenton right now. Live pictures, as you see there, this is what we're seeing. The strong, gusty winds really increasing. Uh, you see the wind uh, blowing the palms there. Occasionally gusts 70 to 80 miles an hour in a couple of locations. Uh, the wind, though, offshore. So we haven't had an issue with the surge, as Dennis has been talking all along. Uh, despite high tide cycles today, because the winds have been out into the Gulf, the water has been pushed out into the Gulf, and we haven't had to deal with a high surge. Tomorrow, as Ian lifts to the north and the wind turns back on shore uh, in the bay, we may get some higher than normal tides, but by then the storm will be weaker, the winds will be weaker. So I think that's a much lower concern for us going into the future. Tampa potential wind gusts for the next several hours. I think it's where we're at right now. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of gusts higher than this, but you see the worst of it right there through the overnight. And I think by tomorrow morning, and especially once we head towards midday, uh, conditions will improve quite a bit. So this is a European model forecast. This just came in this afternoon. So this is a new run, some of the potential wind gusts. And I think this is on target. You see some of the stronger winds generally in our southern counties, Manatee, Sarasota, Hardy, DeSoto, and Highlands counties. And then depending on the track, you could, if the western eye wall were to get into southeastern Hillsborough or southern Polk County, then get some of those winds into Polk County as well. We'll be watching that very carefully. Now, if you live in Pinellas, over towards Pasco, Hernando, and Citrus County, you're farther west from the center, so the winds here likely going to be weaker, especially once you work your way out towards the Gulf. And remember, during the overnight, they're mainly going to be out to sea, turning more onshore as Ian lifts up off the east coast, and eventually the center makes its way off the space coast, where it could maybe even regain some strength before making a second visit up towards the Carolinas and into southern Georgia. Once the wind starts to die down, our second uh, here focus is going to be the freshwater flooding. And that is still a concern for some places. Flood watches are up. Rivers are running high. We're kind of at the tail end of a rainy season. We've seen a lot of rain. And to put down two months of the rainy season's rain down in 24, 36 hours, that is going to cause some creeks, rivers, and streams to rise. This is additional rainfall on top of what we've already had. And you kind of see where it tracks. It's tracking where that western side of the eye wall is going to go. That's going to be through Polk County and then eventually off the east coast. Some amount may be in excess of four to six inches of rain, maybe an additional seven or eight inches, especially once you may make your way out towards Polk, Hardy, DeSoto, and Highlands County. So uh, I'm going to toss it back to you guys there at the desk. We're going to continue to watch things, reports coming in. We're waiting for that new advisory coming up in the next few minutes from the Hurricane Center. So we'll be back with that in just a few. All right, going to be waiting for that. All right, thank you, Greg. Next here, we want to go to our Vanessa Ariza, who is standing by on Clearwater Beach. Hey there, Jameson. You know, the wind is still keeping steady. In fact, since our last hit within the past hour, we can actually hear the roaring of the wind closer to the water. We moved locations just to give you another idea of Clearwater Beach. This is kind of the main strip where you usually see all of the tourists. You have your restaurants and your shops here. You can see with the Palm trees just blowing in the wind there. Pretty steady here. The rain had actually lessened up just a little bit within the past 30 to 40 minutes. And a lot of businesses, when you come down this strip, you'll see this. They've got sandbags just protecting their doors, any area that they're may feel as though it may creep in. The good news here, though, is we've driven around and even here on this strip, we haven't seen any flooding, which is great. And as we walk down here, another business with a sandbag and you have a lot of businesses that are boarded up with plywood here. Really not too many uh, projectiles, if you will. The only thing that we are seeing are these palm fronds here that are kind of just scattered about around this whole strip and as well as other areas of Clearwater Beach. Around 11 o'clock noon, we headed down to the Belle Isle area, just kind of scope it out, get a feel and a sense of how it was in that area, just a little bit more south of Clearwater Beach. It actually was a bit more clear than what it is here at the beach. We didn't see as many palm fronds down on the streets like we hear 
we see here right now. So that's really good. And we're not seeing anybody on the streets. Everybody's staying inside. The only vehicles that we are truly seeing, those are Clearwater Police SUVs. They're monitoring the streets, kind of going up and down, checking and making sure that everything, everyone is okay. I will tell you though, because this is Florida and we always have something interesting in Florida, there is one business that is open here in Clearwater Beach. That is a bar. We spoke with the bartender earlier today, very nice gentleman. He said, we were open last night. We stayed open until two o'clock in the morning. They are open right now. And I asked him, I said, what would be the line in the sand, if you will? What will make you close up shop? He said, first of all, I'm here on my own accord. My managers are not making me stay here. He said, I feel safe. I'm watching the weather. I'm watching what happens. And if the wind picks up to maybe 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, he said, then you know what? I will go ahead and uh, I want to turn around actually real quick because you see that sign just flew off. Uh, and luckily that's all we're kind of seeing, but just to give you an idea of how those winds are picking up right now. So hopefully it'll kind of just stay this way. The rain not really too heavy. Uh, we're going to stay out here, drive around, see if there's anything else going on right now. But for the meantime, I'm going to toss it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Vanessa, thank you. And we want to tell you this, this just coming in here. Governor Ron DeSantis has requested President Biden approve a major disaster declaration and 100% federal cost share for the next 60 days for any costs associated with Hurricane Ian. Meantime, we're checking in with crews who are now feeling those intense winds from Hurricane Ian. Reporter Austin Pollock is at a hotel in Nokomis, just outside of Venice in Sarasota County. Well, wind has really, really picked up here in Nokomis. Again, this is halfway between Tampa and Fort Myers. The wind and the rain that is hitting my back, I would say is almost painful. It hurts. It's a sharp pain coming up against my back. This wind is intense. We know that the hurricane made landfall not too far from here, actually about 37 miles in Cayo Costa, Florida. Again, that's about 37 miles from where we're standing right now. You hear that some of the wind does subside just for maybe a couple of seconds at best, but it's really picking up here. It's really intense, but we know again, the hurricane has made landfall about 37 miles from here. Again, we're going to continue to follow everything that's going on here on Florida's West Coast. But for now, back to you. All right, thank you. Meantime, Orlando is an area many local folks evacuated to when this storm was heading right towards us. But of course, that changed in the last 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, that's where we find our reporter, Katie Legrone, joining us live tonight. Katie? Hey guys, yeah, we can really start to feel those feeder vans here in downtown Orlando. You can see uh, just around me, you can hear even the howling of the wind. We're just getting a gust right now. Stand by. We've got some rain coming in. Um, this is it was a short while ago. We also heard some thunder. This is all part of the process of Ian moving closer to Orlando. Central Florida bracing for Hurricane Ian. The monster storm still on track to move across Florida's central region late Wednesday into Thursday as a Category 1 hurricane, with Orlando, its flagship city and tourist hub, possibly feeling major impacts. Yes, we're visiting right now, Florida. <laughs> but Ian, not enough to keep these tourists away. The family drove from North Carolina, arriving Wednesday morning, just ahead of the storm. Why did you come to Florida knowing that there's a hurricane barreling down on us? Well, we wanted to see. Hopefully it works out. We had bought our tickets for Disney. But seeing Mickey Mouse will have to wait. In a rare move, the happiest place on Earth has shut down all of its parks, at least through Thursday. As concerns remain high, Ian could bring historic flooding to the area, with rainfall possibly reaching up to two feet in some parts. I'm from Phoenix, so this is all, you know, wild to me. Some residents can't help but be concerned, even Florida natives. You have to be concerned, right? I, I expect probably the power to go out a little bit, some nice, some nice debris, hurricane debris, um, but nothing too crazy. I don't think it's too crazy over here. They're very worried right now. But Jeff Norwood's mind less on himself, more on his sister who lives in Fort Myers. They're getting it hard. You know, there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of loss and it's just, it's, it's sad to think of, but mother nature, nothing you can do, you know, just you know, hold on and wish, wish for the best. 
And you can see just a couple branches down here at Ayola Park in uh, downtown Orlando. And I want to I want to show you this couple. Actually, you guys just went down to take a selfie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you got your selfie and you've got your your helmets on. But um, Aku Aku is serving tiki drinks right now. Oh, geez. So okay. There, so. All right. So yeah, clearly here in Orlando, things are starting to pick up, but people are still kind of you know keeping keeping some humor about it, um, but obviously this is going to get a lot uh, more serious this evening as conditions here in, in Orlando continue to deteriorate overnight. For now, we are live in Orlando. Katie Legrand, back to you. All right, Katie, thank you. And you heard in that, that story there that some of those folks are there. Obviously, uh, Orlando is like the theme park capital of the world. Disney's closed down till Friday, so they're going to have to, uh, you know, cool their heels for a couple of days. So find something else to yeah, do. Figure something else out. And uh, now we want to head to Sarasota. Yeah, ABC Action News reporter Mary O'Connell joining us live from there with the latest conditions out there. Mary, I have things deteriorated again. It's pretty windy out here and we'll get those little bursts of uh, gusts that are coming in and out. We're at Fruitville Elementary. This is one of the 12 county run shelters here in Sarasota County. So we're kind of in this um, enclave that heads into the cafeteria here. And I'd like to say all these strangers that we were with, now we have 330 of our closest friends that we've been spending the day. We've been here since about 10 a.m. And as you can see, it's pretty windy over here. Um, we're about five miles from the closest shoreline in Sarasota proper, if you will. And you can see just behind me right now, it is pretty windy and rainy. The br small branches have been falling off these trees onto the ground all day long, blowing them around. We've got whipping winds that's, I, I don't even know if the camera can really grasp, you know, just how windy it is out here. Folks are really staying inside here at the shelter um, because you know, they the shouldn't be out in any, the excessive wind that we're seeing right now, and it really comes and goes. Um, and emergency um, management kind of let people know that as to stay off the roads and that the winds are so strong right now that uh, emergency responders, you know, they're not going to be on the roads right now because it's not safe. Those conditions are not safe. As far as the folks that are here, there are about 330 people that are here. That's 60 pets, about 60 pets. We've got cats, we've got dogs, we even got a betta fish that's here sheltering and hunkering, uh, hunkering down at this uh, elementary school. And um, for now, we're just kind of keeping an eye on the conditions. Obviously, you can see there it's very, very windy and uh, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll send it back to you. And taking a look, guys, there is a live look right now at the latest advisory. Again, we just got it out. I mean, I had to run over to the weather computer and make a new one. Winds are down another five miles an hour, down to 140. And the track really hasn't changed very much. There it is. So 2 a.m., we have a track that takes it in northeastern Polk County. And by tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, down to a tropical storm and moving offshore and eventually moving back north. And by the way, it could make a second landfall, it looks like, somewhere up in the Carolinas. But for the time being, we have a track that brings through Hardy County, through central and eastern Polk County, staying east of Lakeland, going right through Lake Wales. And I bring up Lake Wales because anybody who was back here in 2004, Lake Wales was hit three times dead smack bullseye on Lake Wales with Jean, with Francis and with Charlie. And this storm, I mean, it's Charlie 2.0. Second landfall occurred on the mainland pretty much right at about Punta Gorda. So we have a similar situation, a similar strength, a little bit bigger storm. With this one, we're going to be seeing more video out of Fort Myers and out of Naples. And that's where most of the water has been so far. But we are far from done with a surge issue. And this is something I've been stressing for most of the day. You still have an offshore flow across the Tampa Bay area, but there is still very heavy rain that's now moving into Hillsborough County. But even with that heavy rain, while there might be some flooding issues, and I think there will be just because the rain is going so much, this is not from the surge. Remember, surge has nothing to do with rainfall. Surge is the storm pushing water either in or out, I guess you could say, of a body of water, whether it's a bay, whether it's an inlet. And over the last six to 12 hours, we've had a pretty pronounced offshore flow. In other words, the winds are blowing away 
So there's no way, I don't care how much water's out there, you're not going to have an increase in water and surge when you have such a strong push out. I've been getting reports all afternoon, water anywhere from four to 10 feet below normal, and the bay has been dry yet again, just like it was with Irma five years ago. But at least for the time being, this is the area from Southern Polk Southern Hillsborough County and now Southern St. Pete or Southern Pinellas County. Matter of fact, I think we just had a wind gust of close to 75 miles an hour in St. Petersburg with this band and these all continue to rotate. So if you live anywhere from downtown Tampa, eventually this is moving into Pinellas Park over into Clearwater, this very heavy downpour in the orange area, there's even more wind with it. So now we are just about to start experiencing the very heavy gusty winds, ones that I would compare almost identically to Irma five years ago. Most folks, and there was some, there were some trees down, there were some fences down, there were some issues with Irma as most of Pinellas and Hillsborough County had winds between about 55 and 70 miles an hour. We just had a report of a wind gust. What was it, Greg, at the airport? It was around 70 in the 60s at TPA. So, I mean, this is a pretty potent, a little feisty band as it's coming back toward the coast with that counterclockwise flow. So you're gonna get wind and you're going to get very heavy rain and there's clearly more of it. Now, obviously the bulk of the damaging winds is well to the south and that's what they will be. I mean, we've had wind gusts reported Cape Coral at 135 miles an hour in the last hour. We have had reports of water surge about 14 to 16 feet in Fort Myers. In the immediate viewing area, now again, I understand, first of all, we have people listening to us, and second of all, with our streaming app, we have folks watching us from Charlotte and Lee County. So unfortunately, those are the areas that were hit the hardest. I mean, there's just no other way to spin it. We had winds of 100 to 110 sustained, and we had some areas just north and east of the eye with that water of about 14 to 16 feet. The extreme wind warning remains in effect in the purple area until six o'clock tonight. Now I'm gonna take this off so you can see what's going on. There is the eye and the second landfall. It made two landfalls. The first was on a barrio island. The second landfall on the mainland was pretty much right around Punta Gorda. So again, it is Charlie 2.0. That is now moved in and I would be interested to see how Mike Paluska is doing. We're going to try to reach him again because Venice has been picking up some very, very heavy wind as well. But that orange area right there, not only are you picking up lightning, it's still showing some lightning. So there's packing a punch there with winds probably of about 80 to 100 miles an hour. And it extends into Hardy and DeSoto and even farther north across Polk and into Hillsborough County, Grove City a wind gust in the last half hour of 110 miles an hour. That is right there to the west southwest of Port Charlotte. It's moved into Sarasota. It's moved into Manatee County. It's moved into Hillsborough County and it's starting to rotate because think about it as this moves north, all of this rotating backwards is going to move back toward coastal Manatee, Bradenton, up toward Longboat Key, up toward Pinellas County, Although the track will probably keep it maybe in eastern Pasco, but I think much of Pasco County will likely be more of a near miss. So this is that updated track. Again, Cat 4 right now, winds of 140 miles an hour in a very small area. Yes, you are going to get wind reports of 120 and 125, but overall, by the time this moves into northern Hardy County and into Polk County, it will have weakened significantly. And as a matter of fact, overnight as a category one hurricane moving into Polk County, once it passes the east west line of the bay, and that's about 2 a.m., that to me would be the time we would have to consider the issues with storm surge at the next high tide. So the overnight high tide in Tampa, in the Bay, is right around 430. By then, the storm will have moved north, so the winds will shift out of a more north. Maybe not quite enough of a shift to cause water to come all the way around in. It's going to be close, but I do believe we're going to start to see that water rise up. But by then, it's going to be far enough east. And as Greg just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, 
not just far enough east, but quite a bit weaker. Remember, those earlier storm surge totals, that was a forecast for a Category 3 or a Category 4 hurricane. This go around, it's a 1 and weakening. So, yes, I absolutely think we will see a buildup of water in some spots, but I just don't think the overall surge concerns will be as high as some of those forecasts are still showing of four to six feet, maybe in a few spots. And it's the better safe than sorry. Look, you don't want to go back in an area that you already know is flood prone as it is, and you throw in a surge issue. Although, as I said, by four o'clock, it's got to be really close whether the winds are coming in hard enough to actually get it into the bay. It's a close call, but it is a possibility. And then after that, the next high tide 12 hours later, which brings us into about five o'clock in the afternoon on what is today? Wednesday on Friday. I think at that point by then it will have moved offshore more. So we'll keep our eyes on it. It is certainly not imminent in seeing a surge, but it is not a given that we're going to bypass it either. The faster this weekends, the less likely we are going to see a surge as that track continues north and takes it into the rest of Polk County and eventually out to sea. Again, Greg is going to have another look right now at that updated track and what that means wind wise for the rest of the area, especially Hardy and Polk County. Greg? Yeah, really looking at the radar analysis now of this, Dennis, as it continues to roll up. Uh, so if, if this track, and, it, and you know, it took a little jog to the east, you see a couple of points, and now it seems to be resuming a track to the north-northeast. This has been the story with Ian, little jogs and shifts in the track, and the Hurricane Center is just trying to keep up with it. Uh, if it continues on this track, then you would get some of the stronger winds back into portions of Polk and Hillsborough County. Let me show you the current radar now. Dennis already touched on this extreme wind warning down to the south, but it's not just that area that's getting the heavy rains. In fact, these rain bands now entering Hardy, Polk, Southern and Eastern Hillsboro, as well as Manatee County, they are producing some very strong winds. I'm very curious to see as this rotates into Tampa Bay, what kind of wind reports we're going to start to see out of some of these rain bands. What happens with these systems when they're over land, there are strong winds. There are actually really strong winds in the system, but they are just above the tree line. There are a few hundred feet up. You can sometimes see the clouds zooming out over your house, and it takes one of these heavier downpours to take those winds, which are higher up, and to shift them down towards the ground. And that's when you get some of those stronger gusts. That's why in the inland areas, the rain and the wind tend to ebb and flow. You get long periods of just quiet weather without any rain, without any strong winds. And then as soon as that rain picks up, the winds increase as well, and that's when you really start to feel the impact of the storm. So take a look at Southern Pinellas over towards Hillsborough County, Manatee County back over towards Sarasota. This is just heavy rain. Parish, Lakewood Ranch, the Meadows over towards Bradenton, Bayshore Gardens, back over towards Anna Maria, the Skyway. In the reds here at 301 and 75, you're really getting some very heavy rain. So there's one really heavy rain band north of 64 up through the parish area. That's one. And then there's a second one coming in out of the south and east. You see that in the corner there. It's heading down 70 and 64. So this is all going to pinwheel back to 301. So if you're in Bradenton Parish, you may get a bit of a break, Lakewood Ranch, and then you're going to get another heavy rain ban. And the second one may even have stronger winds. That's kind of how this is going to work out. Each subsequent